to, I wanted to kiss it so bad. I don't know why that took. Okay. Anyway, hello, welcome to Pod Champs <laughs> Five Finals, everybody. I to kiss it so uh, bad. I've I've, I've lost so much okay. of the value anyway, of this hello, trophy. To uh, there's a little feedback, by the way, of the broadcast. Everybody. We are here uh, I've, I've live so in Los Angeles trophy. with three uh, championship matches that are going to happen yes. today. We are here. Production, I still hear myself. With a little feedback. Yes, three us championship too. matches are going to happen today. We are here. Anyway, uh, chat, I hope you guys are all having a good day today. Uh, a lot of great chess is going to be happening. Uh, and we're going to start things off with the consolation bracket, uh, which is a, a, a and can they hear too? It's like, it's like the loop, which is a, a row, row, row your boat. It's like, it's like the loop. I'm going to wait a second. I'm going to wait a second. We'll be back. We'll be back. Just kiss the trophy and stare intently into the camera. Uh, of the trophy? Yeah.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pog Champs 5 Finals. I'm joined by a cast of people who are good at chess and me, your host today, Ludwig. Uh, this is Twitter name two, this is Twitter <laughs> name three, and Twitter name four. Hello, how are you doing, Botezes and Hess? I'm excited to be here. I want to watch streamers have to actually try over the board chess for once. Mm. And what about you, Hess? What are your thoughts? Uh, it's good to see you again. Oops, great First to see and you. I'm pumped. We hung out. Like, don't pretend we didn't. We we hang, me and Hess hang out. It's not a big <laughs> deal. It's a cool thing about me. And I'm pumped though. The players are really into it. I feel like there are going to be some people forgetting to press their clock and things like that. But mm -hmm. they're in for a good time. Yeah, that probably will happen. Andre, do you remember your first tournament? I was six, so <laughs> no, <laughs> I do not. That's abuse. I, I, can I say it? If it your parent blur. brings you to a match when you're six years old, that should count as child abuse. That's not, that's not, that cannot Honestly, be fun. it was like, I was just trying to score a free vacation because winner would get to Greece to compete in the World Chess Championship. And mom told me there was free food and spaghetti, so I just <laughs> wanted to go. They convinced you. I was excited. You. I was like, free vacation if I win this game of chess, let's go. Win and go to Greece. Did, did you get to go? Uh, I got last place the first year. I won first place the second, so I went the second year. Okay. We went as sisters. Wait. Oh, happy our dad family. used to be really competitive, and at one point he would track our ratings side by side at each each age. It was a little crazy. We had, we like a, a high chart. Fridge. Yes, <laughs> but, but for chess oh, reading, and, 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 and there was one year I slightly surpassed my sister, and then all downhill from there. But mm. there was a time. No, was I was real time. nervous that year. <laughs> that shoe just yeah, keep I just going. training really hard since then. Well, lucky for you, but you you, you both are, are a lot better than the competitors are watching today because. They're all creators. Uh, so let's actually take a look at the format. Uh, and our first, ma uh, first match is going to be a consolation bracket. We got both the finals today, consolation and championship. It's four games of 10-5. Best of four, they call it? Uh, that, that's what the grandmasters call it, yes. What Do you call it that? You call it something different? <laughs> best of four works. <laughs> uh, one point for, uh, per win, half a point per draw, first to 2.5. Is this what pros do, Hess? Like, would you do this? I would love to do this. Yeah, we've had tournaments just like this. That's a normal format. Very normal. Best of four, and it's a tiebreaker if it's 2-2. Two -two. How does a tiebreaker work, Hess? Well, you know, if the case is a tie, they get three minutes with five seconds added per move. It is sudden death, and play continues until someone wins. I don't think we'll see too many draws, but stalemates do happen. Yeah, I don't think people of this skill level know maybe how to draw and even when to draw. Uh, that seems like a skill of its own, but sometimes it happens accidentally. I've been there. It's called stalemate. It's it's cool. It, it's a stupid role. Don't it's a remind stupid role. me. I, re I remember your stalemate. Yeah, I do, too. I do I, too. I think Cutie knows very well how to draw. If anything, that's <laughs> a strength. I don't know what you guys saw the other day, but uh, I'll never forget it. That's one of my great skills, which is why I'm not going to be on this next uh, slide here, which is past champions. Boy, boy, it's Hafu, Sardosh, and Fundy. I can't believe Fundy. That, you know, let me, let me say it. Pog Chance 4 is a joke. <laughs> Pog Chance 4 is a joke. Who, who's the strongest here? Sardosh. I have you to think? go for Hafu, but yeah, well, Sardosh, Sardosh is higher rated. rated. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you guys said that because I beat Sardosh in a game once. So oh, wow. Not a big deal. Wait, not a big deal. Let's box him next. Yeah, let's take a look at the consolation bracket uh, that led us to our current finals. Constellation Bracket, oftentimes the more viewed match. That's where I think the, the Charlie versus Moist Critical match was. Had 17 million views. That's a lot. Yeah. Right? For a chess match. Uh, and we have Cutie versus Virtual. Anyone surprised by our finals here? I am a little surprised that Virtual is in the Constellation Bracket. It seems a little bit crazy since he was one of the highest rated players going in. That being said, he has the, he had the most difficult bracket before. So all I can say is good luck, cutie. We believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. OK, well, let's take a look at the championship bracket, the people that placed over Virtual. Uh, what about this one? Any surprises, Andre? What do you think? You know, I like that. Honestly, I've been cheering for Frank since day one. He is Gotham student, but Frank is a great personality from chess. And although he has a mighty 200 blitz rating, his rapids actually been greatly improving. I like both of our competitors. Sea Dog came all the way from Japan. Frank from the UK. They traveled a long distance for this match, and I'm expecting it to be very hype. Yeah, I think Frank lucked out a bit. I mean, he beat 
Gasly, which was a very impressive yes, win. Uh, but the XQC win, of course, <laughs> is the infamous plane game. Uh, and I've played several ranked chess matches on chess.com on a plane. It sucks. You get about one move every 10 seconds, and then it just has this loading bubble, and you just have to wait for it. There's nothing you can do. Uh, so Frank got that W, and, and we'll see how, how he does against Connor. Uh, but we have a bit of a schedule. That, that will be the last match of the day. We have three total matches we're watching. Uh, the first one is the Constellation Finals, Virtual versus Cutie. Uh, and then in between that is a Salty Sweet match, which we'll talk about in a second. And then uh, around 4.30, we'll have Sea Dog versus Frank. The big championship racket. And this is the salty sweet one. Dude, we got to have a better picture of e -Rob. Yeah, what? Who did this to the yes, poor man? Who did this to e was his I baby's face the photoshopped on his face. So this is better than what I've been looking at all day. Uh, Tyler won versus e -Rob. It's the rematch of the brothers. Uh, we'll talk about that when that comes up. That's after Constellation. But there's a lot of money on the line today. Uh, that's that's You know what Connor told me? He said this is why he came out. <laughs> Because he, he flew from Japan. He was like, I would have thrown my game against I did a thing, but I guarantee get $12,000. And he was like, it's worth it for 12000 to fly from Japan to L.A. and then back to Japan in the span of like 36 hours, uh, which I would agree. 20 k for first place. And then uh, the, the consolation, 7 k for first, 5 k for second. How? how <laughs> maybe it's a dumb question. How is there so much money in chess? There's a lot of money in creators playing chess, but uh -huh. Robert, how does this compare to competitive chess? You know, competitive chess thrives in large part thanks to these creator events. The more people who watch, the better it is for the ecosystem. You had PR training. I, yeah. I didn't. I just said this on the fly. I didn't What's know you the most that. money you've won at a tournament? Uh, over 20 grand. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Robert so getting the big Dang. bucks. Yeah. First place? Uh, no, it was the US Championship a month, two years ago. So, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to take a look at the players that we're going to see here, the first constellation, Cutie Cinderella and Virtual, or whoever. I don't give a shit. Oh, the second guy. <laughs> Fuck the second guy. I'm not biased. I'm an unbiased commentator. Hello. Oh, my God, we're here. Oh. Oh. The magic portal. Oh, dude, I thought we were going to take a look at you. Oh, I was saying how much I love you, Virtual. Have a seat. Uh, have a seat here. I think. There you go. How are you guys doing? Oh, my God. This is so stressful. <laughs> I was saying how much I love you and respect you. I don't know what we guess. Uh, I've been following the stream. I just, uh, <laughs> Have you? <laughs> oh, sounded a little different. What came through my uh, my ears, but well, uh, either way, congratulations to both of you for making this far and making five thousand dollars minimum. Not bad. Uh, how are you feeling about today, Cutie? How do you feel? You go first. I feel fine. I feel fine. That's it. You feel fine. <laughs> okay, cool. That's all I've got. Listen, I'm here for a good time, not a win time. Okay. That's how I feel about it. Uh, virtually, it seems like everyone in this room, including your opponent... Hates him. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> they right? almost, uh, in addition to hating you, expect you to win. Yeah, I do have the favorite label going in. It's something I tend to do well with, being a favorite. Performing under pressure. I was, I'm kind of known for that. Pulling a, virtu pulling a virtual, I'm kind of known for that. Wait, to be clear, Virtual is a track mania creator and always an underdog because you're kind of fraudulent. Like, you're a creator, you're not like a pro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So this is, in, if anything, the opposite. It is the opposite. And once I got into the Constellation bracket, I was like, oh, you know, I, I would want to be in the Champions, but... Uh, I've been practicing a lot, so I hope I can make this trip worth it and, you know, get yeah, tell, it done. Tell me about your practice regimen. What have you been doing over the past week and a half, two weeks? Uh, I've been studying the stone wall because <laughs> Cutie Cinderella has about 700 games on chess.com and 680 <laughs> are like one opening. So. She grinds. Wow. <laughs> she does grind. I'm just putting it out there. She's a good player. And yeah. what did you do to warm up for this? Well, I've been playing the stone wall <laughs> uh, just over and over and over again. I have like four or five fake chess accounts. Um, I've also been sending hate mail to every email he has, <laughs> trying to get in his head. I've said some awful things to his mother. What, and I'm just what the hell? She, for the she's best. watching cutie. I know, Aww. and I meant it. <laughs> okay. okay, all right. Well, I'm wow. sorry, mom. I'll <laughs> beat her for you. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, a lot of tension in this match. Uh, any any final words between you two? Anything you want to say to each other? Um, hey, if I don't win a match today, I don't know if I'll see you at the stream rewards. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, if you're a believer or a doubter, you might want to doubt one game because I, I got a flat. <laughs> you got to flat. You got to throw one virtual. All right, well, we'll be see. Fun. Uh, best of four, you guys can go on up uh, and play your match. I'll take right, that from goodbye. you. Godspeed Bye -bye. to you both. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. And we're gonna talk about predictions while you're gone. Don't look. Don't don't look at the broadcast. I'm predicting you to win. I love you. I'm predicting you to win. So how much do you think he'll win by? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's a real chance she does win, and I want you to explain why I think that because I don't know why I think that. I just believe it irrationally. Is this your stand-up comic bit? Because we watched Cutie do that last night. So. Okay. What, do you actually have no faith? No, I do have faith. I went over and was trying to help her prepare. I think sometimes Cutie gets in her own head. She's definitely a better chess player than she gives herself credit for. Uh -huh. And I think for newer players, sometimes they rely on memorization rather than on just figuring out the why behind each move. Like, why did my opponent do that? And how should I respond in kind? She's not a newer player. She's still a relatively new player. I guess in terms of her overall chess hours, but she's been playing for years now. Yeah, but also sometimes when you just play without getting con uh, consistent coaching, that still makes you like a newer player. You're just playing and playing and playing. It's hard to learn from just playing without understanding what went wrong and what you can do differently. Like, I've, stop playing the stone wall. I've been a 1,000 for four years. I will be a 1,000 rated for the next 40 years. Can if, I still keep the title of newer player? If you, you know, <laughs> took lessons more, you know, maybe. Well, you know, <laughs> come on. Uh, all right, let's go around. Predictions. Andrea, who do you think wins and by how much? What's the score? Okay, well, it depends on my first question. Is Cutie actually going to play the stone wall? Yes, yes, she doesn't have another she opening. Plays. It's like but you went to London. clearly prep for That's true. I'm not one to talk. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a little nervous because it's so easy for virtual to prep. But I, okay, my prediction is that Cutie will score at least a draw. Oh, At half least. a point. At How least. generous. Virtual's terrifying, okay? I've seen him training. He comes in early. He was playing, like, odds game versus Gotham. It was nearly even. I'm kind of terrified, and I I would like Cutie to score at least a draw, and I'd be happy he's a terrifying opponent. Thoughts? You know what? Somebody has to be rooting for Cutie here. I'm going to say that they're going to go to tie break. Wow. Cutie is going to surprise us all. She might be the underdog, but she does have the Pog Champs experience. And again, she threatened him. It might work. So your your big prediction rooting for Cutie is not that she will win, but that she'll just make it to tiebreak. Who knows what will happen in the tiebreak? <laughs> My prediction only goes so far. It only goes so far. Hess, what's your prediction? I'm going 3-1 virtual. I think that Cutie will get a win. We've seen zero draws in the entire consolation bracket. Yeah. I don't think we're seeing one now. Uh, I think I'm with you, except the opposite. 3-1 in favor of Cutie Cinderella, all right? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I, I believe this. It will happen. We can speak it into existence. Uh, I, I think virtual, ha he's weaker than he seems. I think if he gets cracked, if he get if he does a blunder, he can lose. Virtual's mom is downvoting this Twitch stream. <laughs> <laughs> like the stream, please, please. Uh, all right, let's take a look. We got a little video uh, of these two, and then we'll hop right into the match. I think my strengths are the end games. I feel very confident if I'm in an end game. I have a lot of turtlenecks. I own them, and I think that gives me a big upper hand in chess. A big advantage I have against Cutie might be tactics. Spotting patterns that can give me an advantage in a couple of moves if she's not careful. Every Thanksgiving, I play against my eight-year-old nephew. He sucks, but that is over the board, and I, I whoop him. I think where she has an advantage is experience. She has over 600 games with one opening on, on chess.com, so that's gonna be very difficult to face. I'm gonna try to get in Virtual's head because I think that's my only benefit. I'm gonna threaten not to invite him to the streamer awards if he wins. I'm gonna bring up his mother. I'm gonna do whatever I can. I've been watching Cutie's games before the finals. She has had some really, really great tactics that she spotted. I think he will win. And if he doesn't, then that's a shame on Norway. Cutie, if you watch this, I, uh, Really appreciate you, and I think we're gonna have a great game, but I traveled all the way out from Norway, and I didn't do that to lose the finals. So I'm gonna play my best chess, and I hope we can have a good game, but I think I will be the one winning in the end. Oh, Virtual, I'm sure you were very nice to me, but I think that I, that, that, uh, please let me win, please, pretty please, come on. I'm the only girl playing, come on, please. Thanks, Virtual. 
All right, here it is. Consolation Finals. It's virtual. It's cutie. Is it virtual? You say with virtual? a V. Virtual? Is it with a V? There's definitely like, a, a W. It's a W. It's a virtual, it right? It is a W. I don't know if it's like Norwegian. You pronounce it differently. Like <laughs> German Vs, Ws. Virtual. Should virtual. Ask the guy's name before threw him in. Ah, he's fine. <laughs> we'll do great up there. Uh, we're gonna jump in. It's over the board. This now, this is what makes Pog Champs Five a little different from the previous Pog Champs. We're in person, obviously, which is a lot different than playing online. Uh, and and I know that because I lose track of the pieces all the time. In my defense, my board is like a Lord of the Rings board, and all the little pawns have shields, which confuses me, and I mistake them as bishops. I did hear that from Robert. He said it was very hard to help with <laughs> teaching. My chat this is bought why it. Doesn't take lessons. <laughs> my chat's the one that bought it. All right, we're into it. We're into it. Is this the stone wall? No, it's the Karakhan. It's let's Kitty's black, go. and oh, we did right. look at this yesterday. So <laughs> Wait, let's see how she responds. Is she playing into your? Wow, different opening. Let's go. Wait, that seems like a... Cr they're playing so fast. Yeah, just putting the pressure on. This is basically a transposed Sicilian, though, with the Alapin defense. Oh, look at you remembering these Alapins. So uh, this is actually what we looked at yesterday. She knew that once the knight develops for white, she put her bishop on the square to pin the knight. So if that knight ever moves, the queen will be lost. So this is exactly what we talked about. Kitty remembers it. And not just that, I think she understands it pretty well. Yeah, I think some difficulty I've had, because I've played this sort of position, is is getting the knight out. So usually, I'm curious what virtual will do here. Unpins the knight. I guess that makes sense. And we have we have our little we have our little meter on the left, but you hate when people look at that. <laughs> right? Well, I think it's helpful for the audience, but I think also sometimes it's just beneficial to try to evaluate for yourself. Oh god, it's so tense. In person is oh my it's more nerve wracking. And I love that we are filming this in a similar fashion to where they're playing online. We don't have the full board of them, but I like it. I like it. Oh, it's way easier for me to understand what's happening. No, I just for sure. love oh, what Cutie's doing. I, wow. Okay. Wait, also, we got virtual <laughs> hair. <laughs> hair. <laughs> that man is not balding for at least another <laughs> yeah, 20 he's years. Got a good, hair good for him. Good for him. It's a, you got a good crown on you, virtual. You got a good crown. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah, I, this, is, this is what they see. Like, fundamentally, it is just harder for me to grasp where the pieces are. Do you guys feel... I mean, you guys are much more talented chess players, but do you still see a difference? I, I don't as much, but when I would be training, my coach would make me do tactics over the board so that I actually got more realistic practice. And from every newer player who I talked to, they, did, they do struggle with seeing tactics and board vision. Yeah, what I'm most curious about is most of our players today have only played chess while they're streaming, so they're always used to having some secondary distraction, whether it's chat or music. So maybe some people are going to perform 10 times better just because they are fully focused, or it could be the opposite. But yeah, I've never seen Cutie so focused on something. And Cutie is playing exactly what we looked at. So she brings her knight out to f5, which is a great decision because she's piling up all of her pieces, These both these knights and the pawn on c5 against this pawn on d4. So that is what she's aiming for right now. We talked about how the queen can also venture out to b6 to put even more pressure on. She's using exactly what she learned. How deep into this variation did you guys prepare? No, it wasn't about like memorizing a long series of moves. It was just, I think that's what her struggles have been. Mm. That she tries to remember, and then when she feels like she's in a new position, she thinks she made a mistake. Wait, this sounds like Andrea in the London. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Honestly, me and Kitty in the Stonewall, I feel that. But that goes to show that for players of all strengths, that does Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. Even at the highest levels, people think, that I don't remember what this position looks like. I haven't seen it before. And look at this. Virtual has made a mistake. Pawn takes, right? Pawn takes D4. There are so many pieces for Black aiming there. Oh, she developed first. One. She's moving a little bit too quickly. I guess both players yeah. are you're nervous playing over the board. That's not a bad move. We should stress that. right? That mm -hmm. was just a developing move. She wants to castle her king, but she could have won a pawn in the center. It's interesting that 10 moves in, she has lost five seconds on the clock. And Virtual already down almost two minutes, which is pretty insane, like of a difference. Yeah, they seem to have opposite strengths and weaknesses. Virtual tends to take a little bit too long and gets into time pressure, whereas Cutie moves a little too fast, which can cause her to blunder sometimes. But at least it'll be fun since, you know, we'll, we'll see them going wrong either way. <laughs> 
Yeah, you brought up a good point, Andrea, that, like, there's no other distractions, which I'm curious how it'll affect Cutie, because, like, I, I've played chess against her a lot. I've watched her play chess a lot, and I yell at my screen. Like, I, I'm, I watch her like I watch the New England Patriots, <laughs> and she moves so fast because she yep. gets so bored. Yep. Is what she says. <laughs> which it looks like she's still. Oh, she doing doesn't know that. how to which piece to touch the castle. That is amazing. She's it's always to... the king first. Yeah. One more time. <laughs> 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 I know. He's really a nice guy. Yeah. He was helping her castle her king. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, something Connor told me that he dealt with. He played very young a uh, chess tournament over the board. He touched the rook first, and then yep. he went to castle, and they forfeited him. And yeah, he was and like nine. Yeah. Professional tournaments, there's no slack. They'd make you move the rook. Yeah, for, for people at home, we are not going super sweaty. So there was an opportunity to do, what's it called? Touch touch it. Touch move. Touch it. Is that what you call it? Touch, touch move. move. Y'all yeah. got <laughs> goofy terms. Yeah, the, touch move, which means if you touch the piece, you must move the piece. Mm -hmm. We are not doing that here. We're playing like uh, play against your uncle rules, which is like Street if you let go rules. of the piece. So you're oh, telling she me. She oh. her knight. Oh, no. She took oh. the pawn in the center, and unfortunately, this Rook And takes. she smirked as she did it, too. <sighs> it, it's just because she moved too quickly again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry, Levy. Um, hmm. That was a, I guess, just a lack of vision, right? Because that's like a blunder she would not normally make. No. That mm -mm. this is, you know, two people have made it through the finals. If you're blundering a piece just because you didn't see a rook, you would not make it this far. I think this is over the board gap. Yep, I would agree with that. And I think it is stems from the fact that she knew that that pawn on e5 was what? loose, and those are... Okay. Okay, oh. that was... <laughs> There's a little technology gap there. Yeah. There's a little technology that, gap. That was scary, though. But I, I was trying to explain her mistake, that I think you know she learned that the pawns need to stay connected for white, and once they were no longer connected, that pawn is weak, but that doesn't mean it was loose. So that's why she took the pawn, and ended up costing her a knight, and I guess, you know, we've seen a lot of pop jams. Is this game over, especially over the board and virtual down two minutes on the clock? Certainly yeah, not. Exactly what I wanted to add. Cutie is down material, but now virtual has to confront the problem of his pieces are kind of awkwardly developed. For him to take his knight, he has to go to the center, and he's not pushing his pieces yet, so his rook on A1's cornered. His knight isn't developed yet, and his rook on E5 is very random in the center, where if he's not careful, it could get trapped. So if anything, this is actually a very tricky position for beginner chess. I want to see Cutie try something like bishop D6 and then queen H4 and try to checkmate him, see what happens. Ooh, you want some killer vision? Oh, she's sacking her bishop in hopes that she can capture his rook, which I I guess is better. Yeah, that would definitely be a good trade for her. But the issue is that rook, which is under attack, can take the knight first. So you're going to give up the rook no matter what. So you give it, take a knight and then take the bishop next. You start getting too many pieces for the rook. I don't think that Virtual will play that. I think he's more likely to move his rook backwards. He is up a knight for just a pawn after all. But that is an opportunity for him, and that's why the question mark is on that queen move. Mm. Now we can really see how strong we're tools over the board, because what I would do here in an in-person tournament is, you know, one of the props of having it here in front of you, you can recognize when you're in a tricky moment and you calculate everything. It's much easier to calculate with in-real-life pieces. Let's see if he's doing it. Uh, wow. Even better. Wow. He protects. That's, yeah, even stronger, keeping the pressure. Now Alex's plan of um, a queen and bishop battery attacking on h2 definitely won't happen. And the concern here is that now Cutie's bishop is attacked, but there's also discovery attack of rook capturing the knight and then attacking the queen at the same time. Too much is hanging. Yeah. Too much. I mean, virtual, he was a recipient of a blunder, sure, but it's how you follow up, and he's exactly. following up with precision. Yeah, I, I feel like she was in an amazing spot for the first 10, 11 moves because it was clear that Virtual was like a bit nervous, uh, I think, in terms of like how he was playing and how he was moving. But like, I feel like if he gets the one thing he needs, which is like a mistake from a player, he develops a lot of confidence uh, and he just starts steamrolling. Yep, my main piece of advice to Cutie, I don't know, Ludwig, maybe you can go whisper in her ear, is just take your time out of the opening, especially when you're out of theory, because she had that free pawn, but that was the whole difference in the two opponents who took their time. What do yeah. you do here? He found the best move. It's a beautiful tactic. Sadly, she just has to move her queen away, and then her bishop is hanging. But at least he won't be able to take the bishop right away because she's also attacking the rook. Right, the rook protects the bishop. The bishop was attacking the queen, so oh the queen no, goes but out. Now, but now he can take the bishop because it attacks the queen. And 
I think that might give her one opportunity, though. If this bishop is captured, the queen can jump into the white position. That rook is trapped in the corner. White's pieces are kind of scattered, so that mm -hmm. does give her an opportunity to venture into enemy territory. And you know, virtual now down about five and a half minutes. He's actually just capturing it quickly. I would love to see queen b2. But another thing that happens all the time in IRL chess, as soon as you make a couple blunders, you get down on yourself. And instead of looking for counterattacks, similar to how Cutie played very fast, you just want to play quickly because you feel like the game is over. But queen b2 would have been a very cool try to see. Let me tell you, Cutie gets depressed. Yeah. Aww. It's tough. Uh, and and she, she never quits, which I think is good. But it's funny because, like, if you're a bad player and you have played chess before, you know as a fact if you are down a rook or down – or excuse me, up a rook or up a bishop, like you've captured it, you forked or whatever, you've lost games like that. Like, you, you've lost games with huge leads. Yep. But you never think about that when you are in that same deficit, how you could make an equivalent comeback. Absolutely. That was my greatest weakness as well when I was playing competitive. Like, my, my self-confidence, as soon as you're in a losing position and there'd be so many – so many potential comebacks in the game. And that's something that really anyone trying to learn chess should always try to be hyper aware about. Yeah, I think you start believing that your opponent is better than you, and then you don't expect mistakes from them, but I mean, you ex should expect the same mistakes that you're making from your opponent. I mean, you should really just try to find the right moves, of course, but you should never just trust your opponent. You need to find out what the mistakes of their plans are. And right now, Cutie is down three minor pieces, down a knight and two bishops for just a couple pawns. That's not good. No. She's... Is she fucked? I, I wouldn't say she's not. I wouldn't say she's not, you know? Sure. Uh, but my, my, my bigger worry is even if Cutie loses this game, I just hope that it doesn't affect her mentality going into the second game. Um, I think even going into the match, Cutie was not super confident in her abilities. And because of that, she's also playing so quickly. Yeah, she's always played fast. Uh, I think that's like a hard habit to break, mm, okay. to like slow it down intentionally. When I had uh, kids that I would teach chess, I would make them sit on their hands for 10 seconds before they could make a move just to... What are you, like a Russian the... coach? <laughs> <laughs> Almost, yes. It's a, you know, good advice for youngsters, but hard to convince an adult to do that. Yeah. Like, it, would be hilarious. Gonna look stupid. it would be hilarious. <laughs> you can just count to 10 in your head first. Take a second. But it's a you know, couple of days of first for Cutie. Yesterday, she was doing stand-up comedy. Today, she's playing an OTB chess match for quite a significant prize fund. I, it's, of course, natural to be nervous. And I just feel like virtual seems really calm. Yeah. I mean, I think he knows he's the favorite. He has done all the prep he can. So it's like, you know, you kind of just got to show up to the test and do your best job. Uh, and that's all you really can do. Yeah, one thing I actually want to recognize that I really liked in virtual is, like, even today he was trying to get chess lessons. Yesterday he was training with Dina Belankaya, and even though he knows he is much higher rated and he's a favorite, one thing that higher rated opponents often do is they kind of, you know, have a big ego, big self of confidence, and they don't take the match seriously, and they don't prepare because they're going against someone weaker. But virtual never stopped preparing for this, took it very seriously, and I very much respect that. Yeah, he's been grinding for the last month, right? Just straight. And he's gobbling up pawns now. And Cutie, you know, she, as you were saying, Ludwig, she's played for years. She had lessons with Levy. Uh, she's learned her openings that way. But then I think she's been playing a bunch but not studying as much. And, and virtual study has paid off in the last month. His rating has gone, I think, over 1,100 now. Wow. Have you guys heard the never resign rule until you're a certain rating? Yeah. What rating is, is, the, is the one? You should never resign until... And the, the logic behind it being you are too low of a rating to properly assess well, the, the board. I can give you one answer. It's any rating that's not in PogChamps. I think everyone in PogChamps <laughs> just never resign. I have full faith that any stalemate can happen. Yeah, that was one of the big issues with Daily Dose. Yeah, he was actually the only one who resigned, I think. Yeah. Literally the only... And it was a completely like equal game. Robert, you made a face what like you ate an onion. No, I'm impressed. <laughs> That's I'm, impressive. The, the tears are just, look at that move. Because it's a <laughs> forced queen trade. Yeah, because when you're ahead, you're taught to trade. He's threatening checkmate in one. This pawn on g7 is threatened by both the queen and the rook. The queen trade is offered. And if you have to step back, that puts you in a very weak position. You're just playing defensive chess. So queen d7 
was quite a high level move from virtual he's well ahead but that's good execution yeah, and she does end up taking it now there's a there are dreams of back rank still i think he'll probably squash them i don't think they exist currently uh but but that would be all i'm hoping for this is like i'm opening up a page in bobby fisher's how to play chess book oh she is offering trades well maybe she's going for the attempt to stalemate strategy that would be the other possibility to get a draw if she trades off enough pieces and pushes the pawn so that they can't move anywhere else. All right, you're in a tournament. You're in a game that's like, is fucked. And you got to play this person again. When you are playing this game, are you thinking of the next game? You shouldn't be. But, I mean, at this point, when she's down so much, okay, she probably knows she's going to lose. But I do think it's helpful to get your mindset back. So playing lost positions sometimes is helpful rather than starting the next game right away where the you know, taste of defeat is so fresh. Yeah, often in my tournaments, I would go even, if you have like five minutes before your next game, go outside or get a breath of fresh air. I think what's going to be most important for Cutie is that she gives herself a little mental reset before the next match. You know, maybe Ludwig could go squeeze in a pep talk or something. I think that would be critical because, once again, she had a great opening position. She, she was following her intuition, following what she and Robert went over, and then just played a little too quickly. Well, I'll keep it a buck. I don't think I would help her. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, I don't think I'd be yeah. able to. Yeah, I guess my pe pep talks for my sister never work, so. Well, well you never pep talk. I, you always I just <laughs> recap on what I did wrong and then say, well, good luck. I, I tried to pep talk. Well, I, I don't like being in the middle of this. <laughs> Uh, You're excited. Is he called it a Robert sandwich? Yeah, I'm the Botez brother. The Botez brother. Yeah, yeah. Botez and we shared our brother. song with him too. True in the dance. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel well, left out, Ludwig? Yeah, I, I kind of feel like the bonus Jonas right now. <laughs> Y'all three got a thing. Well, I love that Cutie is trying to attack here. Regardless, I could see a world where maybe Virtual moves his bishop so far back that they don't defend against the back rank anymore. Which would it matter? Because well, H3, you know, right? You have to have imagination. Sure. Like maybe G4, G3 is also coming. So you're both pointing out that the king has this H2 escape here. So if you can get a pawn all the way up, it could stop the king from getting out. But that seems like a pipe dream. And like you asked the question about rebounding. Hey, you rebounded from a loss to Andrea Northern Lion, right? Mm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. And what happened that tournament? That what happened insane. that tournament, Hess? I don't remember. I think, uh, you know, just <laughs> champion chess players. A couple champions. That's why I'm on the couch. Yeah. Right? Uh, champions. Uh, you see that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> oh, what happened? We had a game stoppage. An accidental game stoppage. It has been fixed and resolved. <laughs> now is when Cutie should pull out the mind games and start threatening his mom and whispering things into his ears. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think Are they allowed to trash talk? Uh, certainly. Yeah. Why, why oh, could really? you? Why, so is that, we're wait, so used is that to classical allowed? chess where you're supposed to be silent. Yeah, you're not allowed in real This whole thing is, you know, you replicating get classical chess. Forfeited? You get oh, yeah. a warning you say war first, word? probably. Yeah, but it's a dead silent room for many hours, so it's very quiet in the chess tournaments. No one's speaking. I, I'm, I'm at a chess tournament. It's, it's Fabiano Caruana nice. across from me. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> Uh, bitch. <laughs> yeah, then the term, term would, arbiter is going to come it? take yeah. you out. Yes. And then I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, I want to tell him no. We're, like, we're just bantering. What does Bobby do to you? Why him? Bobby. Yeah, out of all the players Bobby, you could have came for, you picked the nicest <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, that's hey, why I, I'm that, proud of the new one, though. <laughs> but yeah, chess players are too shy to even make eye contact. Actually, you're right. Let me pick the meanest one. Who do you think that is? Uh, <laughs> you guys know the chess world let's go through it i think we all had a name pop up and we all chose not to say it i think anish would handle it the best so anish know, giri he's also a, a fan of ludwig so i do like anish giri uh well i think cutie's mentality going into this game was uh wow. she actually said into the car was uh i want to go in expecting to lose I, I think that's the problem, though. I understand, like, look, I'm the same person. I like to not set any expectations and just expect disappointment because then you won't get disappointment. But in a competitive game, I feel like that's a huge drawback. What mentality did, did you have, Hess, in your, in your champions and champions and championships? You mean the one that we secured together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I, you can't go in thinking you're going to lose, but I also think it depends on how competitive you are. Because some people, they just want to crush their opponent. 
others, they're striving to find the optimal choice at every turn. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on like your mindset and what the tournament is about. Because if you're playing in a tournament where Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Hikaru and all of them are playing, you're likely not going to win, but you get the opportunity to face off against them. And you can beat these players in individual games. We see them lose sometimes. But uh, yeah, if you're really super competitive, I think you can feel like, yeah, this, I mean, this is not good for her either, but it can really hurt to lose every game. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to echo, by you giving your opponent more credit than you're giving yourself, on move, like, I don't know, 10 or 15, Virtual dropped a free pawn in the position. Like, someone who of that rating wouldn't blunder so soon, but because you're giving them so much credit, you're not expecting them to make any mistakes early in the game. And I really wish, like, that mindset is so important. So if you want to win, you can't give that level of respect. Absolutely not. You can't be that down on yourself. You, you have to focus on your best game. Any game where you're an underdog, just focus completely on your play and don't think about your opponent. I think you can respect them, but just don't fear them and don't think they're infallible. Mm. Yeah, I, I heard once it's good to be nervous because you care, but not nervous because you're scared. And I think that for Cutie, yeah. she came in quite Dude. fearful. Bars. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think she came in scared of virtual, thinking that he was kind of this pro Ooh. player who would just crush her. But she did have an opportunity. So if she were to review the game, she would say, I could have actually won a pawn. He made a mistake. And then you slowly realize, well, my opponent's not invincible. They exactly. do go wrong from uh, time to time. Oh, good question, though, because that is a thing on the online games. It happens almost every pog champs. The moment it ends, everybody goes to the analysis board and they say, oh, I had a winning spot here. I blundered this many times. I had this many missed wins. That doesn't exist here. True. There, there is there no analysis, analysis board, right? Yeah. But Yeah, usually you write it down with notation and then go review it after in a Skittles room is what they call it. Is this real? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wonder You're why there's, there's no. no skittles in that room by the way there's no candy <laughs> yeah, in there. but it's that's just, just what they call nerds. it they call it a skittles room yes <laughs> this sounds like something that should be illegal <laughs> <laughs> and they children would go to this room to yeah right room. <laughs> that's okay all right great that's good for the chess world for sure uh, and then you go with what, like a coach who tells you? Some, or your opponent. Yeah, sometimes you get the sense of camaraderie and your opponent's like, hey, you want to go analyze in the Skittles room? And maybe you ate his Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Did you see what happened? Yeah. He, what happened? He almost blundered his bishop. But it's because the pawn was like in between two oh, squares. Oh, okay, yeah. So he was going to play his bishop out. Oh. So no passant for the fans. And clearly no touch move because that was a yes. grab of the bishop. That would have been illegal, but we're yeah. doing... We're doing Street rules, as they say. Well, Cutie only has to lose another two pawns before she can attempt a stalemate. Seems like she's going for that as well. There we go. Although he does not have to take. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter if he takes it, right? Yeah, it's already it's already blocked. Uh, he's going straight for the queen. Yeah, if the light square was to be taken from the king and Cutie's king stayed in the corner square, she's going there. But if he, if Virtual knows what he's doing, he would just never. Oh, he attack has a checkmate in one here. Yeah. But yeah, uh, no, he found it. Done. How do they know Done it's checkmate? So. Oh, he says it? <laughs> wow. That was fun. Oh, <laughs> it feels so different over the board. How hard do you think we got flamed by the commentators? <laughs> we're very nice. Uh, I think we're very nice and respectful. Much. What do they? Uh, what nice. did they think yeah. we're flaming them? We wouldn't do I mean, that. No, oh, never. You walked in when you were just going ham on. That it. is true. I was meaner hit to him before the match started. Uh, he got threatened to not get invited to streamer awards, and after this game, I don't know if he's getting invited. Do they have a break now, or they go straight into it? I believe they have a little break. A okay. little break between the matches. Uh, we'll be right back with game two. Game one goes to virtual checkmate in 42 moves. We'll see what happens game two, though. Cutie might bounce back. See you in a bit.
Hello, hello. We are back here at PogChamps 5, the finals day of PogChamps 5. We watched the first match of the Constellation Bracket between QD, Cinderella, and Virtual. And it, it was a, it was a Virtual 1-0. It was a Virtual win. But there were some opportunities early on. Uh, Virtual made some mistakes QD did not capitalize on. So she has a chance game two. And we'll actually hear from her, QD herself, uh, how she thinks she'll do with a short little interview. And then we'll go to the match. Oh, oh, I thought you meant like hold my face. They said hold, and I was like, I just froze for a second. I was like, I can hold. I can do this for a while. Uh, we'll get that video guy for you guys in just a second. I see both Virtual and Cutie getting makeup done. It's actually a team of 17 on Virtual's hair right now. <laughs> it is a lot. Apparently, they have to spray paint in the crown. He is balding there. Um, so I gotta stop making fun of him. I know, I know his mom's <laughs> watching. Lad ever. I know he's very nice. He's, he's very nice. nice. His, his mother must be dancing right now in their house. Up 1-0, poised to take this down, and now he gets to play uh, against the stone wall, yeah. which he has done so much prep for. He's playing against the stone wall. Is he not? Well, He's gonna depends what Cutie, Cutie would play. Cutie did maybe? promise that she wouldn't play the stone wall. Does That's Cutie true. play? Because Cutie plays it with white and black. No, no, she plays the Karo Khan with black yes. and the stone wall with white. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and and uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that in just a bit. But first, let's watch that Cutie interview. My chess play style is kind of like uh, watching a car accident that there's gas leaking and it might explode at any moment. Uh, it's not good. It's not fun, but you can't look away. I'm 800. Well, you're 800? Well, I don't know. Who knows, really? This is my third Pog Champs. <laughs> uh, they keep inviting me back because I, I show up on time, I think, which is big. I did much worse against Leslie than I thought I would. I stalemated a lot. I played Papa Platt and he beat me. I think that's all I played, but I also feel like I forgot someone, which could be mean. I played I did a thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's funny, I forgot about him. So that's how I got into losers. And then I played Jason, Daily Dose. It was a good game, but I didn't stalemate, so that was a bonus. Here we go. Wait, Ooh, I had coffee that day, fun. Beauty. I hope I can have coffee at There's the table. so oh, many ways. That's embarrassing, no one tell my dad. Oh, my dad is gonna watch. Come on, cutie. Oh, Come God. on. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, yes. Wait, that'd be so good Is if I did Is this real, that. Anna? I can't tell. I don't know. Am I dreaming? Wow. Checkmate. Wow, I didn't realize that was a checkmate. That's really exciting for me. That was good. Wow. That was good. Oh, Sick beauty. Either Ginny yeah. sees checkmate or we've got game one of the books. I don't see checkmate. Oh my god, I see checkmate. Do I do it? GG. Unironic dab. I was so sick during <laughs> He's that. not going to take it. He'll see that. I also kept showering and then just playing chess right after. I think so he I plays too fast. Less. I think he's going to take it. Okay, or maybe he'll take F1 first. He's going to take He's gonna take something for sure. Oh, I took my... Why are they freaking out? They're freaking out. Oh, that's when they did it. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be right, man. I don't want to be right. Okay, right? but she doesn't see that the queen is hanging. Oh, my She goddess. doesn't see that the queen is hanging. Look. Oh, that's so I don't have time to get down there with the Oh, that's so sad. Queen is hanging. Take the queen, you dummy. I don't take it. I lose this game, don't I? No, it's daily dose. I win eventually. Dude. I knew I didn't have to. I don't know. No. But he didn't see the queen. She's losing. Either. Queen takes queen. We're both bad. Oh my god. Oh, it's good when you're queen both H7. bad. She looks like she's about to take the pawn. Yep. Okay, she does. Also, that's also pretty good. She's getting it. Try to get checked. Yeah. Over. Now queen h7 is made wow. by accident. Queen H7 is mate by accident. H7. Queen H7 is just. I didn't go there. Queen G3. That would have been cool Queen if up. I went there. Queen up. Beauty Cinderella is going to be taking a free Uber ride to the live finals in Los Angeles. Dude, I can't find One checks second. for the live finals. Uh, 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 uh. He lost. He, it's over. He resigned. Oh, he ran out of time. Wow. Yeah, I can't find checks. That, oh, what? Oh, I'm screwed. Bro. <laughs> I'm so screwed. Bro, what? Yeah, I'm screwed. This will be fun. She's not screwed, right, Hess? No, she's got a chance, right? She watched the video there, and she was, like, not remembering any of the things that happened in her previous games, but I think she's just hard on herself. What are they talking about? Even when she was winning, she kept think thinking that she didn't see the checkmate, and she's like, oh, I did see it. It's a confidence thing. I'm sure there was something. I spent, like, 40 moves. Like, why is he so slow? Yeah, dude. Yeah. 
It is, we were talking about it during the break, much more serious. This Pog Champs. Because normally they talk to chat right after and they start playing like, you know, Taylor Swift and they're jamming out. But now it's like, it's quiet in there. Yeah. We need a little bit more trash talk. Okay, nice have you played over the board in a tournament oh, yet, Ludwig? Gone. Never. I have never once played. I played over the board last night against Sea Dog. Who won? <laughs> Talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me later because it was not close. Pinky promise. Across our fingers. Oh, under my plate. Uh, they no, they talked about this. This is drama. She pinky promised she wouldn't play the Stonewall, but she crossed her fingers behind her back. That's all I've got. That's all I've got, baby. All right, let's see, Kitty. Well, now we'll see how good his prep really is. Let's do this. Oh, all right, this is Cutie's surprise, infamous surprise. white opening. Oh. What happened was at the original Pog Champs, she was trained by Levy, Gotham Chess. She said, Give me an opening I can do the same way every time without thinking. She learned the Stonewall. She has done it ever since. According to her words, the Stonewall is a Dog shit opening, uh, unless you are playing people who are less than a thousand rating. I don't know if that's true. Is that right? I don't know. Well, I don't think you're even supposed to play the Stonewall with white, which is why I was confused initially. So I, I think it's not even an opening, of, or at least for most of the right? players. So the Stonewall is a structure, and it involves white pushing this pawn up to f4. So you get this bind, and let's see if she does it. No, she trades bishops first. So she's actually developing. But the point of the Stonewall is that once you get this pawn here, you completely clamp down on the center, and with the center unable to be opened up, that means that black's pieces get restricted. So this is actually a more open position, and we have seen some trades. And okay, here comes the trash talk. What did you say? Yeah, I need my audio a little yeah, higher. Let's listen in. Let's listen in to it. I didn't win the last game. I gotta do what I gotta do. I gotta do what I gotta do. A little itchy, your skin. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep asking him questions, <laughs> Judy. You gotta, you gotta use it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, this open mic these. dynamic might change the whole game. Yeah, no, if she's allowed to talk, <laughs> I think that might swing. The clock's ticking, she's nice. already All up right. a minute. She is a brutal trash talker. She told me this story. She was uh, a. Yeah, I bet Cutie could take on the New York chess hustlers. She, she could, because she, 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 was, she was driving and she got into a road rage incident. Oh, God. Where uh, a guy behind her started like honking at her to like turn right at a red light. Mm -hmm. and, but there was people crossing the street. So she's like, I can't. <laughs> You know, turn right at the time. Uh, they both turn right. He pulls up next to her. She starts yelling at the window. Learn how to fucking drive! And then she instantly rolled out the window and with full League of Legends, you know, confidence goes, literally kill yourself on this car ride. Kill yourself. And then, and then, and then he goes in front of her and then like slows down to like, you know, uh, like break in front of her and then pulls next to her again. And, and then just keep saying, learn how to drive. And then, and then she just doubles down. She goes, I, I, I hope there's an accident. I hope there's an accident. And then she speeds away. And she did that without any hesitation at all to an L.A. driver, uh, which is a scary situation to be in. You have to be willing to die to take on that yes. argument. L.A. drivers oh are scary. A cutie is a very terrifying opponent, especially when she begins trash talking. But I feel like she's still taking it easy on virtual. She's not going off on him as if he was a driver in the road rage. And look, it's hard to trash talk virtual. He's I a very know. nice guy. His mom so is annoying. watching. Yeah. It's so annoying. He says something about, when I was asking about Trek Mania, he says he does like bobsledding or something. So I call him Cool Runnings. <laughs> and I, that's my new nickname for him. But he's just a really chilled guy. Like he just sits there. He's calculating. He wants to make Norway proud. I've heard they care about chess there. Uh, I don't think it's that big. 95. I like this. <laughs> Cutie's, put <laughs> <laughs> Cutie's putting her knight in the middle of the board. If he takes, um, she could take with the F pawn and open up the F file. Put oh. some pressure towards his This king. is a beautiful position for Cutie. And one thing I wanted to say about Cutie's opening is what I've actually noticed as a trend in Pog Champs is people not playing real openings sometimes gets their best chess. Because like what Robert was mentioning earlier, you're less just being a robot and just memorizing moves. And similar to what I saw Tyler playing the cow, he had a beautiful opening. Cutie playing this reverse stone wall for the white pieces, which is supposed to be for the black. She's just following her intuition now, playing natural moves like the pawn break in the center. This is great. 
Yeah, she's doing very well. Her king this, is castle. This could be the tiebreaker game. Yeah, the rook is staring down, and that's one of the benefits of playing the stone walls. You push your pawn up where your rook ends up when you castle, so you gain more space for the rook. And Virtual says, my king's been the center too long. Let's get out of danger. And I think he has a good sense of that. Like, some players, they don't recognize when they could be in trouble. Virtual, and of all the games we've seen from him in Pog Chance, particularly the consolation bracket, I do think that he's done quite well to avoid some serious danger. I'm curious who's going to break the silence first now that they're entering tense, serious lands again. Yeah, the opening was full of bants, and then mi mid-game is quick. quiet. Yeah, and Virtual, actually, he was speaking to me earlier at breakfast, saying he's been working on keeping the tension in chess. It's an important concept. And these pawns are staring at each other and saying, look at Whoa. that move by Cutie. She's going right for the kill. Her Vicious. Oh, my God, queen. did she growl at him? Wow. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at that smirk. She's getting her Although confidence Although that might back. give it away. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's true. Poker face. Well, I think oh, he that saw that thing? one. But what? Like in chess, if you face. make a like a like a little smirk, maybe they know there's a tactic or, or something. Or if you blunder and react, sometimes they don't mm -hmm. see the blunder. I've had that happen to me many times. I had a pro tell me once: everything you do on a chessboard conveys information. You can't be all loosey goosey eating a sandwich. <laughs> who, who told you that? <laughs> pro said loosey goosey eating a sandwich. <laughs> it's a Daniel DeGranu masterclass video. Yeah, he, he's a poker player. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's okay. Wait, but he, he plays in pod champs, which earn money so that he's True. a professional chess player. Thank you, Hess. Yeah, 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 okay. Thank you. I, I got you. And ooh, <laughs> virtual. You know, he saved the pawn, but his king is going to be exposed. So it's a good moment for Cutie to slow down. She's not talking. I think she senses that she has a good position. I like that she's taking her time. She played very quick moves the last couple moves, but they were luckily good moves, but now is the time to think, and this is different from her first game. She's slowing herself down in the opening. She's and got I, a minute on him. And I know, Ludwig, you say Cutie gets bored easily, but maybe when it gets into the middle game, it's already getting more interesting, so it'll help her slow down. Yeah, she uh, brought a notebook with her, and generally you're only allowed to write chess notation, I think, if you're in a sweaty chess tournament. Uh, and players have been punished, you were telling me, for, for writing other stuff. They get forfeited. Yep. Uh, but Cutie has a notebook purely to write, f like, notes to herself. Like, hey, remember <laughs> to look it. for checks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe in yourself. That's I, I actually played an opponent in Iceland this year. She was a 11-year-old girl, and on her hand it had written, you can do it, That's smiley so face. That's cute. Wow. Yeah. Did you I, beat her? I did. But what was, the hell? I know, but it was very cute. Alex, what the man? Come hey, on, you you come off as a nice person. You're a bully. Oh, hey, welcome to my life, Robert. Yeah, seriously. Welcome, welcome. Uh, no, I remember one time when I was like eight, I was doodling on my notation notebook, and my opponent called the arbiter <laughs> and tattled on me and was like, "She's not allowed to doodle during the games. It can only be chess." Why did the eval bar drop ten pounds? It's a good question, and it's because she's so used to attacking by bringing her queen to the age file, because in her stone wall, before the bishops get traded, there's often a bishop on the diagonal that she likes to work with her queen. We actually saw a clip of her beating Ginny with the checkmate on the yeah. diagonal. So I think she's like recalling that idea, but the queen on h3 doesn't threaten anything. In fact, the queen on f3, it was barreling down this open line with the rook behind it. That was very powerful. So the queen on h3, it does seem to threaten things, but there's nothing concrete. Just a worse position. Basically, you used a move to not improve. And there's a lot of pawn tension in the center. So for Virtual, it's about time he could take this pawn on e5. He did just push his pawn up to f6. So he can grab a pawn in the center, and that's going to turn the tides. Because it's attacked twice and only defended once. It's attacked three times. Well, wait, what? There's a bishop, a knight, and a pawn. Yeah, that bishop's Whoa. also a big sniper once that diagonal is open. But let's see if he's going to take the pawn. Cutie looks s almost angry as <laughs> she's looking down it's at the board. It's her calculating say it, thinking say it. face. No, say it. <laughs> I was talk say to my girl like that, Andre. Talk to my girl like that. <laughs> Look, I stopped myself, okay? And he makes the move. And Cutie quickly responds. She took a pawn and she took it back, but that's going to open up the board for Black's pieces. So the stone wall, you were trying to restrain your opponent's pieces. Uh -huh. Now you see that once that pawn on e5 collapses, and I think the knight should take it, all of Black's pieces, including the sniper, as Andrea put on g7, the bishop has long range. I think that Black's piece is about to get very active and which is going to steal material. Okay. That's actually a more sneaky way to take because now he's not attacking her rook right away, but he does have discovery check. 
yep, or he's discovery activating attack. two pieces at once right now rather than just one. And that response, not loved by the engine, this rook on c8 can likely just slam down on c2 at any moment. And black is getting active here. This queen on h3 is not helping out in the attack or in the defense. It is a misplaced piece. Virtual under six minutes now, so he's still healthy on the clock. You got a big ass watch. <laughs> <laughs> and a ring. What kind of watch is that? Do we know? I don't. I'm not a watch guy. Oh, me neither. Any, anything else on the subject? Or? No, that's all I got. It's so you. quiet. I'm the time <laughs> was wrong, though. Oh, oh my oh, gosh. Wow. She saw it. Yeah, what's very impressive is in these critical positions, Virtual is always taking his time. And I mean, that's the reason he's finding some of the best moves. Yeah, and here the move is tricky. Cutie has to take the knight on e5 first. And then when he recaptures, both her knight and rook are going to be under attack. So she's going to need to move the rook to d1 to defend the knight. A step one. Complete. There you go. And as you said, rook d1. And the good news for Cutie is her king does feel a bit safer than black's. Like they're not a, sh a shell around the black king, the fortress there. So it feels like if she. Oh. Oh, she played so quickly. Yep, and she didn't see that the other... She saw the knight was under attack. She did not see the rook in the corner was threatened. I'm shocked Virtual hasn't snap made this decision. Is he worried about an attack? I think so. And that's the thing. He's an improving player. Or he is over 1,100. Sometimes you learn these big concepts. Like, okay, does this apply to the position? But no. He says, I can grab it. He safely does. He is up. It's going to be a pawn and a rook for just a knight. She can't capture back, right? With her rook? She she has to capture <laughs> back with her rook here just to win some material back. Right. And she said she forgot about that. She wasn't looking at the yeah, rook in the corner. The sniper came in. Talk to me about chess grime. Now, over the board, there's some things you can do, right? Chess, is that fake? Chess what? Grime. What is that? S sleaziness. Cheating, you perhaps. You Zoomer terms. Scamming. Well, earlier they taught me what soaking was, and now just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning Andrea, so much today. that is today. not a Zoomer term. I didn't know what that meant. Ludwig <laughs> taught me a lot of words today. No, I did not teach anyone about You're soaking. Like, Ludwig taught me that one. <laughs> let's, let's get back to the, the question at hand here. It, is it common? I mean, not in tournament, obviously, but in street chess to cheat over the board? I've seen the chess hustlers do it when they think people aren't paying attention. They'll move to a slightly different square or take a piece off the side, but not usually. It's very rare. It feels hard to get away with. Yeah. It's more like bad manners during a chess tournament, like eating an entire dinner meal at your board. And burping in your opponent's uh, face. Those are like the slights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, so someone burped in your face yes. during a game? <laughs> there were some, some burpy men in the Portland chess club, and I'll never forget that one who loved Diet Coke. <laughs> There is the a uh, Diet Coke. Sorry, there, go ahead. Well, there's a player in the Smash cool community then. who similarly <laughs> was theorized to never shower. It's not very cool mm. of you. Yeah, that's that's a good way so to that, play mind games on your yeah, opponent. The that stench. it would just distract. The Maybe Cutie shouldn't have showered. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll tell him for next time. <laughs> this isn't protected anymore, so I might as well just. <laughs> oh, now she's explaining her moves. <laughs> Just start does, does virtual him. count as her chat? Like, is that what's happening here? I, I don't know. What? There is a comfort to... Talking out loud while you play chess. Exactly. Yep, for sure. Some I honestly think sometimes I play better. Interesting. I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> That's actually a very clever move. He could have recaptured this pawn. Instead, he pushed his pawn up. He wants to push it one square further. There is a pin yeah, along the why. third rank. That's actually quite a high-level play. If that's why he played it. I think it is. I would be very impressed. So she's got to move her queen. Oh, she saw it. Nice. It would be easier with the arrows. Yeah, I wish I could draw the arrows, because then you would go here. The arrows do help. Do you ever use them to calculate? All the time. both looking at the same plan, so. Yeah, well, I don't like it. Could you change it? I thought about that. Do you have an alternative? Uh, not one that's better for you. Because this looks really good for me, too. It looks really good for it you. It does look good for me, so. Yeah, it's that blunder that I shared about. Mm. It was unfortunate that I did that. Mm-hmm. Okay, technically, I'm only down by how much material? 
Judy would make a great poker player. On chess.com, it shows you how many points of material you're down. Now she's to do math. I guess it's something you have to calculate. Yeah. Ugh. The things we take for granted. Anyone ever call you sire? She should distract him on his time. Yeah, true. Good strat. Just wrong She's distracting herself. Yes. She's distracting herself from the doom that she has to deal with. So, and then if I move my queen here to protect that, you're just gonna take, you know, it's then I'd go there, and then that stupid thing. And so really, I kind of need a check, but now I'm gonna check you, because you got that stupid thing. Everything you have is stupid. <laughs> I'd like you to know. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, and I hope your mom is watching. Coach is also proud to hear that. Anna? If I'm doing annoying things, then I'm doing good time. Anna, he's being annoying. Um, okay, so... Is Anna his mother's name? I Anna Kramling, I think. Oh. She's doing a watch party. Do she coached virtual. Thing that no one else would ever think of. And there's probably a thing, but... I hope they're watching him in the uh, chestnut bar in guy. Oslo. Oh, true. My queen. That'd be sick. Yeah, they I'm have guessing. a very epic bar where they play chess and watch queen, events. Right? She's... Sorry, go ahead. I said he would be the only like champion, world pod <laughs> champion <laughs> of in Norway. Norway yeah. 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 So there is a real shot that he's the best Norwegian player to do it. Queen. Perhaps out of you know just uh, John well, Ludwig Hammer. Move, Ludwig John Hammer. You, you know that uh, uh, Virgil's middle name is Ludwig. Is it? Yeah, he's told us that yesterday. Well, he didn't tell me this. Yeah, but you weren't here. I know, but like we've talked many times. Being honest with you. Maybe he, you know. Didn't Unless want to be a, be a competition oh, yeah. of who's the better Ludwig. That's what I would make it that you too. Love, uh, <laughs> Why not? What's the best move oh, here? Here, because uh, I'm thinking you just go queen h6. She's sipping her cup. Well, she she moved her queen instead of h6 to h4. I like queen h6 better because you could then follow with knight g5. Here, I would recommend trading while you're ahead. And black has a lot of extra material. You see the bar saying minus five. He can keep the queens on the board and try to win that way. But why not trade queens and win the ensuing ending? Makes a whole lot of sense. I like that cutie stopped talking on his turn. <laughs> <laughs> the one strat. <laughs> it's a good She's strat. respectful. I, no, she I really is. It. She is. Yeah, don't think she fun. wants to be rude. But then why does she keep myself. asking about his mother? <laughs> 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 like a Genuine interest. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Ooh, the clock is getting a little bit low. Under four minutes for each. Do we know what Virtual's blitz rating is? Go is it party. lower than his rapid? <laughs> <Yeah>. Certainly. <laughs> girls' night. <laughs> Thank you. Did you say girls' night because they traded queens? Yeah, girls' night. <laughs> That's <Go> awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's just All mopping right, I'm up. I'm not that far down. Mm. There's got to be something <laughs> that I'm not seeing. I uh, don't think there is some she's not seeing. No, I mean she could try to go for forks, like reroute her knight to f3, g5, e4, f6, but it's just, it's just very up. slow. It's, see you later. Yeah. Cutie would make a good Barbie. Did that run through anyone Margot else's? Like you know Margot Robbie so, uh -huh. playing Barbie, not yeah. like a doll. Right. But that that's what was it. running through my head. Okay. Be aggressive. We yeah, did we did uh, we did dress up as Barbie and Ken for Halloween last year. That's true. We kind of beat the trend out because yeah, I was you guys do this predicted year. that. Yeah, we're Our crazy. personality very much reminds me. Yep, yep. Of <laughs> Are you? Oh, I thought you were gonna say Ludwig reminds you of Ken <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> Ludwig very much reminds me of Ken. <laughs> uh, you know, I did get that during makeup today. Calculating, calculating. <laughs> Would you describe yourself as more of a Ken or an Oppenheimer? Uh, I'm more of an Alan. An Alan? Mm hmm. Okay. You haven't seen Barbie. No. Alan, <laughs> was, Alan was the one doll who was an Ken, and he, he he was played by no Michael Sarah. Yeah, and he was a hero. Yeah, he was great. Okay, the pass pawn is coming. This is she. No, that's a blunder. Uh, uh, she she could have tried to trick was, him, but, but it wouldn't it have worked. Why? <laughs> Well, because if I tell you, then I'll I think virtual sees this. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. No. Oh. Give this woman an Oscar. Uh, I hate chess. <laughs> what is a checkers tournament? <laughs> Stupid game. I think QB's most consistent quote Dad, since Paul Champs won. <laughs> Don't tell your friends about this. Oh, uh, gosh. Her so dad crazy. is watching. Uh oh. <laughs> what are you going to do? Just run away. Very annoying. Skewy. Okay. 
Yeah. Interesting. It's like yeah, another yeah, game yeah, yeah. where super tight position and then it collapsed off like the one queen move. And yeah. then the center just got destroyed. One accuracy. I, I think if she would have uh, played rook d1 earlier to protect her knight, she would have still had a pretty good fighting chance. Because then as soon as you start being down material, it's easy to spiral. Right. <laughs> Especially when you missed oh, that, like, it wasn't at all intentional. She just didn't see that it was under attack. Yep. She started doubting oh, herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she played a, a good game. Virtual, as oh, we well, start off the show, he's a stronger <laughs> player. He's mopping up resign. quite nicely. Oh, she, she resigned. She should have just chucked the king at her opponent instead. She resigned and tilted sucks. the king. The good resign, bad resign. Yeah. I, I think she could have fought a little <laughs> bit longer. There's, there's <laughs> the first virtual, you know, maybe we break the rule. He's yeah. so upset she broke the pinky promise. Aww. God, she did tell me about the pinky promise, but that she did cross her fingers. So, you know, you're allowed to break it if you cross the fingers. That is a rule. Uh, and that's 2-0 virtual over QD. One more game and it's over. Best None of, of our predictions were right. Well, there was a 3-1 prediction. That could come true. It depends if Cutie wins the next one. Tiebreak could still happen. Oh, that's true. Tiebreak could happen. We're playing three. It's a best of four. Ah, four. Ah, yes. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. Uh, but... Well well, I was going to say, now that Cutie has started using the open mic strategy, I might even change my prediction. I like the energy that she's bringing to these games. Wait, I would so like you're to see changing more. your prediction when we know it's 2 0? <laughs> well, our prediction is that Cutie would get a draw. No, I'll stick to my prediction. I'm just oh, saying, true, true. I think Why Cutie's open mic this? strategy is going right. to get better and better for her. Uh, it's you're the you're the Botez brother. Yeah, you are. we are yeah. the Botez brothers. Hi, Papa brothers. Botez. Sing a song. Sing a song. We uh, are the, the Botez, Botez brothers. <laughs> we, we are the Botez brothers. Wait, how come I'm the only one? Why are you all the brothers too? Andrea, yeah. it's just ad I made this yeah. song it's, actually a year ago before we had a brother, so I have put a lot of thought into it. There you go. Yeah. And now you have a brother. Yep. Uh, and we have a break coming up. Just a few minutes. We'll be right back after the break to see perhaps the conclusion of the Constellation Finals of Virtual Wins. The it, growl! Or Sorry. the cutie comeback. She's growling. She feels herself. Oh, Rook D1, man. Would have been nice. Be back in just a bit.
let's go. Oh, uh, hello. Welcome back. We are here joined by the Botez brothers with a new addition. Yeah, more family. Let's go. How Botez you doing, brothers Levy? going strong. I'm good. Are you happy to be a Botez brother? Absolutely not. I'm also <laughs> not happy that my my uh, my student, my second protege in the finals is struggling against uh, virtual, but I feel like if you're going to lose to anybody in this event, you can lose to virtual because I feel like I would lose to virtual at this point. So Oh, come on. But you almost did, didn't you? You almost lost to me once. No, uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, I did. We'll talk about that later. But first, let's take a look into the mind of the guy who's beating QD 2-0, who's one game away from being our consolation bracket champion. Let's take a look at an interview with Virtual. I would say I'm an aggressive chess player. If things are too slow, if things are too theoretical or boring, I, I get bored. I want excitement. I want things to be like hanging. I want sacrifices. That's why I don't play the London. That's why I go away from these boring openings. I want things to explode after 10 moves. So I came into the tournament, high ambitions of doing really well, want to represent my chess country of Norway and, and myself for it as a, as a good chess player in this tournament as well. The bracket was really tough, the tournament bracket, the Group B. Played some very tough games against Gasly and, uh, and Sapnap. And so I got third in the group, which, okay, you know, it's, it's a little iffy, but there's also the Constellation bracket. And once I got into Constellation bracket, I was like, okay, well, I'm here now. I'm perhaps the highest rated player in this bracket. I want to go all the way. I want to go to LA and I want to play the final over the board and here I am. All right, let's take a look. And it wasn't and a You're always going to have two squares. I'm not no, going to touch that square. Look. Yeah, so this game is the when I played against Sapnap where I pinned his queen and then I was very scared of blundering the, uh, the stalemate. He was trying to set it up, but I found the checkmate. Started with the win. Things were looking so up here. You know, it, was, it was very exciting. Is but, uh, see? Oh, and this is against Saikuno. Oh, yeah, when he blundered back rank. Yeah. This was a tough game. Saikuno played so well. I got so surprised until he uh, missed a very obvious tactic. And then I was very relieved because then I felt like I am getting to the semifinals after. Oh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's often in chess when, uh, when you're not the best player, you can be so confident in a move, and then if your opponent plays the correct move after, you just get completely shattered. So. Hey, we live longer, guys. Painful feeling. <laughs> Pretty close game, but that's a win. So that's, that's what brought me. You were 1100? You were losing! Sorry, I'm not to I spoke to Levy at the pool today at the hotel, and he was saying, like, yeah, you play way too confidently sometimes. There's probably a checkmate here. The semis against Squeaks. I don't like it though, bro. If this. Again, play the same opening that I've been playing and. Uh, I was very good with the white pieces, but then I was losing with the black pieces in the next game. King goes back. No, he can't. It's a forced checkmate. So with both these games in the, in the constellation bracket, I felt like I was the favorite to win and the highest rated player. But now, I don't know. Cutie has, uh, has been studying and she is. Uh, much higher rated than two opponents. They gave me a big challenge, so Very cool. we'll see. Oh yeah, 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 just cool. Let's go. I do not Let's think go. it will be easy at all. I think we will have very competitive games. Oh, and then this. Yeah, this was something we prepared. I prepared uh, three moves against Squeaks. <laughs> One of them was to do pull-ups after the game to establish dominance. <laughs> a little bit of speedrunner rivalry there. I think a big instrumental part for why I even got to the finals is my coach, Anna Kramling. She even flew out to Norway on a one day's notice. She has been going one step above every other coach in the tournament, and we're going to show why that matters. 
Wow. You heard it here. Anna Kramling has been going one step above every other coach. Yeah, what was that quote, Andrea? Ooh. One step Which, above every other coach. Look, I mean, I'm a coach, oh. but, you know, we have another coach right here on the couch. We do. We do. And, and Ronas. Oh. Well, actually, no, I guess you, we're all coaches, oh. but. <laughs> you happen to coach <laughs> cutie. That's yeah, not accurate. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, I'm like, a, you know, I'm like a, this is like blaming Frank Vogel uh, for current Lakers troubles. You know, oh, he's not the coach also anymore. Frank's coach, actually. So That's you're true. The <laughs> so in a way. coach of the day. Yeah, you know, you know, cutie, cutie and I, we actually didn't communicate a, a whole Thank lot. You. For this pot champs, um, uh. and then and then you know what Anna Kramling found like the uh. youth champion of Norway who had retired for five years basically. <laughs> That's like what he is. He's definitely like multiple time junior champion of Norway, uh, and uh, you know she n now she looks you know really smart. But oh, why are you changing things? Oh. Did she just she found a good student. She's not a good coach. Did, she's probably a good coach. But did he speak to Anna? Like since their first game, he just changed his opening. Yeah, I, honestly, honestly, I wouldn't even doubt it. Like I wouldn't even doubt if. Sorry. If that so happened, uh, because she she got a great position in the advanced Carl Khan, courtesy of myself and Robert. You know? Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we had to we, we had to we had to team up ourselves because Anna Kramling is coaching. such a good coach. Yeah, uh, and uh, maybe they did change it up. That's impressive that he adapted so quickly. I don't think they had a break to talk to any coach. He just maybe did it on his own. Adapt. All he's done, like adapt would mean that he got some sort of opening advantage, but for now her position is completely fine. Oh, I was just sitting in the green, green room with uh, <laughs> Danny Wrench, and uh, <laughs> Danny said so that <laughs> if Cutie just spent a little bit more time between moves 10 and 20, <laughs> she could gain like 400 ELO. Yeah. Because she gets great positions from openings, and she's up on time, but she plays too fast. Like right now, this position is excellent for black. You see the evaluation bar offside, white is slightly better, but the contours are there. This is a light square bishop that only white has, but that bishop is staring into a wall of black's pawns. It doesn't have a good diagonal, but she's probably going to start speeding up. She's trying to use the time as a weapon, and it's not a familiar position to her. Yeah. You know what's funny? She just said, uh, Hess is probably so mad at me, I'm not doing anything he said. Mm -hmm. And you are the opposite. <laughs> you are fine with her position, yeah. but she is under the impression that somehow she has messed up this opening. Oh Pawn to C3 is a ridiculous move from virtual. Like, the, the fact that I, I do not believe for a second he did not play chess in his childhood because you in, in the weeks that Pog Champs happens to create like a building block for a central pawn advance. I mean that's just that's very very sophisticated stuff and it's, instant. Yeah, instant, instant. He has ten minutes and twelve seconds. He shut down the diagonal for her bishop, so her bishop probably should go back this way to d6. That way it stares at least at a knight. If she goes back to b6 or to e7, and she nice. goes the right way, but if she went to e7, you're staring into nothing. So this is the best response, but I, you have to be impressed by how virtual is playing. I'll be impressed in the next couple of moves, right? Like, this is one of these positions with white where you, you don't rush. You, you play things like rook to e1, because even the move bishop, H, uh, bishop to g5 just runs into this, and then if you try to keep the pin, you actually lose the game, which would be... Nice for a cutie fan, uh, but uh, rookie one and just slow playing. The Let's position. go, Bishop G five. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We got we got the audience there. Oh, that was that was Ludwig. Unbiased. I'm yeah. an unbiased commentator. I'm also unbiased. I want virtual to lose. I mean, listen. I feel like Charles Barkley when he spent the whole season being like, "We're really gonna pretend like the Golden State Warriors not gonna win the whole thing," and uh, and right now I'm sort of like just cheering for the Golden State Warriors to lose. This is what this feels like. Because you don't want to pretend anymore that virtual's just gonna crush. He's this. higher rated than C Dog. <laughs> he. I think that would be an interesting matchup. Can we do that? Like, we're going to have a little time, maybe. We could do a thug finals between consolation winner and championship winner. I like that. We also have boxing gloves somewhere in the back here. Yo, chess boxing 2? 1.5. Yeah, 1. 1.5. <laughs> 1. Well, 5. slap boxing? Because that's what Connor has his pedigree in. He is a slap boxing champion. Yeah. Uh, he did beat me there. That hurt. Knight to E4. Yeah, that's a nice move in the center of the board. Just trading. At, at, at this level, Robert... It's really tough to introduce the concepts to students of how do you evaluate who wins an exchange. And this is one of those moments where she's probably going to take because it's a safe trade. I, they, they're both kind of winning. You know what I mean? Like, it's... 
But I think I that's a good know. way of putting it. Like, sometimes we think that one of us has to win a trade. So what just happened? Those knights were fighting for the same square. There was one knight already on f6. Now her knight on d7, which is dominated by the pawn three squares away. It can't jump forward as far as it would like. It can replace that first knight on f6. But this bishop can then slide back on a more useful diagonal, staring towards black king. So both sides, I think, won the trade. And it looks like she oh, went to f6 she instead of f6. e7. Andrea, I mean, this type of position is closed for now. From what you've seen of the players, like who do you think it favors? Yeah, I, I had a question for you earlier, which was, from Cutie's perspective, her pieces were a little bit tied up before that knight was freed up, and it's difficult for Black to find a plan to break through. Like, as a beginner, are you supposed to push a pawn in the center? I'm not sure. Maybe Cutie's plan is to tack more towards the king, but what would you even recommend is the best beginner plan here for the Black pieces? I feel like I'm watching like, a top-level game. Like, both sides playing very solidly, so. no mistakes. This is one of those positions you get. Slightly better for White, but yeah. prove it. Oh, sorry. And yeah. I don't actually My know how white is supposed to follow sorry. up. Sometimes white starts, sorry. it's black's turn, but sometimes white starts pushing pawns in the center of the board. And for black, I don't like my knight on to D7. I would prefer it's on F6. So at some point I would like to free up some squares for that knight. What did she play? Oh, that's a I, great move. I oh, whoa, the eval why bar the, Why does the eval bar matter? Why is it matter? Why is it matter? Why is it matter? Stockfish <laughs> is like the equivalent of a PhD candidate showing up to a kindergarten class. Shouldn't this couch be the equivalent of that? <laughs> I, we're, we are, listen, Stockfish is, we could live seven lifetimes and combine our chess ability and Stockfish will still be better. The reason why this is a bad move is because you don't want to open up the position for the bishop pair. However... Pawn takes, queen takes would have been a fork on the bishop and a checkmate, uh, but virtual doesn't fall for that, and instead he goes for this. But this is a great move for this level. For Stockfish, who is a scumbag, uh, <laughs> it, it thinks e5 is a big mistake because you don't want to open the position for the bishops. But at this level, e5 is a great move. Agreed. And I think that uh, Wurchill's proving what he said at breakfast. He's like, I've been working on uh, bettering tension in chess. Yep. And there's tension between these two pawns in the center. A lot of beginners... Players in pop camps would have taken quickly on e5, but as Levy was noting, the queen getting to e5 would be very dangerous for white to deal with. And now after c5, this bishop on e4 that was bad, I mentioned how the black pawns were blunting it. Look at that. That pawn's hanging, yep. as is that one with check. So the first move gave an advantage of plus one, but now Cutie opened up everything, and she doesn't have a light squared bishop. Her last two moves were on dark squares. So now the light squared bishop is a killer. That was a bad move. So he missed, and he closes the position again for his bishops, right? So he's messed up as well, which means, you know, he's not a flawless player. He also missed bishop takes pawn check to the right-hand corner. He does have a habit where if he has an opportunity for his pawn to take other pawns, he just goes straight through because a lot of the time that's a, a dope stoic move. <laughs> but yeah. like this, you're saying, is not a dope stoic move. I think he's cautious. I think he's not a reckless player. He's someone who doesn't want to take a big decision without calculating it through. So he's like, let's keep it closed. Can I ask you a question? Can we pull the board for a second? Can I ask you a question? Because you keep talking about how, the, oh, you take over here, mm -hmm. and then it's a, it's a take with check. Why can't you just... Well, that's what she should have done yep, multiple that's times. that's what should have been played. Yeah. So if he does this, why, why... No, excuse me, afterwards, why could she not move her pawn well, down to block it? He, she would be in check. Oh, that's she has a thing. to respond, <laughs> but then Jesus. he then he needs to get out. Yes, then it's he a needs, good threat. You know, he needs to get out, and she's missed it. Losing a pawn like that, guys, like it, it's not the worst thing. You know, it's a pawn, but you could open up that side of the board for a counter attack, right? But she's definitely gonna lose the pawn. Uh, yeah, and he has taken. Oh. <laughs> and uh, by the way, of all the moments to not think this is yeah, she only has one legal move, and now he's got to get out. Because, Ludwig, your point, if black had a free turn, then the pawn push would trap the bishop in here. So for Wartrell, he should bring his bishop back. F5 looks like a great square, pinning and hitting these knight and rook on the diagonal. So a sign of a player with a very, very, very high ceiling would be bishop F5, because he's not just on autopilot returning to the square he came from. Many people would just go, oh, I want a pawn, and I don't want to get trapped, so I'm just going to return where I was. If he adapts and plays here, seeing this pin, uh, yeah, he he will probably be. If he a, does that, I'm setting up the Thug Finals, him versus the winner of Sea Dog versus Frank. Just jump him when he gets out of the room. Like, just... <laughs> <laughs> That's off camera. You know, we're not going to appear there. Uh, we, we said it on broadcast. His mom would know. 
We're mm. not gonna do that. We're not gonna. We're just all. We're not gonna jump your son. Don't I can't worry. let. I can't let that Norwegian oil money hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what he's thinking about. Maybe he's thinking about Bishop F5. I might play Queen F5 as no well. No way. Yeah, it's around the bishop. <laughs> yeah, bishop f5. So you gotta set it up now. We heard you. Oh, thug finals. <laughs> it's it's happening. She's gonna play rook d8, I guess. Oh, Oof. is he gonna go queen e4? Oh and my! How quickly? Just wow. understanding the dynamics. Why is she? Why are we saying wow? Wow. <laughs> well, oh uh, my god, that's a bad move. That's a bad move. He's actually lost all his advantage with bishop takes knight. Mm -hmm. He should have rotated his queen over. A great spot. Okay, that oh, was really nice. Because if she had taken with a bishop, the rook was under attack. Yeah. Mm. And what Levy was pointing out is that the knight was hitting the queen. So actually, I can just back this thing up uh, for a second. Or you can show on this board, the queen should just be over here. Yeah. But with a bishop on e3, the black queen could never block. Now, even if this queen could teleport over here, the black queen can interpose. I know you love that word. Ludwig. I do love saying yeah. interpose. It's a, it's a very sophisticated word. So the queen can block a check on that. And she's kicking the bishop out yes. of uh, Zugzwang. Yes. I wish you would have played that move like seven moves ago, but it's better late than never. You're the coach, buddy. I, I'm not the player, though. <laughs> I am not the player. I am just the coach. Hey, they say don't hate the player, hate the coach. Mm. I, who, who is the coach? Are we, are we the coach? I'm Ludwig? Am I the coach? Ludwig? Uh, Ludwig, uh, you play chess with her every day. I mean, you're sparring partners. We, okay, we do play, not every day. That's we play sometimes. That's serious. She does not like playing chess against me. Because you're a bad loser? Because I win, and then I, I do a Fortnite dance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would also not like to play chess but against but you. But wait, it's shoes. always a different dance, and it's always really well rehearsed. Oh, okay. That, that's that, get extra points you, for rehearsal. You should that's, teach him the Botez oh. brother dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, so I'm not a, one of the brothers. Is there a finite amount of games you can play? Aren't there a finite amount of Fortnite dances? I don't win that much. I see. Do you, do you, you could make variations. We, uh, we actually did play. We played at, like, we went for breakfast. We played, like, two matches or three matches. And mm -hmm. I won two, and she won one. And she won the last one, but she left morose. She was like, oh, I have no chance of beating him. I was what like, you word. You won English one. English major. English major. Yeah, but streamer. I mean, I, I feel like you're the only streamer that knows the Ooh. word morose. He's I'm on his own couch for a reason, guys. Just a really smart uh, guy, with, uh, per person. Great, big great brain. Word. That is a that is a great word. Oh, big brain. Melancholy. <laughs> are we just gonna say words that start with M that are yeah impressive? that are long? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like we we're, we're watching like a uh, World Cup game right now. Yeah, it's a tough game. Queens, rooks, and bishops, opposite color, drawish tendencies. Uh, oh, <laughs> did QD just say she didn't realize something was protected? Or no, I think she says. <laughs> I think she said, I don't know what I'm doing. Wait, I just realized something. Yeah. She needs to win. Yes. A draw is equivalent to a loss. Yes. I know maybe in her mind she just wants to get some points on the board. But in terms of the match, she needs to win this game. Uh, that's a good start. She blundered. She blundered. Yeah, he, he blundered, yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, he, yes, yes. Because the queen trade allows pawn up to f5, hitting the rook that replaces the queen, and that bishop over there. So if she trades oh my queens, God. Yep, which yep. is very tempting, yep. and it pushes the pawn up, there will be a fork at the end of the line. She could win a piece. Oh, my goodness. This is her biggest advantage in three games. Y'all are talking about... That's a really hard move to see, though. It, It's not if you follow the philosophy of finding forcing moves. Checks, captures, attacks. Right now, the... You don't have any checks with black. You take the queen, and then you have f5, and she's going into the position instead, mm -hmm. which is not bad, but she was winning, so right. it is bad. She still has the threat on the position with f5, so you might still miss it. Yeah, yes. like, if he makes some kind of random move, then yeah, f5 is coming, and she is attacking a pawn over here. I think that virtual sees that this pawn might be under attack, but also the d5 pawn, so... Her move is, has a purpose. It's quite reasonable. It's a good move, but she missed a fork that would have won her significant material. I find bee pawns to be like sirens in the old Greek mythology stories. <laughs> we were talking about Greek mythology last night. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep that one rolling. I'm keeping that one rolling, yeah, because they call to you and they sing to you and they're so free and available, and then you do it, and then you just get screwed over most of the time. Like, it's a waste to capture a bee pawn. It's a beautiful metaphor. Thank you, Ludwig. In, in this case, it's actually a... If you get that B pawn, you might get the A pawn and the C pawn. I don't know. Is there a Greek mythology uh, metaphor for that? Uh, 
Robbing a bank. That's what that, <laughs> would be. that would be. Yeah, there's that famous story. That would be looting a Gucci store in California. All right, anyway, uh, current events reference. Uh, Queen to D2 on the board. Yeah, I have to say, I actually kind of like this more for Cutie because by keeping the queens on the board, it's a little bit trickier. We know that virtual strength is the end game. I think as a strong player, he could come back down a piece. But now that there's three threats on the board, it's a little more tricky keeping the queens on. And that's what I thought he was going to do. I'm sure you anticipated the same. Now, does she see queen takes pawn? Yeah, uh, hopefully the right pawn, because queen takes yes, 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 d2 not the side <laughs> would lose pawn. the queen. Right. But queen takes d5, of course, is what Levy was mentioning. That just wins a pawn in the center of the board. Black is not worse here. We see the evaluation bar off to the side, and she's going. Uh, she did not see it. But still a completely still reasonable move. Still has threats yeah. on the board. Yeah. F5 is still there. One thing I like about keeping everything on the board is that she has oh, been right. up on time in almost every game. Yep. yep. But it hasn't mattered because the position was so simplified that virtual can just move very quickly. It's a yeah. little more stressful when everything's moving. His <laughs> strategy is very good to keep his time on the clock. He's just nonstop attacking her. This is the best way to catch up on the clock. And the unfortunate thing here is, look, the reality is that Cutie has... Unless she's just a really, really good actress, like she, I, I think she legitimately has no belief that she can win, and that is absolutely not how you. Like she absolutely has the ability to win, and she was saying it before the match. She's saying it like during. So it's a weird psychological thing where Virtual feels invincible. Like he's just not at any point expecting to be worse. So if she gets that move F5 on the board, it's going to change everything because he's going to get a serious wake up call, and she's going to go, "Oh wait a minute, I could actually beat this guy," and then she might do it and she might pull off the comeback is f5 right now good so f5 would be a queen trade so yeah. after f5 white can take black's queen and then after black takes the queen on e4 white can just grab that pawn and white's a pawn ahead to begin with that's a great move that is yep. the best move yeah and I, what something that i'm i don't know if i'm reading this correctly she almost seems less stressed up now that she's down yep. two games yep. like she's like okay i'm oh move. she has it now f5 oh! she played it! <laughs> let's go Oh, my goodness. Oh, did you see virtual? He did that little head to the side. Oh, I did not see that. Did you hear what she said? What? She said, I've been trying to do that for so long. Mm -hmm. Yep, she's been under. I so like that she didn't tell her opponent what she was thinking she about this time. She's violating the Gosh. rules by speaking to virtual on his turn. Yeah. She's really, she, you know, she's, uh, she's pressing it. She's probably kicking him under the table. He's trying to keep a poker face. He's not happy. He is no. not happy at all. And uh, now a, a major moment here. He's got to avoid a queen trade. He might slide back one square. And then she has to make sure to take the queen before taking the bishop. But he needs to keep the queen on the board. That's his best chance of winning. If he goes to an endgame purely down a bishop, it's probably curtains, but you never know. Yeah, because the white king will also be under attack if you keep the queens on the board. So he's yeah. probably looking at this. I'm going to lose a piece no matter what. I Ooh, think I would. He, yeah, he, he took with bishop. Yeah, he mm -hmm. took with bishop, which is really bad. Now she takes. Look at that eval bar. Take, just with, take with rook, right? Pawn, probably. But rook is probably also fine. Yeah. There's just so many ways to attack once you open that G file. You yeah. have F4 coming. You can bring the rook mm. to the file. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful for Cutie. Yeah. The yeah. king yeah. on G2 just in a Love world this. of hurt. Ooh. The, the problem is she's winning, but her rook on the queen side, standing on C5, and the bishop on D6 are not participating whatsoever. So... Yeah. They she, will be, though, right? Because... Oh, what? That must no, be... No, no. It, 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 oh. Was it a slip? Yeah, it was uh, a slip. Thank God. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. It was the most shocking move that could have been played. I think it will open up, right? After she took, she she takes took the, the bishop. Pawn. We do have a live camera. She did take... Oh, my God. oh there mm -hmm. it is. There it is. She took with Rook. Yeah, yeah. it's updated. It, it's updated, yep. I think she stumbled she, along the way. Yeah, right. So it just got caught on the square. And chess technology has not evolved. So. Yeah. It not, really hasn't. It really hasn't. We'll yeah. get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Levy, I think, to your point, this Rook needs to get on over there, right? This Rook Such needs to be yep. on the F-file helping in the attack. On C5, it's just... Attacking a protected pawn and defending a pawn that's not really meaningful in the position. So I do think Rook sliding back, bring it over, and also freeing up this bishop at some point to join the party yeah. on c5. And she's going to struggle. She's going to try to use what's mobile, whereas yeah. you know, eight, eight, nine times out of ten, going backwards is the wrong answer in chess. But right now, you need to bring that Rook back, rotate it to the f-file so they team up, and then bring in the bishop to where the Rook is currently standing. I'm worried she's going to start moving her a and b pawns. Yeah. And she did make a move, and yeah, yeah, pawn to b5. But for virtual, the issue for him is not only is he down material, he doesn't have a clear plan, because yep. he would like to attack Cutie's 
you know, reasonably exposed king, but the rook on f5, it doesn't just attack, it defends. So anytime you play h5, this rook can also help capture it. Yes, but he is preparing pawn to h5, right? So this is this is the idea. And okay, that's almost that winning for white, because if this, there's this. And if this, you know, you've got to take with the rook, and then you've got to infiltrate. And if he gets the queen to d7, I think he's going to win the game. It, the defense at that point is way too tricky. And she's doing a lot of analysis right now. She's saying something about trading the queens. Yeah. That would be a great move. Fantastic. <laughs> like, that would be an exceptional move because she's up material. And she's, she's looking at that h5 yeah. square. And her whole time advantage has been melted. It is yeah, this currently is, even. This is so tense. Three minutes each. She's up a piece. The self-belief might be going up. Virtual is going, how the hell did I blunder that fork? I think he gains confidence, um, though, with the time advantage. Yeah, see, that's the psychology of chess, right? He, he, he knows he's the favorite, and he knows his opponent thinks he's the favorite. One of my favorite MMA uh, former fighters says, like, eight, nine times out of ten in an MMA fight, both people know who's going to win. Really? Like yeah. Me, Which is like really messed up, me. you know? And this is one of those moments. And she has to totally flip that. She's got to play confidently. This is the most she's thought in the three games. Right? She's spending nearly a minute plus on this move. And Queen H5, a swag move? Yeah. You hear what you said? Yeah. He's being tricky, and I don't know how he's being tricky. She just assumes yeah. that he's doing good things. She stole a pawn the center. Yeah. Yeah. Not a bad move. She did take a pawn, and the evaluation bar approves it. But I think it opens up more of the board. So if... Virtual brings his queen back, for example, then that queen's going to venture into enemy territory, and that could spell problems for her king at some point. Her yeah. king is safe. There are not enough attackers. That's just what I'm concerned about. Yeah, the position is completely lost uh, with best play. So that's the thing in chess. You have this asterisk with best play. It's not going to be best play. It wouldn't even be best play if I was playing or Robert was playing. Like, we're going to make some slight, you know, microscopic inaccuracy here, and the computer's going to find something. But she's got to be super sharp. They Virtual have to start moving faster. Yeah, to, they can't. I mean, those do the math. They just spent 40 seconds, right? They got five five more moves of spending 40 seconds. Andre, can you go in there and yell at them to like <laughs> speed like up? kick the door, yeah. No, I, I mean, Cutie's so focused. I've been waiting for this this entire match. I'd whoa, love to whoa, see whoa. it. Oh, H5 but on the board, yeah. very curious to see how they'll perform under time pressure. Oh. This is but blunder territory. Oh, yeah, there's blunder territory. There's, for example, rook takes, take rook takes, Bam. takes, take check, king up, now. and then like check, hitting the king, and this. He will find that. Clever. He's going to find that if that happens. Uh, she's got to take and then try to take with the queen or the pawn or something. Uh, and then maybe when the queen comes in, there's this. Uh, oh, sorry. There's Is it crazy if you just go queen g5? Oh, what'd she do? She... Yeah. Oh. And now and now he's going to play pawn. He's going to play pawn takes pawn, and, and that's it. And, and I had a really, really bad feeling when he got the attack going on the h file. Well, hey, don't don't sign virtual no, up no. to finding the best move every time because he's he's blundered before. He'll blunder again. He has. Is he? <laughs> yeah, he's been planning this oh, attack for wait. many moves. Oh, did you see that? It went down yeah. to zeros for the most ridiculous yeah. sequence yeah. Yeah. that there is no so, uh, chance that anyone yeah. in Pog Chance will find. Yeah. If they do find it, yeah. we might have a problem. Rook takes oh, F2, so draws oh, so the move. game. <laughs> oh, that was so smart. I don't even under... Because it's at the end, it's oh, deflecting yeah, the king the away from the defensive. Yeah, and this is very tough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, at the end of the day... You deflect the king from the defense yeah, of the rook, so and then you smart. take the rook, but... Uh, I think I'm screwed. If I move here... That's the only winning move. Drawing. Or like drawing move. Only non-losing move, yeah. yes. Regardless, I'm just pinned. Well, if you're always considering your forcing moves, there's a chance she could see. True. Checks, it. It's a check and a capture. Exactly. Yeah. But she has a minute to find if it. If only yeah. her coach, you know, yeah. reinforced <laughs> it before the game. Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, Robert. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm... She just yeah. took with queen. Yeah. She did what she thought she was supposed to do yep. in this case, but I mean, rook f2 is unfindable. E people watching this right now are like, I wouldn't see yeah, that. No, you wouldn't. Yeah. Stop lying to yourself. After you get hit with h takes pawn, you know, you think you're just losing. And oh, check over capture. I guess it doesn't matter either way. Uh, yeah. Oh man, now it's now it's cooked. Yep. Yeah, I wanted to point out earlier in the game, Virtual played rook h1 so early. I bet you he's been prepping this for like the last 10 minutes. Yeah, just trying to get that open and file and go for the king. Yeah, yeah. the fact it was an that impressive the, plan. the queen and the king were on the same file. Yeah, he spotted it immediately. G7 check. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, this game sucks. Did you hear him? He goes, I'm sorry. This is such a good game. Like, seeing Cutie fully focused, this gameplay, like, it was one small inaccuracy again. Yeah, this was a, the best game, for sure. Absolutely, and I think it's because she, she really finally she felt inner element. No pressure. She was much more confident, there. much more trusting of her moves. 
Uh, he could still hang his queen. He could forget the bishop is defended. Mm -hmm. I, I might be grasping at straws, but I okay. There's forks and a lot of different checks and. Oh, see, he didn't play rook takes pawn. Is he, he's going to rook g4, rook g8, mate. Yep. Like, <laughs> that is classy. He's he doesn't gonna, even want the pawn. He realizes that the queen by itself can't deliver checkmate, so he's bringing his rook up to knock it out. But rook d6 is a good defensive try, but, okay, we're being serious. It's an extra queen, for, and he's winning the bishop, too. It's just a yep. matter of technique. Oh. No, no, he, def <laughs> he definitely did not <laughs> play queen c6. <laughs> I forget nice. that they're not playing online, you yeah. know, because when they play online, those mouse slips happen. Yeah. I do love the fake outs. There's a uh, it's curtains. Oh, boy. Uh, you're supposed to. I don't think it matters. Is that illegal? Oh, it is. Uh, oh, they're going <laughs> <laughs> to. Yeah. Oh, oh, cutie resigns. <laughs> there it is. Oh, it sucks. Oh a virtual 3-0 in a down position makes a comeback after blundering the bishop. The Pog Champs 5. Constellation Bracket Champ. He joins the legions of people like Moist Critical and the other ones who I don't remember. That's fine. <laughs> to be fair, I only remember Charlie because he beat me. Mm -hmm. That was a tough one. Yeah. Uh, we have both winners. No, we're not. <laughs> we are. <laughs> and we might have to make it happen. Consolation champion versus uh, the uh, what's the, what's the other one called? Champion. 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 Sea dog <laughs> versus virtual. It could be Frank. Ah, true. Oh, whoa, sorry, whoa, sorry, whoa, sorry, whoa. sorry. Hey, sorry. Andrea. I was not a making. Was this rig? <laughs> I, I Romanian know. mafia got money <laughs> on the budgets. I mean, there's a good amount. If you want to pay me on the side, we can talk about Look, it. I mean, if you want to gamble some money, Gotham, we could put some side bets. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk to uh, the champion and Cootie Cinderella in just a moment. Uh, and then after that, we'll have our Salty Sweet match, E-Rob versus Tyler won the brothers match, the rematch. Yeah, we haven't talked much about that one, but it's happening, Chad. I am very much looking forward to this. I'm hoping E-Rob is finally going to claim what's his. So he won know, the dominance. last one, too. In the Pog Champs, right? He won the uh, the head-to-head. -head. They played like a show oh, match. Oh, he's beat Tyler one before. He's beat Tyler, yeah. So what made you want to plan the rematch? Because Tyler has been grinding nonstop, he playing really like has. 50 games a day. No, it was a shame he wasn't here. Like, I loved actually watching Tyler play and progress, and I could see from his very first games to his last matches versus XQC, he made great improvements. Also, we couldn't get Jake and Logan Paul to play chess. Well, so, working on that one. But first, yes. let's talk to our champion. Let's talk to our Hello. consolation runner-up. Up. Come sit down, you two. Hello, hello. Hello. How y'all doing? First of all, virtual. Oh, wow. I, don't, I don't know about cutie, but I'm doing amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. Crazy, though. Uh, Why did he get white? That makes no sense. Higher accuracy, I believe. Or no, no, no. I think it just goes... Is it higher accuracy? He's a Where's better seed. Danny? Cap really? score? Hello? Seeding? Yeah, I think Guys, seeding. he's so much better than me. Why didn't I get white? Uh, would, you, would, would you... Do you think... I would have had a better no. chance. You want to go replay? We could go replay. <laughs> Why did I not Cutie. get white? That was your best game, and you didn't play the stone wall. It was a win for everybody. Yeah, I mean, think about it, Q. So There's a bright lame. future with all the role points. Uh. I think uh, we should start with you, Virtual. Yeah. How do you feel? You won the consolation bracket. You were supposed to maybe be in championship, but you're still a winner. Yeah, I mean, I, st I think I made the most of it, even though I was very uh, upset after losing groups. And uh, it was really fun to come out here and, and play chess over the board. Really stressful. Mm. I don't know if people realize how quiet, how eerily quiet <laughs> it is in that room. Well, it wasn't that quiet. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> how was that? How was with, dealing with, with Cutie talking at you? Uh, it made me want to win more. Oh. And maybe kick, kicked in the drive a little bit. Like, damn. No, but um, no, it was, it was, it was fun. And, um, you know, I, I, I hope I got to prove what I'm capable of on, on the chess board. You definitely we were talking made about Norway it. proud. Yeah, we think you're the best Norwegian to ever do it, perhaps. Oh, yeah. that's, uh, that's a to high win honor. To win Pog But you're that's the only Norwegian world champion right now. Yeah, you, you oh. are. Yeah. Well, no, Magnus is champion. Consolation oh, yeah. bracket world champion. Yeah, I forget about that. Yeah. Of this year. Still. Number yeah. two, then. Yeah. Uh, and Cutie, you okay. had an amazing game three. You had a huge Thank lead. You. How did it feel being in there? Not good. <laughs> not good, sir. Uh, it was not fun for me, but I did my best. <laughs> uh, I mean, I like virtual, so that made it easier because, you know, I can goof around and it was fine. Um, but that wasn't fun, and I did not like it. Did it make it easier to talk shit to him? Is that what like made it feel more comfortable? <laughs> no, I mean no. I kind of felt bad because <laughs> he wasn't giving anything back, and so I was just like, because oh, he he's too nice. Uh, he obviously deserves the win. He pra he was able to grind way more than me, 
Um, however, if that is dumb that I didn't get white. <laughs> yeah, but you sold out a stadium last night for your stand-up, so, yeah. <laughs> it's, true. It's true. It wasn't even my show. It was <laughs> packed. Uh, I'm mad I didn't get white. That's, yeah, I'm mad. That's well, the only thing I'm mad at. Call it rigged and say you should have won. That's what most yep. people do. That's what I would do. I won't rigged. do that. I feel bad for Levy and Hess who tried their best to teach me things. I am an impossible student. And I, um, you know, Pog Champs 10. Uh, that's my. <laughs> totally going to win so that. So far one. from now. I'm gonna Still playing the stone wall. <laughs> Still playing the stone wall. See you in Pog Champs 10. It was scary, though, huh? It was pretty scary. Yeah. And I mean, on the note of coaches as well, I want to give a shout out to my coach, Anna Kremlin, mm. for an insane effort to get me uh, prepared for this. So many things that we looked at that didn't happen, but, you know, it worked. I would like to take recipe. that shout out back. Anna, you don't get one. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> you, should be for Anna. 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 you should be for the girls, Anna. And True. You, were, you were not a girl's girl. You should have sabotaged him. <laughs> uh, I would have appreciated that. Virtual, any other shout outs? Any other people you want to thank? Your, your mom's watching? My mom and dad are watching. Both of them staying up pretty late uh, Norwegian hours. So. Yeah, you're the second most famous uh, Norwegian chess player of all time now. So mm -hmm. congratulations. Behind John Ludwig Hammer. Yeah. Do you think they're doing a watch party in the good night? The Oslo chess they, pub? They might be, honestly. If so, then I, I hope like they're having fun. It's a great part. But yeah, now I'm uh, just going to sit back and enjoy some other chess games. There's one coming up right after this, right? Can I ask you something? Yeah. Would you be interested in, I don't know, we can make this happen, but a thug finals between you and the winner of the champions bracket? For a million dollars put up by Ludwig himself, I <laughs> don't know about that. I mean, now that you say that, I mean, I think it could be fun, yeah. I mean, right, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what we can make happen. Words, a quick question. What's your middle name? Uh, it is Ludwig. Have you never told me this? I think I have. We ha you haven't. We've hung out so much and talked and chatted. But it's like, uh, it's such a bad joke. Oh, Ludwig's my middle it's name. It's not a joke. It's just your name, bro. <laughs> well, hey, we'll talk about all the other lies you're keeping from me. But thank you both for competing. Uh, you, you each get a cash prize, $7,000 and $5,000. Uh, and you get a nice little title, and you get to join me in the rank of second place in consolation bracket. Again, we're the same. <laughs> I've, Keep I've, losing <laughs> consolation bracket. It's been really good. For I've me. also done this. I like it. Uh, my mom and dad were also watching, so apologize to them, please. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry no, great job dad. to Wirtual. I am a bad loser, but Wirtual is a very great winner. He is, didn't rub it in my face one, only a few times. Well, he's in our region. He'll probably do some pull-ups later. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we'll see that, but that's after the break, and we'll come back with the Salty Sweet match, Tyler 1 versus E-Rob.
All right, we are back at Pog Champs 5 with the conclusion of the Constellation Bracket. Virtual was crowned champion, but we have, before our championship bracket finals, a salty sweet match and also a new commentator with us. Hello, Nemo. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys? I always have my head right there. Doing well. I got a Just head. make a funny face. <laughs> we should uh, do a different face every time. We got Skibbity a toilet face. Uh, you are too... <laughs> I can't believe you even know what Skibbity Toilet is, bro. I, I watched my... I watch, sorry. It, it's Nemo's card. I feel like we're... It's Nemo's card. You know what Skibbity Toilet I, 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 is? Do you know what Skibbity Toilet is? No, what is that? No, you that's good. It's, you should know that. Know. You should know that. We don't even need to. Uh, it's bad. What you should know about is the match is coming up. It's Tyler 1 versus E-Rob. And let me give you guys some context. Tyler 1 and E-Rob are brothers. E-Rob is the younger brother. Wow. E-Rob has often lost to Tyler 1 in video game contests through his life, as younger brothers do. Of course. They recently, like a month ago maybe, had a 1v1 variety show match. Okay. Played through a bunch of different games to find out who the better gamer is between them. Okay. E-Rob wins. Okay. Shocking. Okay. All right? He, he, he's in tears. He's talking about first time he ever beat his brother, yada yada. And uh, one of the games that they played that E-Rob beat Tyler in was chess. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wait, I'm impressed. And this kind of kickstarts uh, Tyler One's chess arc, which he has been on. And and I think of the people in Pog Champs, he might have played the most games, and arguably made the most. Eh, maybe outside of virtual, but second most improvement. He improved a lot, uh, even making it to the championship bracket. And I think he started with like a like a like a 46 rating. It, yeah. His rating was double digits. Uh, yes. Yeah, no chess. Way. Com had it. You can't have double digits on chess.com. He did. Right? He found he, a way. He did. Wait, he did. what? Yeah. He, and and he challenged me to a ten thousand uh, dollar chess match. He he challenged Hikaru and, and Magnus, and he he knew he had to back up the trash talk, and he's gained some hundreds of points. <laughs> yeah. Or do you feel threatened? Mildly, but it's good that we're we're far apart. You know. Yeah. It, it's it's also good. It's chess. Like I I don't fear the muscles in chess unless he picks up a piece that has been captured and throws it at me. <laughs> right. Because that would yeah that would be bad. Uh, but I, I'm pretty confident I could I could make the 10k. I, I would I would do a collab with him where I teach him chess and he you know teaches me to not be so skinny. Well, hey, we can actually ask him right now, Levy, if you want to do that. Let's uh, do it. We have an interview with both of these players, so let's get them on the screen. They're right behind you right now. Uh, Tyler, E. Rob, can you hear us? Hello. Ludwig, you're a loser. Sorry. Yes. Hello. Uh, Tyler, how about a little decorum? How about a hello first? The fuck was that? <laughs> Sorry, I said hello after. I just had to make that clear. What? Audience. What? Okay. Do you want to get out your misgrievances now, or do you want to just move on? You are horrible at everything you do in League of Legends. You blew my reputation. <laughs> it's been all downhill from there. I hope you're happy. Here we go. Your reputation oh, is blown by that. How about your loss to E-Rob? Didn't that hurt the reputation a bit? Let's talk about that. You had a show Destroyed match. Destroyed his reputation. Destroyed. That's a good word, E-Rob. Would you agree with that, Tyler? It's the one thing he's ever beaten me at in his life, literally, since we were kids. It's, he beat that me is one not time. true. That is <laughs> yes, not it is, true. Eric. What <laughs> other thing have you beat me at? Nothing IRL. Nothing sports related. Nothing lifting related. Nothing brain related. What you had that? one good day. But I was dealing with a lot. Congrats. <laughs> I'm about to have another good day today. No, you're not. I've seen your rating. You're like 500. And you only beat okay. me at chess before because I, I had never played in oh 15 years. Oh, my God. Years. I just, it's, I just it's bothered gonna be crazy. You've been it's practicing. You played like 80 games yesterday. It's yeah, crazy. I'm about it. 80 I, games yesterday. And you're, I have played three games today. Actually, you're you still don't have that lose. drive. And you, <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, look. I, I sense a little bit of tension between you. Uh, but, Tyler, E-Rob's right that if he did win today... It would be a stain, arguably a larger stain than if you had played a League of Legends event with another creator who's just trying to have a good time. Like that, you, this would you be worse so than that. You are so terrible, man. I, I'm just it's bringing not, up points sorry, here. There's no again, good times in League of Legends. I'm not worried about it. There Doesn't are. matter. It can't be a fun game sometimes. Doesn't matter. You're not worried about it. That's your quote. Yes. Not worried about it. And then Erub, you're coming into this. You're saying I barely play the game. I don't give a shit. I'm just showing up. Yeah, you look I've lazy here. Chess. I I won your chess tournament, Ludwig. You remember that? Yeah, the the one with the uh, the eval bar, cheat chess. I forget what I called yes. it. Ludwig's, Ludwig's dumb, dumb chess, chess Ludwig's dumb chess tournament. Yeah. I never got paid for that, by the way. <laughs> oh, wow. Eric, oh, Eric, Eric, Eric shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> no, you're good though, right? Smile, put a thumbs up to the camera. Great. Uh, he's good. He'll get paid out. Uh, anyway. <laughs> If you win today... Hey, I never got paid either, by the way. Let, guys, let's focus on today, right? We're having a fun time. If you win today, what does it mean? Does it mean you're better than Tyler? Are the, are the graphs trending upwards? Did you get paid? And I'm a better gamer than Tyler all around. No, you're not, I am, I am. Eric! 
I played late I, for ten years straight, I and you barely tired, beat me. Okay, I'm tired of people sleeping me, sleeping on me on games, and I'm just gonna prove it today. All right. He's a cloud. Period. <laughs> he he has beat me at barely. He won like nine eleven. Every game he plays for hours a day, I haven't touched in years, and it was still competitive. He's a cloud. Well, I've seen the Tyler One Twitter account. You played 174 games yesterday or something, Tyler. Uh, your rating has skyrocketed from, from 100 to 700 last I checked. Impressive yeah. impressive jump. I think the largest jump in terms of rating from any player Ever. in PogChamp's history. Ever. In, in the history of the game. Uh, Is that Got Him? That's got Gotham. <laughs> Did I just hear Got Him? Bro, I watched Got Him's videos for, for help. What's up, Tyler? Short. You watch YouTube? Cody. <laughs> He's that guy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm a freak, you, bro. I can, you, I can be GM. Seriously, I'm just saying. Oh. You oh. went on YouTube and looked up tutorials how to play chess, man. It's called striving to improve, Eric. What is oh about? my God. <laughs> All right, well, hey, let's, 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 let's let the play talk. How about you two duel it out? It's a best of two. If it goes 1-1, one, one, you go to a tiebreaker. And I think we can say whoever wins this match is the better gamer of all time. Yeah. Of all time. Agree. Agree. All right. Well, then let's just put it, up to, put it to the board, gentlemen. We'll talk to you after the game. Go off. Good luck. Godspeed. Warbrook, you're a loser. All Eat right. shit. <laughs> Who is he talking about with that loser talk? That was crazy. Well, when are you paying us, man? Don't worry about the money. It's about the vibes. You know what I mean? It's about the yeah. like the good times and the and the long. How much? How much was it? Like out of curiosity, I can't. Was it like thousands? It was. Yeah, it was like tens of thousands. Tens of thousands I, I, with interest at this point. And interest. Yeah. You've been paid out though. I didn't do it. Okay, great. <laughs> so We're good. Exactly One for two, baby. I, I shouldn't bring this up now, but also the poker game. Oh. Oh. You know what? Everybody, every I, I, I do pay out. I'm good. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm good for my word. I pay out net uh, seven sixty five, standard in the industry. Uh, so I just take a little bit of time. But, but let's focus on the here. Let's focus on the now. This, there's some real tension in this match. And this room. Where's my money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this match, yeah, this yeah. match is gonna. Yeah. There's gonna be moves made and. And it's going to be great. Video comes back. Ludwig is just getting beat up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get, cut the camera from me. Uh, we have Tyler1, uh, again, who did get, I think, the largest rating increase in PogChamp's history, going from deadass 100-something yep. to 700, grinding like 50, 60, 70 games a day, yeah. which is miserable. He learned from Hafu. And yeah. then she quit chess because she just played chess nonstop for entire pop champs. Does she, he rage as much at chess as he does at lead? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, bro. Absolutely. I remember I tuned in one time and he's like, these fucking queen users, they just spam queen moves. So lazy. So brain dead. And, That's uh, a point though. It is lazy. It's brain dead, yeah. but he lost to it. Yeah. It's something you got to learn and adapt to. Uh, but I'm a little nervous for E-Rob. Why? Well, because he created a new narrative when he beat Tyler last month. Mm. It is the first time that he, someone who's been colloquially called L Rob, took a win over Tyler One Alpha Gamer, six right. foot five, yada yada yada. And so if he loses this, that kind of gets wiped out. Is that fair to say? It's fair to say. He's six five. No, <laughs> he's a little bit shorter than you. You're like six seven, right? I am six seven. Yeah. I, I, so we, uh, I'm, I don't have to get into the details of it, but yeah. we were looking at some people for a potential boxing match, uh, and. Uh, and the guy I'm working with, Matt, was like, how about Tyler 1 versus Canute? Uh, and because he thought Tyler 1 was six foot five. Mm. Do you know who Canute is? No. Uh, he's <laughs> he's a six foot six, 270 pound man okay. who looks like the mountain from Game of Thrones. Ah. Uh, and and I just, I, I think it wouldn't work out as a fight. But maybe it would. Because Tyler would win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> David versus Goliath. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're going to jump into this match in just a bit. Let's get predictions on the board right here. Let's go left to right. Nemo, starting with you, who wins and by how much? I think that Tyler win Tyler won is going to win by... It's only a best of two, right? Best of two. So at most, it's a 2-0. -oh. He's going to win 3 -oh. Sorry, I'm, it's not... <laughs> sorry. I, I'm going to guess one and a half to zero and a half. For Tyler. For Tyler. Sorry, a half? Half. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. I heard it, though. No, uh, I like it. A half. One and a half for Tyler. <laughs> what about you? I think he's going to win. I think he's going to win three zip. Tyler wins three, three zip. Zero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but wow. I think, on a serious note, I think I think we'll get a we'll get a tie break. 
I want a little one one. Mm. It's gonna go to three, and then and then you know they're in God's hands. Sure. I don't know what happens in the tiebreak. One one, and it's in God's hands. Yep. Just because Erup seems much calmer and nicer, I'm not as afraid of him if I go against him. So I'm gonna go two nothing Tyler. Okay. <laughs> okay. Two nothing Tyler. I'm gonna say one and a half for, to half for Tyler. Yay, Alex. How does the draw happen? Sorry, one and a half to half. One and a half. <laughs> yes. Okay, there we go. That's correct. How does, the, how does the draw happen, though? Like, what is the half a point? Where's it coming from? Stalemate. 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 Always stalemate. stalemate. Yeah. Oh, he's stalemated many times. Who's stalemate who? The, either one has an, an insane chance of stalemate. I'm going to I'm gonna take the uh, the less favorite option here. I think E-Rob wins this. Okay. Oh. Uh, he won my dumb chess tournament, which did have the eval bar. That's why we called it dumb chess, that the players could see while they were playing, so they would know if they're in a winning position or not. Uh, and, and it wasn't close. Like, he kind of crushed the competition. And the competition, I would call them Tyler-like skilled people. Mm. Uh, Pre-training arc. Yes. The training arc is pretty serious, but, like, chess is not a game you can train for 80 hours in two weeks, and then all of a sudden you are good at the game. Have you met Hafu? She did it for, like, two months, and she played, like, probably 500 hours of chess. Yeah. Okay, maybe yeah. maybe that's fair. Yeah, that's true. But, like, yeah. generally, that's, like, the biggest issue with Pog Champs and chess as a whole. It doesn't have insane improvement very quickly. It is much more gradual. And, like, you can make some, like, level ups in terms of not making mistakes. But, like, to see ideas and get good positions, like, it takes a while. Agreed. And part of the process of getting better is doing puzzles. But when you're playing a game, no one's tapping you on the shoulder. Like, you have a puzzle in this position. Mm -hmm. I think that's really hard for people. Like, I solved that when I'm doing it on my own. Why can't I do that in the game? Mm -hmm. I guess that's what dumb chess was. <laughs> the exactly. eval tapping you, telling you to look. Yeah, it's someone on your shoulder. That That is so tricky for 300s, though, because you're like, it's plus seven. And then you, <laughs> it, it, you don't know why. And then you go for something, and it's now minus seven. You know? It's like yeah. a 14-point swing because you... It was mostly valuable if mate was on the board. Mm -hmm. Right, because they would see the M. Yeah. Yeah, that's... The, the M's good. Well, that's uh, that's really helpful. Yeah. M7 <laughs> is, like, not helpful at all. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, mate in seven? <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I think Tyler even took yesterday off from streaming to grind for this. Wow. 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 Uh, just, Competitive in everything so, he does. So not only did you not pay him, it seems like he <laughs> lost a lot of money. We're, we're worried for this. so much about money and not enough about the good times <laughs> that we spent Jesse together. Jay? You don't, you don't care the price tag? I don't care about the money. Yeah. Money, money. <laughs> I just care about hanging out with you, right? Me hey, and you, Levy. We, we we don't even buy the shoes unless it's it's got a comma on the price tag. But Amen. but then again, who looks at the price tag? Hey, you know? Come on, man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, all right, brotherly match. I think we're ready for it. In just a bit. <laughs> I lied. We're not ready for it. Why didn't you guys put me and Andrea against each other for this, too? It's not close, right? Yeah, she wants the money. Oh, yeah. She just yeah. wants the money. <laughs> um, I don't I, know. Andrea's been grinding a little bit recently. She's been training. Are you insulting me, Nemo? Oh. Well, only because we wow. have a match coming up Sunday, and I'm oh. like, you know. Nemo's upset that I'm higher rated than her in Bullet now. <laughs> I, I never bring it up. You oh. it she's it just real week. upset. So she's higher rated than you are. Yeah. It Doesn't that mean she's bullet. better at the game? Only in Bullet. Yeah. But that's quick thinking, so it's kind of yeah. like. Yeah, that, no, know. that's, I mean, Bullet Chess is like the epitome of, 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 of actual <laughs> chess so skill. I grinded Bullet for uh, about two months. Mm -hmm. I got to like 1300 rated, and it's all gimmicks. <laughs> no, gimmicks, but, 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 yeah? but 1300 Bullet is like 1900 Rapid, because if you true. actually had time to think, you would, you know. Yeah, actually true, although most of my skill was hitting them with checks that were blundering all my pieces. But then they would have to click on their king. They couldn't pre-move. Are you a pre-move king? Yeah. Oh, we're in it. Oh. What oh. the heck? Spoiler oh. alert. Go get it. Let's get it going. What, what is this? Oh, yeah. Ref, let me see the game, please. Oh, the game is really looking good, guys. Uh, there it is. No, but I quit playing, and now every time I play, I get rolled. Are they talking to each other? Yeah. Yeah. Fresh account ELO games. Cringe. Fresh account ELO games. You'll probably put. They're basically playing bullets so far. Yeah, they are playing incredibly quickly. We're uh, quite a few moves through already. What, what do you guys see? Levy, has anyone want to chime in? What's what's going on? I just love in the background, there's just one more game. That's a pretty <laughs> sweet I sign. Yeah. I, I remember uh, seeing this position, I think, in 1982 in, in the Kalmykia. There was a game, uh, Karpov. Oh, last tournament. Oh, oh. oh. yeah, it was this one Karpov yeah, no, played. Yeah, Karpov did not play Wait, that. Wait, huge blunder by Erob. <laughs> yep. yep. Insane. Tyler took advantage of it. He put, brought his bishop back, and now that Tyler took it, he's about to say, you take my bishop, but my I'm knight like, is protecting. I'm, he's I'm, out I'm of peace. I'm going to explain to you my strategy. And the strategy was he just took the bishop. There was... <laughs> it was a good move. I mean, don't get me wrong, but... 
No, it's an insane strategy. You don't understand. Play the best move. Do you think Tyler has had to get new tank tops as his muscles have grown? Well, that's the thing about like the tank tops is they they form around you. It's like mm. leather. Mm. I see. Oh, they're panning his camera because <laughs> <laughs> there he is. He's always locked into the screen. No, but he actually like uh, if if you see what, bro? Oh, no, I'm thinking. No, they're, talking to each other. they're um, if you've ever watched oh, online chess events in the past. In- Forehead cam is a real thing because chess players oh, yeah. don't know how to be on camera because they've never oh. been to meetings. The fuck, so Pete? Pete, you low. He's gonna get 11 rating points if I oh. win. No. Oh. Was that a pre move? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think wow. that was. I think he pre moved. Pre move from Eric, but he's, he's down right now. He's down a full piece. Uh, but Tyler has been in this position before. He's, he's plays very well early mid game uh, and he calculates everything out. One of the biggest issues I've seen with Tyler's gameplay is he thinks every position out. And then he ends up super low on time, and he just cannot clutch an endgame with one or two minutes on the clock. We'll That's see. relatable. He honestly. is ahead of time so far. Um, but that might just be because Irov mm. is trying to come up with some kind of comeback Oops, plan. Look at that. Look at that. I'm looking. Dude, people don't talk in, in a chess tournament. Just saying. <laughs> He's the one talking. <laughs> 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 Can't really talk and play like me. It's fine. You're not multitaskable. I do think it's an advantage for Tyler to be able to talk because oh. they don't talk in Pog Champs matches. Right. Uh, I don't know what to fucking do. Talk. <laughs> oh my god, that's so excited. That's a maniacal cackle. Like that scares me. This is why you have to be rooting for Tyler. Otherwise, he's mad at you like he's at Levy. This is like a big disclaimer for why you should be careful getting into chess, because this is what you descend into. I mean, I feel like League of Legends and chess is a very, is a wild lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, that's like, that is scarier to me than if someone said, yeah, I start with Salvia and then I end the day with, like, you know, cocaine. Yeah. Oh, gosh. L- League of Legends and chess.com. Th- that's a dangerous duo. What's yep. the order, though? League or chess first? Um... Which is worse for you? League of, League League of Legends, where they, they talk. Yeah, because you can. By far. There's too many people on the other team talking to you in all chat. But to be fair, chess is really painful because at least in League, if I lose, I'm blaming everything except myself. I'm mm. blaming my teammates. I'm blaming, blaming RNG. Only yourself to blame in chess? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, in Overwatch, I would just end every round by going, I have four golds, and then, you know, you're trash, and you should have. That healed better. It's always the healer's fault. Wow. Exactly. I feel like I don't want to be teammates with any of you except for Ludwig because we're champions. Hey, hey, babe. Hey, 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 hey. What about Queen G5? What do you think about it? This is my genius move. It's White's move, but for Black, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it. It's not guaranteeing anything, but it's, I mean, a plan is a plan. It's kind of saucy. Hey, maybe Tyler's just not going to see Bishop H3 with the checkmate coming up. He would have to miss Bishop H3 and Queen takes G2. He right. would have to miss. But. Okay. There's an en passant. Is it worth taking? How's Erob's French? J'adoube. I, I, better than yours, I would argue. Uh, excuse you. <laughs> Listen, they speak to me in French at the airport, all right? In, in the French airport. Not, 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 not JFK. <laughs> That's just because they're French people. If they speak I, to me in Japanese at the Japanese airport. I, I don't walk around talking about uh, it. They're not going to speak not, Japanese. <laughs> Stop it. Moment's too big. Uh, what, do you think they take there? I don't. Uh, oh, which is it? I guess my first one doesn't even know what Ampasan is, but yeah, let's. It was one of the two patches to chess. Fine. You, you know how that happened, right? Ampasan. I, I have a theory how it happened. Okay. I think a rich dude was playing at a bar, and some you know some some guy like he had trapped his pawns, and then that guy just you went straight through. through bro. You know, he just like ran the pawns straight through the blockade. Mm-hmm. And this aristocrat was like, "This is my cell phone. You've already fuck no. I, I, this is not allowed." So they just made this rule. Like, for one turn and one turn only, what is the I can take an empty square, and that means that I capture a pawn. It doesn't make any sense. How does it make any sense? Not to sound like a nerd here, but I looked it up on Wikipedia one time, uh-huh. and apparently so it was to counter pawns were arrows. moving too Damn. fast up the board. They don't use so they the came up with a rule to slow so down much. the movement of pawns up the board by allowing en passant. Yeah, it's but a I patch. Think, but I think, I think a rich guy started it, because there's no way, like, uh, if a peasant in society said this is not possible, <laughs> like, you know, that was... Not going to get taken seriously. Marie Levy Lopez was a, a peasant. Really? No, I don't know shit, bro. Oh, okay. I'd just be saying stuff. He That's, was a priest. Listen, you could get a platform doing that nowadays, too. So. <laughs> oh, I like this attempt by Tyler. He's repositioning his knight. 
I think for a lot of newer players, as soon as you get out of the opening, it's very hard to come up with some kind of plan. And sometimes the best one is just putting your pieces on a slightly better square. Yeah, the problem is there are no pawn traits. Oh, Not a single pawn is Yo, casters, commentators, this child playing in the background. I can't focus. <laughs> oh, he's, so he's a better uncle than he is a brother, is what we just got from that. Well, it sounds like he's a worse uncle because he wants the child removed. Yeah. I, I heard that no. noise. I was like, is that Erob? Yeah. And then, I, I mean, I know I know it was the kid, but no, I, I, didn't. I think he's a better uncle no, because that's... he cares. He's like, oh, I'm distracted because I'm... That was me. They're playing peekaboo. That's so cute. Yeah, they're about to play peekaboo with some of these chess pieces. They're about to fall off the board. <laughs> <laughs> but it's seriously, though, the, no pawns have been traded. So I think that's where newer players struggle. Yeah. Right? Because I need to open up the board desperately. And I actually think, oh, in that line of thought, B3 She's makes a lot of sense. Me. Let's open some lines for my pieces because otherwise me. it's yeah, just too cheating. close. You have a cheat code. <laughs> yeah, I always... Uh, I, I always I love comparing chess and and mixed martial arts because there's so many different things you can train. So for example, this would be like a training session in closed positions. Like closed positions are determined by the amount of pawns on the board. They both have eight pawns on the board. They both wow. wow. They both have these fences they've built, and in closed positions you can maneuver your pieces or make pawn breaks. Just so he never gets mad at me, Tyler and I were on the same wavelength there. Yeah, yeah, that was you finish each other's sandwiches. Sandwiches, exactly. Okay, well he he was very indecisive. <laughs> He ordered the first thing on the menu, and then he went for the second thing. Uh, but this is still fine. Uh, he's going to open up this other board. Pusher. He just called his brother ugly? Is that what he said? And he called him pusher. an ugly pawn pusher, yeah. Pawn pusher. What, what if he wasn't pushing his pawns? Is he still ugly? Or? Yeah, you, he's no longer a pawn pusher, though. Okay. The worst of the two insults there. You can get away with such more intense trash talk when it's your sibling. Uh, yeah. I think you would know. Yeah. I think you're reporting <laughs> from a state of authority here. This is a pretty advanced position for black pawns. Did I sound smart saying that? Did you, did you, did, yeah, you did. I felt like a genius saying that sentence. Well, I mean, if, and he does take back, black has this outside pass pawn. So if white starts trading off some of the rooks and the queen, that could be dangerous. But for now, up in a whole night, Tyler is in charge. Yeah. What, what else could black really do, though? Nothing. Is this where you do a rook lift? You could try. I think he's got to build behind the A pawn. Which, uh, you know, is, a, is an op outside pass pawn, and then you hold it there. Or push it <laughs> I'm sorry, you're calling outside pass pawns ops? Yeah, OPP. It's the ops. Yeah, I see, yeah. You gotta, you gotta know the ops. Is this the new terminology and you drop, you're dropping your book? I, I, that is not in the book, but maybe in the reprint. Okay. We'll call it the, the ops. Always push for opposition. We need ops. I love it. Yeah. Oh, I can just hear the baby in the background. He's probably saying B takes C4, stupid. <laughs> 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 I mean, listen, that, eight, that right now there are, there are companies that specialize in teaching kids who are three years old how to play chess. I mean, they might specialize. I don't know how good they are. But the but way they do it is they create like characters who are more yeah. like actors, and they just try to make it fun rather than focus on... Yeah. I, maybe we should do that for pop chess participants. <laughs> yeah. You're talking like a, like a little baby learning tool for the competitors? For the 27-year-old competitors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could work. Wow. Tyler looks really focused right now. He is up a full night, but the rook is staring at his pawn. He should push his pawn here, which cuts off the bishop from the defense of the a4 pawn. Instead, he brings his queen to a passive position. It's not a bad move. You see the eval bar hardly changes, but I think that the momentum is slightly shifting in Erop's favor. So... Well, this is a crazy position because they have four pass pawns. A pass pawn is determined by whether or not an enemy pawn can stop it. So this is a pass pawn, even though technically for now it can't go through. So these are connected pass pawns. They'll go hand in hand. These are separated pass pawns. Very weird position. Get back. Oh, he said get back. I think we might see g3 and queen takes e4 with a queen blunder. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's not that easy to see that the queen protects the pawn here. Oh, man, that's so a good move. That's that a good happen. move. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys agree with you, Rob? Is that a good move? It, it wasn't a bad move, but it's not... Nothing you can't really do. It depends what your criteria for good and bad is. Let's put it this way. So it's a bad move. It's mm. not a bad. It's a, you know, it's a creative move. I actually think in positions like this where you're down a piece, you should just go for crazy plans. Yeah. I want to see Erob go for G5, G4, and start pushing his kingside pawns. Oh, wow. Oh, no. The queen blunder is about to happen. Oh, you're worried no. about taking E4. Queen sees that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Tyler's going to yell. I think he's going to go e3 and attack the bishop. And that also, sadly, blunders the queen. Oh, my water. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm so bad at chess. No, that was a setup. Did anyone else on the couch miss it, perhaps? By show of hands? Oh, all of you missed it. Okay. Kill left my water Everyone raise their hands. 
you're up thinking here, trying to figure out where his queen. His queen just doesn't have many squares. He can go back on the diagonal. He can go to the side or back to f6. So those are the three safe squares here. Queen in line with the bishop, usually not a very good idea. This knight can hop out the way by either taking this pawn or taking this one. But then he would grab the bishop, right? Exactly. So he could grab the bishop on e2, but then he loses his bishop back there on d7. So yeah. white hops oh, around, geez. steals some material. Not the easiest thing to spot. It's a very lucky configuration because it's very mm -hmm. natural for white to play knight takes free pawn and lose the bishop. Mm -hmm. But then the position is so good sometimes that you're, you have a follow-up. Okay, so that happens a lot in chess where the position just like works out and your knights happen to defend the things in the back and I feel like it wasn't really pre-planned. It, yeah. It, well, it depends at what elo, right? At 1,500, if that happens, that's because it was seen. At 800, no, it was a miracle of God. Like, I, mm. you know, and B5 is a great move. Yeah. He's just... Yeah, this is the move you were asking for earlier. Mm -hmm. Just cutting off the circulation of Black's light square bishop on D7 with that pawn. Because the past pawn is dangerous if you get pieces behind it and can push it. Now it's, you push it, you're just going to lose it. So White's rook is in the perfect situation. Can I tell you my godlike move? What's that? Bishop C6. <laughs> You're devious. It's a bait. Alexandra, do you think this can work? Uh, it might be worth trying. I mean, it doesn't do anything, <laughs> but it sets a trap. <laughs> could, well, well, let's not get to jump to conclusions. It, it does a couple things, right? You know, it's, uh, it, he could play it and go, oh, shit. Yeah, if oh, he my acts, God. that would be incredible. Yeah, the whole idea mm. that Ludwig is trying to uncork is, oh, oh no, my bishop, then your queen is lost down the B line. So it's a good attempt, but it would require the foresight that the pawn is pinned. I realize I'm just a lazy, cheesy chess player. But there's not, you can't do much here. So, and that's a great move. move. That's a really, really good move. The knight's under attack. There's two attackers and only one defender on the knight. So the queen and the bishop team up. There are tactical ideas here. We were talking about earlier, you can give up your bishop here. You know, you would like to take this uh, pawn on d4, but the fact that black's bishop is defended is really clutch. So I think that the best idea would be just to bring the queen up to d3. I feel like Robert's predictions have been very on point this entire game. You, you're in Tyler One's mind. Yeah, how do you get in the mind of a terrible player? <laughs> um, first of all, he's not terrible. He's improving. He's a work in progress. <laughs> I do love He always uses the term improving. You're so sweet. Oh, thank you. You're sweet, too. I think it's because you worked with me is the answer. That I'm a... That, that you know how to think like a dog shit player. First of all, you're not a bad chess player. Yeah, because I'm improving, whatever. Well, not right now. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! Hey, you stopped taking lessons. Oh, man. Listen, you're, you're only a bad chess player if you have to wear a helmet when you play the game. Like, all right, let's, let's, you're going to hurt yourself. Um, Whoa! That's a good move. Mm -hmm. Listen, sometimes the king's got to put in the work, you know? That's a really good move. I wouldn't. I mean, it would. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah, I mean, it was fine. What I like H4 here because he can't take with the knight since E2 bishop is hanging, and then he actually gets some kind of attack even if he sacrifices his pawns. I don't think he would see the tactic, but he might have the intuition to keep pushing. Yeah, and the threat is pawn H3 with check kicking the king away from the defense of the knight. So which, H4 would be an excellent try. Which is a, a, a win. Like Black just wins the game. It's going to be checkmate. Well, why, why would pawn not just take? That's fine. Yeah, like that's probably... It's not the best move, but it's totally a response. If queen e6 is a good move. He's setting up uh, the battery. So he's looking with the queen and the bishop. And, uh, yeah, see, that was an accidental brilliance, I think. Because mm -hmm. he was about to get x-rayed. It's still losing because white would end up with a bishop and a, and a knight for a rook. But this is great because now you're safe and the rest of the game is smooth sailing. As long as you don't find a way to lose those pawns, white should win this game without much drama. But you never know. They have quieted down a lot. Yeah. And Tyler thinks he has seen something. You saw his face there. He, I don't know what he's looking at. Maybe the check and the, he's worried about his king. But he's played an excellent game thus far. He stole the piece that was offered to him, and he has not looked back. I mean, there's still plenty of ways to lose. Like, you could get checked, and then that h4 plan, and then you take with a pawn, and then queen check is mate. And uh, obviously it doesn't have to happen, but trying to get into the minds of, uh, of the players, we gotta got to foresee all possibilities like uh, Doctor Strange. <laughs> Europe has been really good at taking his time here, especially when his pieces are under attack. But he is going to be in Come on! pressure. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> 
<laughs> that scared me. Yeah. I literally jumped. Can you imagine, like, candidates' tournaments? I'm thinking, thinking man. For 30 minutes? <laughs> that, that would be awesome. And what's crazy is how long e Rub took. He took his time even to reply. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, Hikaru just, like, walking in the aisle. Just let us go! Holy shit. Hey, three, it's not a bad move, yeah. Pushing it past Pawn. He's got a rook behind it. Uh, he is down a piece, and I think that... Tyler can probably first focus on the passer. It's tempting to push the pawn of your own, especially with his last move. Rook here signals, I want to push the pawn up to c5. But that actually allows the black pawn all the way down to a2 because the queen will join the rook in the defense of that square. So I think that he should corral that pawn with a move like queen to b3. That would be, I think, the safest option. Queen b3 is good. Queen b4 is good. Y'all seen some good. crazy shit. Yeah. I mean, they are they are looking at four million seven hundred thousand possibilities. <laughs> sure, there's more possible chess positions than atoms in the universe. Isn't that crazy? Is that real? Yeah, no. I didn't count. I didn't count. But yeah. You're nodding your head like so confidently. Yeah, it's, it's real. It's, it's really true. Real. We've just all seen the graphic many times pop yeah. up uh, okay. on social. It's like two yeah. to the power of like ninety two. I don't even know. I'm just yeah. making numbers up at this That's point. So much money but... you owe us, by the way. <laughs> 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 I'll get there. I'll get there, guys. All right, subscribe. Now. Some, uh, this donate. matchup is super chats. quieter than I would have expected. Well, that's because you got to think. It, it is hard to think and talk at the same time. Yeah. And the moment you start talking, you are taking energy away from thinking. Oh, yeah. Agreed. I do want E Rob screaming a little bit back at Tyler. Feels think, uneven. <laughs> well, he's coming from a place of not necessarily supposed to win, but like expecting to win. I barely practice for this, I'm just showing up to beat your ass. So if he's also chirping and then loses, that's like the worst case. Ooh, oh, that's a great move. Yup. He hits the queen. Bishops are staring at each other. And he stopped the check all at once because his knight defends that square. So if he wants to get pieces off the board, it's a good try. He is in some danger of getting his knight trapped over here. Uh, that could be a downside of hopping into enemy territory. But I really like the attempt there by Todd. He spent a lot of time on that move as there's, well. There's going to be a moment here if black plays queen here, and then white takes and takes, and the knight gets trapped. The only way to defend the knight at that point is to move a pawn, and then there's en passant, and you've got to come back. And uh, I don't know if any of this is going to happen. Uh, <laughs> no. This is the stuff that we got to calculate. Uh, we might get bishop takes, and then knight takes queen, for all I know. I imagine what would happen in that scenario is queen takes knight, and then the queen would take the, yeah. And then, yeah, that's where you yeah. think you'd end up. And then probably the bishop moves, and we all live. Okay, it's kind of the same thing. You just, yeah. That's, that's hanging right now. In fact, that's an even better attempt, because if the bishops get traded, now black can get that knight on g5 with the move f6 at the yeah. end. So Pawn that was a really good move. Uh, the computer wants you to to come back and say that was my, my fault. That was not my a good fault. My, my fault. Uh, or or here, yeah. And now Ooh. H takes, and you've got to find a way to guard. But he might go here because I that think was, Queen takes is too tempting. It's too tempting. It was also the last move that you just played. So now it's like, do I take the knight? Do I take the bishop? What do I do? But maybe he didn't see it. Maybe he was just trying to move his queen out of threat. How do you open your brain enough to like be ready for that? Mm. Yeah, and he does play. That was the expected move. Because it's so what common. Happened? I thought this might be nothing. What? <laughs> I think that's a b blunder. The one for one, you cloud. <laughs> David would call it a mistake. Not a blunder. Learn your terminology, you fraud. <laughs> He's clearly been analyzing the games afterwards yeah. and looking at the difference in <laughs> yeah. the terms. He's like learning the difference between an accuracy, a mistake, yeah. a blunder. <laughs> uh, he is right, though. It's not a blunder. It's a one for one trade. Take me! He's asking to take me, but it's his turn. Yeah, does, does he know that? Yeah, he does. But is he going to attack the queen and lose the bishop? That would be very bad. Yeah. You're saying if he pushed the pawn to h4, which just leaves the bishop unprotected. No, I, Tyler, th yeah. No, no, no. It, so I think what I'm nervous about here, and I think the way e Rob wins is on time, because Tyler does the entire... Look at checks, captures threats uh, every turn. Yeah. And so, like, he, I think he looked at it that turn. Wow. Ooh, good move. Nice. He's getting some counterattack, finally. Yeah, and if Black Aww, sees, like... his kid supports it. Yeah, I was going to say, if the king plays, like, g7 or something, he can even swing the rook around to h8. 
and uh, maybe set up a mating net. That's like what w- Virtual did against Cutie Cinderella. He got his rook in line with the enemy king, and it caused some problems. So the king on g2, not completely safe. And I have to say, Tyler has been extremely strong in this game. And when he played against XQC, he was in time trouble, and that did him no wow. favors. So he is calculating every turn, which is great for a growing chess player. But now, under the duress of time trouble, it might not be the best situation. Queen b3 is crazy. Yeah, That's the move you guys brought up earlier. Yeah, great play. All but, right, well, here's my here's my idea. Pawn a2. Mm-hmm. If if rook captures, rook captures, oh. and then queen captures rook. That is. That's, like, gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna happen. <laughs> right now, if white takes the pawn exactly where it is, at the end, the queen ends up defending the rook. Right? So, like, at the end of the day, yeah. So, but, like, if rook takes, queen takes, you know, because I'm expecting rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, right? I mean, if right. you see queen takes rook, God bless. But, so the geometry here works out a little bit better. But, yeah, you can't move the rook off the back rank because the queen would take the rook. Uh, we were talking about time, oh though. Time. Nemo! Yeah. Whoa! Uh... That's a big move. It is a big move. Oh, 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 oh. What is he gonna is he gonna snap take the rook or is he gonna Oh, oh. And the and the cause he could have grabbed that pot. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, no. Let's go! Oh, no. When the pressure's on, you crumble! Oh my god. Oh. And he had it. He had it. He yep. saw he, the move. Yeah, he I saw thought, every single move I'm just done. in the incorrect now order. The game's taking over! How oh, we feeling, so Iraq? We're not too happy now. Let me take uh, that pot as well. All a matter of time, bro. He has no idea. Oh, my no. God. And oh. then, uh, let me take the uh, this pot right here real quick uh, with my queen. <laughs> I have a queen. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> not a problem. And it He's was... like a villain who tells his plan to everyone yeah. before he does it. Yeah. He's like Dr. Evil. It's hard to not feel bad for you, Rob, right now. I, he was so close. Wow. Well, I mean, it's a classic dynamic. It's yeah. older brother versus little brother. Older brother looks like the way Tyler 1 does. Mm. Which, is, which is how. <laughs> much like uh, much like one of those monsters in Left 4 Dead that come out. Remember Fantastic Four? Yes. It looks like the golem. The golem <laughs> from Fantastic Four, yeah. It's just brick know. wall. Yeah. I wonder how he feels about that. He, feel, he, he is a, I mean, maybe he looks better than you know. Uh, well, they're still still oh, yeah, you better run that one down. Everyone. He's going for stalemate. With, uh, how many pawns I got? Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. It's, well. it's the stalemate. It's, it's the prophecy. It's stalemate. Oh, oh my God. God. It's close. It's, it's close. really close. Wait, why is it close? Show me, show me, show it's me, show not, me. It's not quite If you close. push the pawn, oh. the king only has one square. So, like, yeah. you have to be very, very careful. Queen's blocking, bud. Oh, yeah, you go right. Uh, no, you can't cross the line, brother. King next, and then hopefully Tyler doesn't just check him. Pawn to F6 is made in one, which is crazy. Queen E6 is made. Oh. Erob is praying here. I assume it is the child. Yeah, but that was... That is Emmy in the background, I believe. You know, he's missing checkmate in one, but yeah. he's doing the right thing. Yeah, because yeah. stalemate happens when you don't give checks. It's so when the king has no moves, but it's not in check. So if he keeps giving checks, it will be checkmate. He has it checkmate in two yeah. moves if he wants it, but just keep giving checks. Every Can't stalemate if you check. check. Every move has to be a check. Please do not. Is he going to try to go for the third queen? Okay. okay. And now it's mate in one. Queen g7. Queen h8. <laughs> Queen e8 does not checkmate. Oh. That is checkmate either. Oh. Man, I'm so nervous right now. I don't know why. No, he's gonna he's gonna find it. Queen g7. Queen f6. Oh my god, he is up 25 oh points god. of material! Oh my god, why is this the only even in the game? Oh, don't fucking shit this game is. How does that make any sense, by the way? How does that make sense? Look how much material you're down! It doesn't matter. It does matter, it's a shitty game! <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Oh my god, I can't my believe that happened. <laughs> and we, we memed about it, but he found perhaps the most unlikely stalemate. So many attacking pieces, and he moves the weakest one of all, the pawn. And it's not a check. Everyone it's not a check. check. He was making so many checks, and then he just didn't. And yeah. Deja vu for you? Uh, well, I pre-moved mine, mm -hmm. which is a little bit cooler, all right? Yeah. If there's, yeah. you, stalemating's lame, but if there's a cool way to do it, it's pre-moving it. Uh, and so that means it's half a point to half a point. So whoever wins the next game wins, unless we somehow end up with another stalemate. Yeah. Which we will see when we come back from this break. See you in a bit. She And we are back. Pog Champs 5, Salty Sweet. Tyler won versus E Rob. The unthinkable happened. Tyler won, beating his brother. It was a story of revenge from his failure last month. And he choked it. <laughs> Just a huge, massive choke. 25 points up. 
and nothing to show for it. Uh, I don't think that stalemate should be taken out of chess, but I do think that we should be able to capture the king in chess. I think if you put your king in danger, chess.com should not be able to stop you. Agreed. I think if you miss a check and then you just don't see it, you, they should be able to capture your king. Yeah. I mean, Nemo, fuck can I ask to you find out. a question here? Yes. What, what is more embarrassing? Being up 25 points in chess and squandering checkmate by moving your weakest piece, the pawn, and, and stalemating, or... You're playing League of Legends. It's a show match, and there's people hiding in a bush, and maybe someone on your team hints that there could be people in a bush, but you don't know. You're bronze, right? And so you want to ward that bush to find out, but you don't realize the range of the people in the bush, so when you go to ward it, they jump out of the bush and they kill you. Which one's worse? Honestly, because I am a chess player and people expect me to be good at chess, uh -huh. for me personally, the stalemate, uh -huh. obviously. It'd be worse, but, a lot worse. But, 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 in, no, in enter, a show enter match, sentence, enter sentence, enter sentence, enter sentence. It's, it's it's worse. The chess is worse, right? Chess. Yeah, chess is worse. Way chess, worse. Chess is worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah chess yeah. is worse. No, Correct. Let's just, yeah, let's just lock it in there. Let's lock yeah. it in there. I've, I've never stalemated somebody. Wait, what? Yeah, ever. I've never. I don't believe. I don't believe I feel that like, I feel like, it's like an online blitz game. Just ever. Like in time what, what, what do you why, mean? What? Why are you stalemate? Just checkmate. What's You're wrong just with you? lying. Yeah. No, not find a stalemate. <laughs> Go find a stalemate right this now. This is crazy. Wait, we de they definitely have that on the insights on chess. They're not yeah, gonna yeah, pull. Yeah. They don't even yeah. know. Just do it, forehead. Just get a checkmate. Yeah, like why are you stalemating? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, you're time trouble. It's an accident. I don't get into time trouble. Oh, I, just, <laughs> I don't I, make oh, okay. accidents. I, yeah, I just... Levy is perfect. Yeah. I, well, I wouldn't go that no, far. I just, never, I just don't stalemate. He's not I'm getting his GM norm. He's... Oh. Whoa. Oh, whoa. whoa. Wow. Oh. We're getting personal on the boat test couch. I, my audio cut out. What'd she say? <laughs> she <laughs> said, uh, your, your hair, hair looks normal. <laughs> oh, no. She definitely didn't say that. That's... Anyway, let's focus on the match here, because we got game two, which... Almost assuredly, we'll crown the winner, right? Yeah, probably. Very surprising if we reach a second stalemate. Uh, who do we have? All right, let's get an updated prediction. Let's go across, starting with you. Who do you think wins this? So my prediction was one and a half to Tyler at the start. So I'm going to stick with my prediction. Mm. Even though after e blundered, I thought he recovered very well until he missed the free rook at the end. Sure. Hess? Going with Tyler. I think that he played a great game at the upper hand, and he didn't deliver the knockout, but I think he has it in him. That said, e -Rob did play great as well in the defense, but I'm still going with Tyler. I think they make another draw. I said it was going to be 1-1, one, one, so... Another draw. Another draw. All right. I'm going to stick with my prediction to one and a half to zero and a half, so... Sorry, half. Half. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I like it. No, I, I, like, I like the player. proper. I like which the proper Which accent English. is that? I, which accent? It's is... just from all the places I've lived it. I don't know at this point. I'm not. I'm not gonna. It's unique. I see. Throw a dart at a map. Yeah, but okay. I mean, hard. one and half, but okay. <laughs> uh, I'm locking in Erob. Erob. Uh, Erob takes us down. He's got a little confidence behind him. He made a really stupid blunder early on. Just miscalculated how many pieces were attacking, uh, and and I don't think he'll make that same mistake again. Uh, so let's check how, how close are we to showtime. I think they might play a little slower in the start too. We were talking about, you know, us playing bullet, but they were playing bullet right off yeah. the very bat. And I think that's what caused him to lose a night right in the opening. And I think, you know, they're gonna learn from that, hopefully. He adjusted very quickly after. He took his right. sweet, sweet time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it's like you play a game at 85% accuracy, but you played the whole game down a piece, so you never had a chance to win. Yeah. So that kind of hurts. Yeah, it feels bad to that's do. It's not easy. You can't start a World Cup match down three goals. <laughs> <laughs> Play really well. You're still going to be down three goals. Does it matter that e Rob's starting with white now? We always talk about white advantage. Does it matter at all? Nah. No. I mean, I, mean, level, I don't think so. Tyler's been grinding some Karo Khan, but I don't know if that means anything. You look at his matches? You keep up? No, he played it in Pog Champs, and then he said... Uh, got Gotham Games. I've been watching your Karo. That's not my <laughs> channel name. Yeah, it's one God, of them. Got Ham Chess. Got Ham. Chess. Got Ham. Got Ham. I uh, I do for sure. And bacon and turkey and chicken breast and yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah he said he's been watching the Karo Khan and you know then they blame me if they lose. So I gotta I gotta be there in the victories and the defeats and the draws and the stalemates. That was my fault. So you're like the god of the Karo Khan now. I think so. Yeah, I'm 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 probably the most notorious Karo Khan player uh, of all time. I'm not saying I'm the best, but the notorious. Yeah, I've played I don't know how many thousands of games with it, and uh, I think it's a good beginner opening. Uh, Cutie played it today, got mm -hmm. a couple of great positions. Why would you bring up someone who lost with it if you because, call yourself the god but, of it? But but you don't lose because of the opening. Like, you know, we just saw sure. a stalemate. You know, he didn't stalemate because of the opening. He stalemated. 
I don't know why he still made it, really. I, I, I don't know what the reason is. But Sometimes you get nervous, okay? And, like, you just want to make a move. I've never still made a person in my life. Okay. Internet never had sex detective. in your life, dude. I, whoa. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I lashed out. That was inappropriate. I lashed out. I lashed out. I shouldn't have done that. Who's married here, all right? How about, how about somebody put a ring on somebody? I owe you money, too. I, I just... I'm good for it. Yeah, so when's Cutie getting the question? I'm just Jesus! <laughs> I mean, you're the closest of anyone here. Oh, my God! <laughs> Let's go back to the GM norm conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. back out of this one. I mean, listen, the GM title nowadays is you go to Europe, you pay an 80-year-old to lose to you, they get a couple hundred euro. That's what Drama. you do. Drama. Is this real? Well, there's this uh, there's this new uh, format that was banned recently. Mm. They what do this format? thing called hybrids. Right. Oh, so yeah. COVID, it was difficult to travel. So they started doing this thing in the chess world called hybrids, where you get a certified setting, and then everybody comes there, and you can get a real rating without mm. actually ever playing a person face-to-face. -face. This was a thing? Yes. Yeah. So a bunch of kids were playing against a bunch of other people across the world at three in the morning and they were getting actual rating by beating up senior citizens. Not physically, <laughs> but in chess. Right. So that was what hybrids were. It's not allowed anymore, but I could have done that. I could have farmed hybrids to 2,700. Why would've, didn't you? I, they banned them before. I, <laughs> it it would have been great content, though. Yeah, it would have. That would have uh, been so cool just to make the candidates off the well, hybrids. Then they, that's exactly when they would have been. Like, let's say Fabiano was like, I don't want to take over Magnus's rating and just starts playing matches against you know, GMs from across the the world. If someone big enough does it, they find out quicker. Yeah, yeah. but I think, you know, just one of those things that just was not dealt with. And I think, I think hybrids, like, by themselves are a great idea. Like, that way you can yeah. have the World Cup, FIFA, and then have, like, chess players from different countries play each other. That's awesome. Right. But I think without oversight, it just was a horrible system that was abused. Maybe they have to do it in the same time zone, so at least it evens things out a bit. Could be. Yeah, uh, they definitely were not no, doing No, they it. were not doing that. <laughs> I, I, I heard a story of a guy going to the hospital at like 2 in the morning over there. And then he came back and he like finished the game. <laughs> That's <laughs> dedication, honestly. Uh, honestly, yeah. But no, right. they can't do that. We are in it. First move played E4 from E Rob. Let's switch over to the board. E4 and take a Rob? Look. E4 Rob. Mm. I love an E4. Let's see if uh, Tyler still plays the Carl Do you guys think Carl Tyler is tilted at all from the draw? 100%. He, look, he looks like he's on drugs right now. <laughs> He looks so panicked. I think he just realized the match is starting and he's closing out of his chat and he's closing out of the stream. He's losing v valuable time. I Did guess they're going to reset this. Yeah. Are you playing, Tyler? Yeah, I'm playing. I had to get it ready for stream. There we go. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Oh, French, let's go. I, this yeah. is not what you expected. Well, what? That is also not what I, I mean. An advanced French. So it's like that if black plays D5, but the problem with pushing your pawn so... Uh, far in advance is that they get stranded so like even a simple developing move could put pressure on this pawn and he just goes for the pawn right away and it allows him to develop his pieces more quickly it's a, it's a great move by tyler trying to trade and now he could take take and trade the queens and white loses oh but now it looks like the french again <laughs> it's a french but Wait, white goes again <laughs> yeah i don't know what he's doing He's distracted, but he I don't is. know by what. I do love this position where the knight gets the two little pawns and it looks like a heart. You see what I'm saying? Like what? the knight defends both pawns in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh. I like I like that too. You need to complete the heart though. That's like a, you can draw it for mm. us. That's Robert. like a lonely heart. Can you draw the heart for me? You want to draw a heart from where to where? I, the, the knight. I don't think that's like the, the, I don't like think they won't. The, they won't look like a heart though. No, nah, well, 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 kind of. You can connect it on e4. Whoa, C4. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Ooh, aggressive. Whoa. Ewok Ewok loves to... pushing pawns. What, what, what is this called? That? The cow? I feel like that's what I kept hearing while yes. watching Pog Jim. This oh is the gosh. cow from the The cow side. doesn't what do you really mean? go Who past the fourth like rank, this? though. I think, yeah. I think that was a little over. I feel like pushing my pawns, the man. cow is not. Yeah, but nobody, nobody oh. does that. <laughs> They're not smart. <laughs> is he right? Is it? Are, do people refuse to push pawns because they're not smart? Listen, I don't mean any disrespect whatsoever. He was down twenty five points of material. No. Like I feel no. like no. I, I feel like we no, we don't know what anybody does ever at the at this level. You know, it's very unpredictable. So <laughs> Tyler accidentally pre moved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he doesn't know how to uh, he doesn't know how to un pre move. You oh, just no. click. You just is he playing on his phone? What is going on? I have I, no idea. It looks like with the way he's looking at the board, but... Yeah. I saw this happen to Fusli where she accidentally put in, like, six pre-moves and was panicking. Uh, but then it seemed like it was on purpose. She just Who? didn't stop no. doing it, okay. so... Uh, I, I, I don't know if my phone crashed. Uh-oh. He is playing on his phone. Yeah, it, it, that ass looks like he's ordering off DoorDash right now. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Levy, don't you play on your phone, too? I like, exclusively play on my phone. Oh, he can't hear you. You do? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wait, why? I moved now. It's just because I'm usually playing like 
I'm just kind of oh. in a bad mood. So I'm just play a lot of chess on my phone at night. <laughs> I have to pee but so bad. Actually, some top players, they like to play on their phone or on a tablet because it's smaller so they can make moves more quickly. They don't have to drag the mouse as far. Yeah, but, like, it's more accurate. What's more accurate? Mouse versus giant oh, thumb going, on a touch what screen. What is this? What yeah. are you doing? But Who if plays you, this? <laughs> If you're good enough, you can just use the. I'm just playing the game, man. All right. I once played a bullet match against Carissa Ip, who is like a really strong American female player. Uh huh. And she was playing bullet on her tablet. Yeah. Yeah, bullet like that was tablet. her thing. That's insane. Uh, so, is this a real opening? Has this been played? Is Absolutely there a, not. Okay. <laughs> We've already left theory. Yeah, this is not theoretical. Although Tyler said, you know, this is not what people do. So he knew. That they exited his version of theory, mm -hmm. and now they're here. But the moves haven't been bad. There have been no blunders. And in this position, why is all this space? Look at these pawns just taking control of important squares in the position. They're very advanced. That could be bad if you can chisel at them. But for now, they're just clamps there restricting Black's pieces. And if... Yeah, that's... See, that... Such a loser. That, <laughs> did you say he is? Or yeah, he is. How yeah. people play like queens? He's talking about how he hates queens. All you do is push pawns. You're a pawn pushing pussy. <laughs> it's not yep. PPP. That's what I'm talking about. Triple P. I love that Irov <laughs> is so used to that he doesn't even flinch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you can't get out of this position unless you make okay, a pawn break at some point. And uh, it's actually a close position, just like last game. But in the last game, like we were saying, Irov was down a piece. So he was struggling a lot. This game, he's not down a piece, and if Tyler doesn't make a pawn break at some point, things are going to get really bad for him. He's just going to run out of oxygen. And Erop should go full alpha zero. That's, you know, for our chess fans out there. Pushing the H-pawn is a good decision, because black has not developed. You can actually continue advancing, and you'd like to push that pawn one square further and kick this knight out of uh, its place. Because if let's go back here, there's zero development from black. You're just super cramped. So move the H4, I don't think it will be played, at least not intentionally like that. But that would be a good idea to just pounce on your opponent. Ludwig, have you ever heard of the saying that pawns are the souls of chess? That's fire. No, but I do believe that they are the most valuable piece. I believe you're the soul of the creator economy. Really? Yeah. Have you heard of Mr. Beast? He, you're, you know, you're, yeah, he is the white a hot sun. You're soul. <laughs> I'm, he's I, the sun. You're the soul. I am you know, one of the... Pluto's moons. Listen, they, Pluto doesn't even exist anymore according to, as a Come planet. Come on, like, bro. We, that's, you're talking I about me. No! I missed it! Did he miss? Wait, can we back up? Wait. Can we back up? <laughs> no, he here? said now he's like pre-moving by accident. That move was intentional. He's Stop, how do you want to do? I, I don't know if I can talk or I'll just yell. But um Bro, well, my whole screen's pre-moved. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to not move yet? No, you might just do it. Just it is what it is. Just go. Let's see what happens. Are you sure? <laughs> and, and I don't know how to fix it. Not doing it. So. Close the app and open it back up. Well, no, because I had a join. But why are you playing on your freaking <laughs> boat, man? Yeah. He's playing on I Safari? Oh, my God. He's playing on Safari on his phone. Oh. That's why. It's, it's not. Oh, my God. It's not. What? what? Wait, these are yeah. pre-move yeah. mistakes, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, he, he, what is he so, doing? So on your phone, you can only make okay, one on the app, one pre-move at a time. Yes. But on the computer or on right, the back, back. mobile browser, you can make multiple pre-moves. So he accidentally pre-moved this bishop back here after he put his pawn to take this knight. Turn number. And on the desktop, you could just click the board uh, once, mm -hmm. yeah. and that undoes and your pre move. I don't think the mobile browser has that functionality. He doesn't even know. Like, if I he moved just my moved. pawn up one to take your knight. Okay, it's I'm fine then. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, we're good. Oh no! Where did I move my? <laughs> he oh moved my your gosh. bishop back. Three. <laughs> what is he do? Why is he on the phone? I don't know, but e -Rob's also confused, and that was a very you know, sportsmanlike thing to He's do. He's offered so many concessions. Yeah. He said, I, I, I'll, I'll make my move. I'm telling you what I'm doing. So what just happened was he website. accidentally pre-moved his bishop back, <laughs> and then... What a fucking terrible website. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not nice. Uh, who cares? Chess.com doesn't work. Is that my fault? Yeah, there's an app. Yeah. Why are you on Safari? <laughs> <laughs> or on your phone. Yeah, I, what about the computer? <laughs> Which he was using game one. Yeah. Plus what? 25 points of material. Is then. it 2010, bro? <laughs> did, he, did he switch to his phone because he stalemated on the computer? Uh, you know what this is? And I'm going to call like I fucking see it here because I've done this plenty of times. This is a classic John. All right, so we call it. This is an excuse in the making. He realized that E-Rob was too much to handle. He needed an out. So he goes to this mobile site rather than using the app, rather than Talking using the about. computer that his camera's clearly showing. 
He's trying to have a pre-built excuse for this loss to Erob, which is almost assured at this point. I don't know. I feel like Erob's king's a little bit exposed. That could well, hurt him. The game. The, oh, I was good gonna, move. Yeah, that's not a bad move. I was going to say you oh, could. Pre-move. Oh my god, I have to. <laughs> accidentally lose like that, but now did he pre-move again? I, he said he did. No, no, did he? No, wait, he might have. What a okay, that's a good move. Okay. And he his victories uh, throughout polygons have been down the G file, like that has yeah. been his success. So yeah. yes, if White were to take Ow. this pawn on F six and he takes back, that's what would have happened. Then this file opens up and the White King is already there. So White is up a full piece, right? He took a knight on H four for free, but his King is a little bit exposed, and White being E Rob is down on the clock by a minute. Yeah, he does like making batteries with the queen and the rook, and that's how he ended up beating Squeaks in, like, terrible positions. Yeah. Squeaks lost two games against Tyler the exact same way that Robert described down the G-file. He's a one-trick, and he's bad yep. at video games. <laughs> oh. And he's going for it. He's trying to open up the wow. G-file. Love it. I love that move wow. because what he's trying to do is, as Alexander said, break everything open and go for the white king. And I think that players... In Pog Champs, they get scared. Like, as soon as their king is a bit open, they feel like they're going to get checkmated. And Erob looked completely unfazed by capturing there. But now's the time for Tyler to take, and then you're going to try to push this pawn. But unfortunately, with your king here, as soon as you push that pawn up the board, this queen can infiltrate and cause problems to the black king. What I'm concerned about is how do you get the queen over? His queen, his white bishop, they're trapped by his own pieces. He can't even move his own knight unless he moves it back to the starting square. I guess he could move it to the right, maybe, but he seems like he's in a... I you in five, by the way, on PC, <laughs> just like... Did he say I'd mate you from on PC? He'd mate him in five on PC. Okay, so you're right. The excuses are coming so out. Why, I'm telling you. Why is he not on PC? These are questions that I wish I could answer, but I don't know how. He said something about for the stream, but I don't know what that really means in this context. Also, E-Rob is fully focused, played a good first game of defense after blundering a piece. So could this be a role reversal from game one, right? In game one, Tyler won a full minor piece early on. And here, E-Rob has done that the same. And now he's going to have to deliver a checkmate at some point. Yeah. The only fair result is another stalemate. Yeah, we want to go to tiebreak. We got, we got Frank and C-Dog sitting in the other room starving because they haven't delivered lunch. And... <laughs> They've just been here for hours, staring at each other, making small talk. Man, you know, in chess tournaments, uh, players show up, they, like, barely talk to each other because it's a very competitive, very cerebral game, got to sit silently. We got Frank and Sea Dog just chatting in the other room about our <laughs> United Kingdom. Like, I don't know what they talk about. They talk about Brexit or tea or, <laughs> yeah. or the, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they've, been, they've been there for hours, probably tired. Are you a Fortnum Masons guy? You know, you got to go through your brands. I, uh, oh, uh, twi Twinnings? Uh, Twinnings is a classic. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. affordable. In the <laughs> worst. What is affordable? Are you calling me poor? Is that no, 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 no. Oh. He didn't pay you, so he knows you're <laughs> getting money. <laughs> that, is, that is accurate. That I is start giving you bills, you're getting Fortnum Masons. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's like all these stores that open up now that just do tea, like David's Tea. That's not sponsored, by the way, but you can sponsor this broadcast. <laughs> Hit up. Uh, you certainly can. It ends in like two hours. Not already. this. I, <laughs> you're right. I meant the, sh you know, you. Hit up off brand or what's your thing called? Uh, what I think. It's not working. <laughs> they're not listening. You know, how do you know they're not listening? Yeah, you know, they have much though. Yeah, if you make tea, DM me. <laughs> there you go. Get a boba sponsorship. That'd be cool. Oh. Now I want boba. What are you doing over here? Are you guys delivering boba? Yeah, now I'm hungry, too. Oh, I, I, oh wow. He's going yeah. for the attack. He's going for the attack. Uh, disregard the gigantic ugly question mark because yeah. Stockfish is a scumbag. And this this is a question mark like you mentioned because the queen can now go to the back rank, cause a little chaos, maybe get that rook. This king might get checkmate in a few moves. That's the problem. It's like the king will only have one square. So, like, if you just get another check on top of that, the king will be in the mating net. And Black's pieces are just so cramped. It's very difficult Raise to get them over to help. Games are. Oh, Ooh, my God. Wow. 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 Great find. Great move on the board. Exclamation point in yeah. chat. Yeah. There's only one legal move now. And then... So the faster way that White will win after King F8 is actually probably taking with the bishop, in my opinion. Because then you'll get the knight in. And the knight threatens a queen mate. It threatens this. 
I guess we're doing a little early clap there. I don't know what Tyler's thinking about. This is the only legal move. There is absolutely nothing to think about here because whether you like it or not, you have to go there. But on PC, he would have played this faster. <laughs> um, I could see a queen blunder, though. Like I could see after a capture on G5, yeah. white taking with the queen and yeah. then blundering a What you going to do, little man? I'm still a little worried about what <laughs> I have no idea, actually. I don't. But what do you mean? There's there's one move. There is one move. There's, I don't know why he's confused. nothing to think about I know about why, here. because on PC, it shows you your king is in check, and then uh, you, know, you uh, just drag it. Y yes, it's checkmate. No. That's why the game is... <laughs> so oh! oh there we Dude, go. it's his app! <laughs> he's not oh even on God. the app. He is on the mobile browser. He's not even on the app, and he's blaming he's it. He's on just about the worst playing experience. You could, like, you are not supposed to use... Shells.com's website on the phone. You're supposed to use the app. That's why it, it's the equivalent of playing League of Legends on a VPN on Chinese servers and then being like, why is it so bad? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. And let's not forget, uh, th there there are ways to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And now you got to go here because if he goes here, it's mate in one, three different ways, actually. One, two, and three. If Rook G is oh, mate with knight would be so sick. He has to take. It's the only move. Yeah, and then white has to take with the bishop and not the queen because if you take with the queen on that line, the rook slides over with the pin, and then the game turns around. Big moment. Did any of us predict E Rob would win? It was Ludwig, right? Ludwig. Yes. Yeah. I've been saying it since day dot. E Rob's a good player, and I think Tyler, although improved a lot. He just doesn't come up big in those moments. Actually, if I could just defend my... I said it was going to be 1-1, one, one, and then it was going to be a tiebreak, so, you know... Which is I, also wrong. I, well, I, like, you don't know. Queen G5. True. Five. Oh. True. Just, you Queen have G to five. take with the bishop. Uh -oh. You have to take with the bishop. Queen takes G5. He does wow. it. That great play by... You're talking about because then the, the rook would see the queen. The queen is pinned to the king. Yeah, and you'd have to trade out a queen for a rook. That's right. Rook G8 is still a completely fine move because white would need to do what's called a desperado. Because you're going to lose your queen if you take that queen. So you might as well lose your queen for something and then take this for free. Uh, I don't know if he's going to find that. He might play queen h6 check. Or he might play queen e6 and hang queen g5 and queen g2. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That's a great move. And uh, this is very likely now because you look around with the queen and you go here, here. You go, I can't do anything. Whereas you should be thinking of this move. That's really the move you should be thinking of because you have to look for checks. Uh, and a big moment. If he takes, it's, uh, it's game on again. Uh, if he goes here, it's game over. <laughs> that would be that would be really bad. And right. I think I think players don't like to trade queens like in Pog Champs. They want to go for checkmate. Yeah. So it is likely he tries to find a way to keep the queens on the board. I'm not sure if he's thinking, oh, I'm up a whole bishop in this position. I mean, trade because I'm taught to uh, go down into the end game. But if he tries to keep the queen on the board, that's how you kind of lose this position. Your king is open for white. But bishop h6 is really interesting because if. Um, Tyler plays king to e7, then there is queen to g5 with that check, and then if the king goes back to f7, it's checkmate on g7. Oh, wow. yeah. You saw it. Okay. You Love saw it. the future here. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he, because the king is going to go for a run, because you, you're not going to do this, because it's bad. Right. So you, you just, just you think you're going to run. Now, this move is very natural, but then the king runs there, mm -hmm. and then black might win, because black mm -hmm. might win on the g file. So you have to do what I like to call a boomerang technique, where you, you check the king, force him back, and then you go to the square that you want to go to, uh, which is like... That's hard to see. It's very hard. It, it's very natural to go forward. Or make a draw, which... That would be wild. If they made a three-move repetition, that would be unbelievable. I don't think we've ever seen one in PogChamps history so far. Yeah, unless it's an accident, right? Like, it would have to be an accident, because yeah. nobody would intentionally... It'd be bad for Erob here, clearly, but... Nobody's intentionally gone for, like, a draw to win. Uh, queen g5, queen g7, forcing the king back from escaping is like a... Fi like, to, to see that in a puzzle, you would need to be around 1,500. Uh, or you could sit there for an hour. But, I mean, in, to see it in a couple of minutes, to see going back first is very challenging. On 1,300? Like, yeah. I don't see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean... <laughs> oh, wait, he just... He, sa a... he sacrifices, but... This makes the game a lot easier for Erov, for sure. I mean, he might not have checkmating threats, but at least he's up a full rook. And there's nothing on the G-file that can come down for a checkmate, so... Yeah, and the king should run for cover, because actually, if the king goes here, the most gangster winning move of all time would be king to h1. Hey, Tyler, it's over, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then this. That would be the quiet move to the corner. King is trying to glitch off the map. Is his daughter doing, like, cartwheels on the couch back there? Yeah. Yeah, she's going crazy. That's cool. She's an athlete. 
Oh, he's oh. he's he's gone running. We'll see he's if Erod sees Queen G5 check to just bring him back. He doesn't. Good uh, move. That's still a good move. Yep. It's plus thir 14 and a half. <laughs> Nobody actually really knows what that means. Like, basically, the computer's saying if black got 14 points of material somewhere, it would be equal. Or just uh, take. Actually, now, again, like, if you look for this check, the king is completely crisscrossed. Like, you can't do anything. Queen g5 ends the game because knight f6, and you simplify everything, and you, you're up a... But knight. again, the game is never really over here, if we remember the last... Right. Still <laughs> There's too yeah. many pawns, though, right? Too many yeah. knights. Because, yeah. like, E-Rob had a clear plan. After he lost, he just pushed all his pieces, and, and Tyler gladly took them. I don't think it's possible to do the same. And they're both getting low on time. Uh, we have Tyler with two minutes, E-Rob with three. Anything could happen. I will say advantage to the person who's using oh. a computer, disadvantage to the person using the very <laughs> underused mobile oh. Safari oh. browser. Oh, that was very my sweet. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was a slick transition there. That was, I thought it was going to be a... We're looking at a great father and a great champion. Yep. Is he... He's, he yeah, okay. I, I still could see this going wrong for him. I mean, oh, Eero's totally. doing everything right, but his Come king on. is still open. Well, he's not doing yeah, everything right. Because he could have... Right. Yeah, 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 but like... What? His uh, ideas are good, even if he hasn't... Why uh, do you have makeup all over your... <laughs> I'm using your daughter for sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> there, I said it. Somebody had to. Well, now his daughter is distracting him rather than Tyler. I also think Tyler's the one who needs sympathy here. He's the one losing. He's losing. He's down 40 seconds on the clock. He's playing on a mobile browser. I do think Erob's finding it difficult to... Play the game though with his child. Oh, I don't right know there. where to go. Okay, reasonable. Just yeah, developing his pieces. And how is Tyler going to handle time trouble on the phone? And how is he going to handle developing his pieces wait, wait, when up, his everybody. bishop's on c8? He knows how to pre-move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. Time troubles will not hurt him. If there is one thing he knows how to do on that phone, it's make a lot of pre-moves. And he's down under a minute and 30 seconds, so he's going to have to start pre-moving. He needs to get his pieces developed. This bishop here blocked him from the knight. Wow, he no. did the reverse of that. Yeah, he, oh. he, I, he wants to get his bishop out, I guess. Oh. But yeah. why, why, why are we all freaking out? Because <laughs> no, he, he's put his last piece on the back rank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's going to work out for him because he can bring his knight out and his king out, and then finally his rook can try to join the party. But I like what e -Rob's doing. He's throwing yeah. all his pieces forward. He's... Oh, now the knight's just trapped back there, so that rook's yeah. not getting out. This is so difficult. I mean, this he, he like, oh, I don't like that though. I wouldn't no. have locked it down, but it's still very difficult for Black. But this is like uh, the little brother, big brothering, uh, the big brother. This is he can't do. He, oh, there are there is a, on the, oh, a song. The double on oh. pass no. home. But yeah, now rook a seven, yeah. and then move the bishop out the way and hope that oh god, Erod doesn't see the queen's under attack. Oh god, that's cheese. I, I like really it. love some cheese. That's a great idea. Uh. <laughs> you can take and then play queen b7 and black's position is so bad you can't even do anything about it. Ugh. He has not taken any trades. Oh, oh, bishop takes bishop, 96 and queen c7 is mate. Wait, yep. this is a really good move. Excellent stuff. This yeah. might end the game. B b uh, wait, hold up. I'm slow. Bishop takes the bishop. I got it, I got it. Then the knight goes to c7. No, knight, knight here. And okay. then you could B6. take the queen, but queen c7 is just mate in one. Ah. Uh, the knight and the queen. I think there. he would take the queen. <laughs> yeah. That's I fine. Would, which is more than good enough. As long queen. as there's no stalemates accidentally, Erop's got this. Actually, we're very close. Uh, and there it is. Knight takes pawn. Oh, wow. my goodness. Wow. Does he see it? Do you think he sees the mate? <laughs> oh, I. Oh, be, if I be, call people like you. <laughs> better than you? Uh, oh, pre-moved it. He better than pre-moved. And Which that was the same game? square that Tyler pre-moved on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, guys, a stalemate, stalemate could happen. Black has no pawn moves. Yeah. But the knight, he'd have to get rid of the knight but and he, the rook. Yes, yes. And the rook. Yes. And he might be doing it. He uh, might. This, well, he, would, this would be insane. He can't checkmate with just a queen. Yeah, not here. He might push the pawn. It's a good move. Once again, Levy's king h1 would be really good here just to bring that rook into the game. But <sighs> yeah. Oh, this Hard is scary. Idea. Yeah, and then here you also have your position is good enough. You have this rook lift, but I feel like he might just run his pawns. Okay. Ooh, more that. How do you get stalemated here? I, he's going to take the rook, I think. Uh, yeah. You know, rook here. Then e6 is just killer. Wow, this is crazy. We're seeing the, uh, the younger brother storyline here. Absolute demolition. I mean, aided by the fact that 
how he did pre move his bishop backwards <laughs> when his knight was under attack. But as you said, Lovick, it's just the creating the narrative in advance in, in the event that he loses. I, I don't like how Tyler is not setting himself up for a stalemate. Huh? <laughs> he, he might accidentally. He's got 30 seconds, by the way. He does have to move. It would be sad to, to win on time. Time wins are always yeah. the lamest. So he would have multiple excuses. At that yeah, point. it would be smart for him to let his time sure. collapse. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, lost on time. It's not even real. <laughs> it's not using this dog shit thing that isn't supposed to be used. Just don't go here. Oh my, that oh, is an wow. excellent move. Rook c seven now. Only move. How do you how do you get stalemated here? I'm trying. To play another pawn. Uh, oh my god! And then there's gonna be like some. Oh, you got to Wow. We don't have stalemate yet, but it it feels like we're getting closer. Definitely closer. Where do we go? 50-50. 20 seconds on the clock. Mm -hmm. okay. Takes Rook. Yeah. Oh. Pff. Oh, uh, my God. Oh, he's that's... missing it. He's missing it, but... I mean, the fact that he's not taking it also avoids stalemate. Yep. Black still has legal moves with every piece, which is important. The pawns don't count. Uh, they haven't been able to move for a while. 10 seconds, man. Yeah, 10, 10 oh, seconds. He's e giving him a it warning. Out. He's giving him a warning. e -Rob has been a consummate professional oh. throughout this game. Takes. Does he... See? Yep. Oh. oh, and uh -oh. now just uh -oh. pre move and pray. Uh oh, now I'm scared that he's going to take the knight. He's yeah, take, he's okay. taking all the pawns. Uh oh. Oh my gosh. He, he has to get the rooks into the play here. Wow. Finally. Wow. Yeah. And now the only way to stalemate is somehow getting pinned. There's so many ways to like hang your queen. Like, queen oh, oh, and this is like yeah. getting kind of close. Yeah. You know? oh, if the knight moves away, yep. you take queen the pawn. Queen d5 is still made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he has to move his knight. The king has no legal moves anymore, so he's going to try to move the king. Oh, he's going to move the knight. Is he going to even find it in 12 seconds? He does. Okay. Queen d5. Queen e8 is made. Rookie 8 is made in one. He's going to find this. Does he might he also play queen d5. Knight goes back. And oh, oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh god. Any pawn pushes a draw. I can't. Any pawn pushes a draw now. Oh my no goodness. Way. Oh my god. Come any on. any root Come forward move is a draw. Come on, Erob. Don't do this. Or this queen is a draw. <laughs> this is a draw. Erob. Oh god. Oh, oh, it's forced mate. It's forced mate. He has to go here, and now queen takes. But after King D7, he doesn't give a check. Yeah, it's still me. Oh my god, he has to give a check. Don't, don't move a pawn. He has Come to give on, a check. Rob. Come on. Any he oh, oh, I got it. Oh. It sucks. This game sucks ass. <laughs> this game's so bad. These Let's dog go. shit chess.com website. <laughs> dog shit chess. This game is Woo! so bad. All this that game is so too. bad. Aww. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this horrible website chess.com is. You can't even play it on mobile? <laughs> You can't even play it on mobile? Yes, you can. Just download it. Yeah, there's an app. Yeah, there's, there, there they is created, an app. It's 2023, and we're still using Safari browser. <laughs> I, he's Yeah, you got Y'all can go but check it out. Right. There's an app. He said it right after as the reason. Yeah, I know. Of course. I, I, I know Tyler because I am Tyler. We both were the best at what we did. He was like one of the best League of Legends players as an entertainer. I was one of the best Smash players, right? And we, we've since fallen off a bit, and we hide our egos where we can, okay? I do the same thing. You know what it is? It's failure to notice where you need to improve. But hey, I don't need to talk for him. Let's let him talk for himself. We got an interview with our champion of the Salty Sweet, E-Rob, and Tyler1. Uh, let's see if we can get them on the screen. How's it going, gentlemen? Pile of shit website chess.com. <laughs> Dude, how can I not operate correctly on my cellular Bro. device? Tell me why. Tell me why pre moving's bug. Can I tell you why? why? Can you tell me why? how dog shit chess is as a game? Because there's the an place? app. You're using the Safari yeah, I have browser. An app, but it doesn't work with the link because you try to open the app store and they can't invite you. Whatever. It is what it is. Now let's talk about chess being a stalemate. Bro, who sits in a board game and is like, all right, this player has 15 pieces, this player has one? It's a draw. Like, what is the logic behind it? The game was made in the, in the Stone Age, bro. It's time to update it. Uh, well, first off, congratulations to E-Rob. Congrats, e congrats E-Rob. A hey, huge win. Ludwig, thank you for being the only one that believed in me, man. Since they died, baby. And, and you are also yep. coming out to the world's greatest gamer contest. And I think you have a good chance of taking that one, too. People are sleeping on E-Rob. Yep. I'm telling you, they are. It's the year of W, Rob. It's it's not it's not a joke at this point. That's two back-to-back -back wins over Tyler. How do you feel? I feel good, but it was expected. Uh, I got a retired Tyler from chess. Is that right? Are you retired from chess, Tyler? That's You've right. I've been playing this every well. day on stream for like the past month. Yeah, all you, you're talented. I, guys, <laughs> I gotta leave. Bye bye. All right, Tyler. <laughs> Have a good one.
<laughs> he got retired from the game. I mean, that's that's an emphatic statement from E. Rob. I think it's like an NFL retirement. I feel like he, he's going to be back in twenty four hours. Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah. He's back next year. Yeah, I wouldn't. Look at him I, mean, I would never. Screen. I would never compare. I, I don't want to. Come on. Like, he's I mean, the than legacy Tom Brady. of Tyler is much bigger than of Tom course, Brady, of, of course. course. Yeah, yeah. but uh, E. Rob, that that must have felt good. Can you explain why Tyler was not just on his computer? Because I, he's he, he, when he plays a game a certain way, he has to always play it that way. Or it's not the same. Like when he plays League of Legends, he has to have the exact mouse, the exact keyboard, the exact headset, and the exact spot, or he cannot play. But like when he's on stream playing in between league games, he's playing on computer, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he's, been practicing, he's been practicing so much offline, like right. on the phone, that he thought he'd be better that way. He thought that'd be his comfort place, but it actually ended up being his undoing because he made the obvious blunder. And I got to say, hey, you yep. played like a consummate professional because you offered some take backs. You told him about the mistakes. You, you did everything you could. Uh, and I think that's why you deserve the championship all the more. Oh, I, we can't. I know now when I go home, he's going to use it as an excuse every single time. Yeah, I called it out during the broadcast. Yep. Right, he's got a list so, of excuses. You're never going to be able to really, truly cherish this win. But let me tell you, the people know. The people know who won today. Yep. They're not confused. Uh, we'll appreciate yep. you, you Rob. You have a good rest of your day. And uh, I'll see you in a yep. couple weeks here. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in a couple weeks, man. All right, get some training in. See you, man. Yep, see ya. All right, that was it. That was our salty, sweet match. That's our champion, E Rob. With the kid in the in the in the picture there, I mean he's doing it all. Father, champion. Fighters always say they feel the most inspired after they have a child because they feel like every time they're going out, they're fighting for their family. So it was, uh, it was a beautiful moment. There. <laughs> that was him fighting his uncle or the yeah. child's uncle for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next barbecue is going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's going to it's going to go to fists. Yeah. I think he was helped though that uh, Tyler stalemated him because then he probably was looking out for that in the second game when he's up all the pieces. Right. He definitely slowed it down. He might have stalemated had that not happened. Uh, but that's it for our Salty Sweet, and we're coming back after just a few minutes for our championship bracket finals. It's Sea Dog versus Frank. Uh, we're going to see who wins that one. It's a best of four. That'll be after a quick break. Uh, we'll see you in a bit. Goodbye. See you later. Go, go off now. See you in a bit. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, welcome back to Pog Champs 5. We're here for our final match, but first, I think we got a new guy on the couch with us here, Danny. Hello, sir. Danny? Ch chess chief, chief chess officer. That's as made chief. up as it sounds. Is it Danny. legal? Is it binding? Like, are you, do you have a contract somewhere? No, it's somewhere? not, actually. Okay. That's why they gave me that title, so they could get rid of me in an instant. Yeah, chief just chess made it officer. Up. You yeah. could be, they could just call you, like, like ex accelerated janitor. It's it funny, because as made up as it sounds, when you go around other industries, I've seen, like, chief of basketball operations. Uh-huh. I mean, like... What exactly are you operating with the basketball itself? All you titles know, are made up to inflate you know, egos, to, Danny, and take control over the workers. <laughs> like we don't have to talk about that. We don't have to talk about this right We're now. We're not going to talk about it. There's more exciting things to talk about, yeah. which I'm hoping you can let the people know about. A little surprise. Yeah. You want, so... Ludwig and I, this has been a really good relationship, and so we're going to take it to the next level, and don't we're going to go to Paris. We're going to go to Paris for our honeymoon. Stop. This is, stop oh, yourself. that's not. Oh, did don't you book, the, ho did like, you book the hotel yet? No, I, I, I haven't, honey. I thought okay, you were going to book okay. for us. <laughs> I thought you were going to book it. Well, uh, you want me to do the announcement? Yeah, I'll, right. I'll take it over. Right, Danny. Danny's right. Uh, you know, it's. <laughs> I hate the term. We take it to the next level. <laughs> me and Danny happen to be going to Paris together at yeah. the same time, coincidentally, in the same hotel room. In the same hotel room. Totally irrelevant to the main thing that we're there for. One bed. <laughs> Which that's because that's we're saving money. That <laughs> yeah, has yeah, nothing yeah, to do with yeah, anything else. Because yeah. we're frugal. We're trying to help Ludwig pay back his debt. I've been watching like everyone else, and I'm nervous about it. It's a it, big so. debt. It's a big debt, and I need yeah. your help to pay it off. Which is why Chess.com is incredibly excited to announce Chess Clash, the greatest Chess Clash universe crossover. You didn't even know it was happening, but you've heard of it. You heard of Clash. You've heard of Chess. And they are making a, uh, a brand new uh, event with Supercell. It's your favorite creators. It's an epic series of chess and clash challenges and a star-studded lineup. Alex is going to be there. Gotham Chess is going to be there. You know what's crazy? They're not flying me out to Paris. So, Ludwig, you're getting special treatment. Yeah, the Paris actually is irrelevant to this. That's just me and Danny getting crazy <laughs> yeah. with each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there will be a uh, big event you guys can watch September 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, exclamation point. Clash in chat. You can see all the talent below. Sir Tag, I believe a Clash player. Sap Nap, Orange Juice, Anna. Uh, and, and us all, everybody on the couch here, yeah. but except for you guys who don't get to go to Paris. We go to Paris. That's our thing. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that was happening. I, I would have accepted an invitation to Paris. Do you speak French? What I do. Mean? Well, I mean, everyone speaks en passant a little bit. It doesn't really that's come all, up in language. That's, that's all, all you need. Much. When you go there, it doesn't come up. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll squeeze I'll do it the in. ordering for us, honey. You don't have to be weird about it. Uh, but Let's... that is that's for another day. It's for yeah. another day. Get stay excited for that. But for today, stay excited for our next matchup, the championship finals. Come on out. Frank is here and C Dog VA. That's literally Frank is here and that's, that's his he's username here. also. Yeah. Yep. What's up? Hello. Gentlemen, how, how are, are you? C? Here you go, oh. Frank. This is your microphone. This is your microphone, Connor. Connor. Fantastic. You look good. I stole your fit. I, yeah. like, I got the Crocs on. This is literally your chess boxing Wait, fit. This like, is a Solano <laughs> suit. Well, this is my suit. Actually. Wait, is that my suit? No, this is one. This is actually my one. I have a similar one. You have a Solaro suit. <laughs> yeah. I did steal your Crocs, though. Thank yeah. you for letting me know. It looks good with the nice Croc Croc gibbet. Yeah. Uh, Frank, does this intimidate you at all? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Connor. I mean, I guess this plan backfired immensely. I, I just wanted to feel great, so I play great. That's kind of what I was thinking. Feel great, play great. Uh, Frank, what's your plan going into this matchup? Uh, win. That was um, the main plan. <laughs> Frank, Damn, he's good. You are Damn. good. You, you are. Um, you are many people's favorite coming into this matchup. You are a protege, an apprentice mm -hmm. of of Mr. Gotham Chess here. What are your expectations going in? Is it all Levy's fault if you lose? Is it all your success if you win? What are you thinking? Um, well, I don't want to... Not, not all Gotham's fault if I lose, because I'm a, I'm a free man with free will. So <laughs> it, it'll be my fault if I lose. But um, if I win, then I win. And I get all the money. So $20,000? <laughs> what do you want to do with the $20,000? Um, probably... Uh, you buy my family a holiday just ah. to like a country to Paris <laughs> a uh, country he hasn't gone that far right <laughs> just, let's, let's just focus on the holiday yeah. uh, crash their honeymoon yeah crash our honeymoon in Paris Connor what do you do if you win the 20k uh, I can reimburse the flight here 
As if. No, we, we, I paid for the flight. I, yeah. I gave him the money. It's net 365. It's I, I coming. Know, I, I, listen, listen, I just want to win because I'm competitive. I don't, the money is meaningless to me. It's just victory. That's all that matters. Can I have it if you win? Well, I don't know meaningless. <laughs> I mean, meaningless is, you know, I, I just want the victory. It, no, no, you can't have the money. Well, okay, you guys are doing a best of four. You've proved mm. you two are the best of the entire pool of 16 competitors coming yeah. into this. You've beaten a lot of impressive players along the way. Now, I want to ask you, Frank, you are renowned for talking every thought out loud while you play. This is an in-person event. You are playing over the board. How does that change how you operate? Are you going to keep talking? What's the thought? Um, nothing. I'm just going to go how I go. And but maybe not speak out every thought because that is quite stupid. And <laughs> that will just lose me the game in hindsight. So going to keep on talking, though. want to keep on keep, keep that going. I'll, I'll be laughing too much to focus. Yeah, do you think this will get in your head a bit? It would be distracting. Absolutely. Um, you you're, know. you're a very, like, classic, like, what you think of with a chess player, because you listen to classical music. Yeah. You say almost no words, uh, except for occasional. <sighs> I, like, I like thinking noises. I think it, it, it makes you seem like you're actually thinking. And a lot of the time, like, man, I should just move my bishop one square or something. I don't know. I just, uh, a lot of the time, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. All right. Well, hey, gentlemen, it is uh, off to you two uh, to do the champion bracket matchup for that trophy right there and $20,000. That's so big. You've wow. both flown across different ponds to get here, mm. the Pacific and the Atlantic, to come together in L.A. Uh, so go off. Let's go make this happen. All right. Let's Godspeed go. to you both. Good luck. We're I'll take this from you. Good, good luck, gentlemen. Go. you got to oh, get out of here. Get a, go play. Go good play. Luck, We're going to watch you. We want to watch you play. Trophy. It's a cool trophy, huh? Don't sit on mm -hmm. it. <laughs> oh man! Uh, predictions. predictions. I guess let's, let's wait. Let's let's let them let's let them scurry out of here yeah, first. Yeah. Uh, we're them, not predi we're predicting don't want them the weather. Anything? Okay, they're out. They're out. Right, what do we think? What do we think about this you, matchup? What, you what go do you first, Alex. What do I? Do you want me to start? Yeah. I think straight up, C Dog VA is going to three zero. Frank is here. It's going to be the fastest finals ever. Wow! Wow! Wow. Do we have a timestamp of how many minutes the consolation final was? No, but I do have a game that you still made it that I just looked up in a Slack chat not too long ago. Was I was Let's me. do it. I want to see it. I want to see it. Cuz that know. was that was definitely I've Have never... you really never still no, made it anybody? I've seen the clip. I It was a GM yet 2.7 seconds I have so I think still made it. Obviously still made it in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I have definitely still But I, nowadays you could just say things, you know, you, you go can't. on Twitter you say and just, things. It goes online, yeah, no one remembers, it's no not a big deal. No one looks it up except Ludwig yeah, yeah. He calls you out. I do a bit of googling. Uh, let's let's go to the matchup video. I want you guys to mull on your predictions then, because you guys seem a little a little shy about them. Okay. We're gonna check check out this video. When I come right back, I want a firm prediction. All right, let's go. We'll be right back. You know, I'm glad it was Frank. I feel like Frank deserves to be here in the final, uh, but that's about as far as he's gonna get, unfortunately, because tomorrow it's all gonna it's all gonna end for him. I'm gonna play him like a dog mentally. I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna go woof woof. Not, not actually woof woof, but like I'm gonna want to do that. Theoretically. Uh, Frank is very fast. Frank uh, is almost too fast at times, um, but never really tends to have time trouble because of it, which I always do. Um, he has some good ideas, but often just I, I find that when I was playing him, he would just do one blunder that I was able to capitalize on. Well, um, his strengths, he doesn't blunder pieces. That's a big strength. Uh, it's, it, I think he doesn't like bishops, so I might use a lot of bishops. To be fair, I don't like bishops that much. But I, I just need to use them a lot. I'm sure he's researched my opening, and I'm not going to change my opening. I'm going to do the exact same thing I've been doing, and I'm going to beat him using the exact same opening that I've used on everyone else. Frank, you've done very well to get here, but in my mind, this is a battle between Wales and England, and Wales has got to win this one. I'm sorry. Gonna be honest, don't really have much against Welsh people. So about like a thousand years ago, <laughs> England took over Wales, and they promised that they would give us a king if, if we joined up with them. And then we joined up with them, they didn't give us a king. And we've been pissed off about it ever since. Those are like millennias. Okay, I mean, if we're going that far back, I have hatred. I have much hatred. I'm gonna wanna win. Frank, you're a really nice guy. It's been great meeting you, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm gonna put you in the dirt tomorrow. Connor, better watch out, because I'm, I'm winning it for England. I'm winning it for England, and Wales are going down. A classic rivalry, mm. England versus Wales. I like how Frank learned about it and then instantly was on England's side with zero research. I, th that was productive. I feel like that was, you know, that was like a bait 
production was like, sure. he said this. What do you think about that? The thing he did say it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, got, they got some good sound bites. I. Uh, Gosh, Centuries old rivalry now on the stage in the new way with less death and murder. Let's go. Uh, but still, perhaps a bloodbath, and I think we're jumping into it. Yep. All right, on the couch right now, predictions, rapid fire, starting with you. <laughs> Two and a half to one for C Dog. That's not possible. It is impossible, but I respect that Wait, you think it, it is. Two and a half to one is not a scoreline that can no, occur. No, it, it is because it, it could be one and a half to one, and then C Dog wins the last. Oh, uh, wait, no, it's the best oh. out of. It's the best of four. Well, it still works because it'd be. I, I'm half. not smart enough for the numbers. Just what? who you think will win? C Dog. C Dog? I'm, you know, Danny's vote. C Dog and double overtime. C Dog? Double overtime. That's what Danny told me. I think, I think Frank, Frank takes it in game four. You're so biased. Do you believe it though? I mean, listen, you're you, you're in a relationship with one of the players. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, I I have uh, I, I commentated Frank's very first chess match that he did uh, live on a broadcast. We had twenty thousand live viewers who made it from TikTok. I mean, like real people. It wasn't bots. It wasn't embedded anywhere. And Frank Frank going for a Karo Khan. Courtesy of the Gotham School of Chess. So talk to me about the opening. You've taught yes. Frank in the past. Are you actively coaching him for Pog Champs? Not. I mean, I, I wouldn't say actively, but we had a couple of training sessions together. Uh, we knew that C Dog was going to play the King's Pawn, and Frank basically would play about three moves every game and improvise. I have no idea how he got to around 950 doing that, uh, but I was like, Frank, you're going to need something a bit more solid. And I actually predicted Connor would play the advanced variation after looking at his games, but it, he seems to be just trading in the center, developing normally. Uh, this is the best option for a Karl Kahn player because you just bring your knights out, bishops, everything. But Frank is naughty. Uh, left on his own, he will burn a house down. So, so far, so good. So far, he has not found the matches. Uh, and he has to be solid. He has, he has to be good. And um, the, the thing is, every move, the chance that he makes a big mistake compared to Sea Dog is higher. So he just has to behave himself and... Good things might happen. Speaking of behaving himself, he looks like he's having a really hard time not thinking aloud. Still very expressive, just no thoughts out loud. Incredibly expressive, I would argue to a fault, right? Yeah. Because he has mapped out lines that he is planning to do in games while streaming Pog Champs. And if he hints at that with his face, I think Connor is, you know, he's an adult enough to read that and be like, oh, there's probably something I should be aware of here. What if he's tricking him? You, you know, think Frank has that double mind game oh, in him? Oh, yeah. He's got that dog, yeah, he's got that dog so. in him? I think he does. Yeah, right. Frank, he, he lets people believe that, you know, you don't take him seriously. He's just joking about, but he can play chess. Like, he's he's improved a lot. And even the, he didn't hit the clock on his first move. And he's like, oh. And he wasn't hitting the clock yesterday, but I think he learned that. And it's new to him. But I do think he embellishes a bit, and that could play to his favor. I see. And Sea Dog thinks more than Nobel winners. Like, he loves to think. Yeah. And then he loves to push a pawn one square. So... So you're, sa you're saying he's thinking, but the thoughts ain't doing much for him. Yeah, and also, knight to c3 is, right, that's an inaccurate move in an exchange Karl Khan, because that knight actually puts no pressure on the center. Now, uh, Frank forgot to bring out his light-scored bishop be before blocking it in the center, but it's fine, because if he just develops the knights and then brings the dark-squared bishop out and castles... Like, the good thing about the Karl Khan is it's rock-solid, so even if a person has bad habits in the early stage of the game, they, uh, they'll be fine if he remembers to develop everything and, again, sort of behave himself. But we, we don't know. And uh, he keeps hovering, and they're talking to each other. And I think he has brought out knight to f6. Seems like it. Oh, OK. That's also fine. Yeah, his what? facial reactions are just awesome. They're great. He's just fun to look at more than the game half the time. I will say, Connor going into this, his biggest concern was Blundering. He said that at yeah, the start. Yeah. I, Connor said that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the start of the game. Because what he likes to do is play chess puzzles. He's like 1,900 rated in puzzles. And when you play puzzles, it's like, ah, just look for a check, and then the moves will kind of present themselves. <laughs> okay. But if you look for a check <laughs> in a game, sometimes there's no moves to present themselves. You yep. have just found a check and put yourself in a worse position. Uh, and I think that's his concern is going for a non-existent tactic. <laughs> it's castling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I, I appreciate the, the compliment. Uh, uh, oh, I see. Oh, uh, yeah. Frank has this. Uh, Frank has this habit where he says "ooh" after every move. Uh, okay, that's an interesting way of developing. I don't think it's. Oh, Frank is doing the development that you're supposed to do in the advanced Karokan. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to zigzag because in an advanced Karokan, there's a pawn here, 
so you can't do that. Uh, Frank is lucky that this is completely fine, but the dangerous thing about doing this is the knight is supposed to guard that pawn when you castle, so by doing it this way, the king upon castling will be the only thing guarding these squares, and Sea Dog could just go here and here, and it could get real bad, uh, but Connor doesn't always play that barbarically, like he will develop pieces and improve his position, and maybe he doesn't just go for the kill, but this is a, this is a championship level position for game one of the finals. It's not a tricky position yet either, so I don't see tactics off the bat, but hopefully we'll get there. It's going to be a little bit challenging for Frank to figure out how to develop the rest of his pieces, especially that bishop on c8, because he's kind of trapped behind his white pawns. Uh, that, you see that? See, c Dog just thought for a minute and moved the pawn one square. <laughs> <laughs> You called it I mean, so so much in advance. Yeah, that that move doesn't make a single bit of sense. But he, but he, again, every move, the chance of him making a fatal mistake is quite low. And now Robert, like we're, you know, I I, I showed this right, and these different ideas. But his bishop is here. D does Connor? I really wish Frank goes here, and it's going to be a big moment. Does Connor just take for the sake of taking because the bishop has been there, or will he back up and go? That's kind of a soft spot, so maybe I can create something over there. He, he's more likely to retreat, I think, than most players in PogChamps because he's so worried about blundering or making the wrong decision. And it's not the best mindset to be in because sometimes he needs to go on the offensive. Yeah. So I need to go for the enemy king. But other times, he does blunder check a lot, and mm -hmm. oftentimes the PogChamps games are decided, as we saw uh, in previous matches, just one mistake loses the game on the spot. And I just don't think that Connor does that. Yeah, yeah I think his strategy has been make as safe of moves as possible, wait for the mistake to present itself, and then take advantage, and then win with advantage, because that's much easier to do. And here. <laughs> and the position looks imposing for white, but what's funny is that the quality of the development is actually much in black's favor. None of these bishops are actually exerting any sort of real meaningful pressure, and the knight has no role in the game, and this knight can't go there. So it's not just like my pieces are out and I did what I had to do. It's like my pieces are out. What are their next moves? And actually, white is running out of them much faster because black still can go, uh, excuse me, here, here, bring the rooks, attack the bishop, attack the other bishop. Like this knight can go here once the queen moves or now because it's bog champs uh, and you would lose the queen. So black's future prospects are much stronger depending on what he does now. I think if Frank doesn't blunder, he can win. Yeah, that's, I think that's it. And he played the top computer move, by the way, but for a human, pawn to f6 is bad because it weakens the e-pawn. But the computer thinks it's a good move, guys, because something like this in the future, right? That's sort of the point. But he blocks the pin for now. But he might play it too soon, right? That's the yeah. downside of trying to break. You had this beautiful pawn chain, and a yeah. pawn chain is only as strong as its base pawn. The pawn f7 was great, but if you play e5 and this capture happened, you may lose this pawn in the center. There are going to be plenty of tactics here. You yeah. have to calculate a lot. I think a safer move would be one like knight to f5, just developing your knight even further, advancing it. But I could see Frank saying, I'm going to strike. Let's go with that yeah. pawn push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do you guys think is stronger in middle game play? I think, I think you just did that, by the way. Yep. Yeah. There oh, it is. wow. There it is. There it is. Who's there stronger is. in middle game? Yeah. Ooh, that's a great question. Well, it's, I, well, I think Connor, right? Because it's got to be the higher rated player. He makes safer moves. Yeah. But he's not that much higher rated. Like, Frank is now 950, about, yeah. and Connor just over 1,000. So I feel like... It's within 100. Yeah, Frank is on the upswing, and I don't know, you're, you're good friends with Connor. You play chess with him a bunch. Like, ooh, how seriously ooh. has he been taking this? Bishop takes us. That's a really bad move. Frank is winning if he takes with the pawn solidifying his center. Like, he's actually just winning. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but he has a very nice No, I know, position. I know, but, it's like, it, wow. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know he's minus two, but the right. point is that... Now, all of White's pressure is completely gone. He will never, ever win that pawn. The, the winning idea there after e5 was to take. That was the point, and then, if, and then you would win this because the queen opens up. That was what Robert was showing. Uh, but this is, really, this is really, actually, really bad yeah. for, uh, for White. I, I played Connor, I think, twice since he's been here over the board, and both times I, like, won something in the, in the middle game. In, like, just... He blundered something. I got a fork, whatever it is. Uh, but what he's really good at is, like, persisting. Like, he stuck through. He had zero inclinations of resigning. And in one game, he ended up getting a draw through, like, a very long end game. Mm -hmm. In the other game, I ended up barely winning. But, like, 
if he's down in a bad position, he he plays much better in the end game than like most people at his rating would. He's down a minute and a half yeah, right now. His position is bad. He yeah. has no active plan. Nope. And he's everything that Frank has done has been good. Like he made that mistake. There was an inaccuracy putting yeah. the pawn up. It might have lost some pawn. But the idea is good. I just feel like Connor hasn't had a steady stream of ideas here. He's kind of making one-off moves every single turn. Well, it's also very <laughs> much harder for White to find plans here since all of his pieces, like Levy was saying earlier, already seem like they're on their best square. But so I guess that's why he's just going for the pawn pushes now. Whoa! Yeah, and, and if you're going to attack somebody in chess, you want to keep the center closed. Taking would have been a terrible move because it would have just allowed every White piece to flow through the center. Now this knight is going to go back. Frank could avalanche. Yep. How do you stop it? I don't think you can, and it's instructive that in chess, we often attack in the direction of our pawns. Yes, the white king is here, but sometimes even if the king is not outside the board, we have pawns aiming in this direction. Let's an allow another one to join the party. That looks very strong. He could simply play queen c7, which is a good move in many different Karakon positions. We saw cutie Cinderella drop this pawn with check earlier in the day. So he has options. Bishop ace, all of these are reasonable yeah. and strong moves. Yeah, and actually, that's like, a, that's like a great move because when the rook goes here, it's dead, and it, it, it stops defending the king. Like, Sea Dog's not going to go here. He's probably not going to retreat. He's just going to kind of play the, the, you know, the simple rook move. And now the quality of the bishop move versus the rook move is, is just night and day. <laughs> Did you hear Frank? He's like, you saw it. Oh, no. He was, like, upset <laughs> that <laughs> Connor found the good A sword. very <laughs> obvious bishop attack. <laughs> yeah, let's see if Frank uh, continues playing toward the pawns, toward the space advantage. Because, again... Per move, the chance of Sea Dog making an, an inaccuracy that's fatal is lower. So, what's Frank's move here? Not a bad move, right? Not a bad move, but pawn to f5, leading the charge with the uh, with the pawns would have been better, but still very difficult for Sea Dog. So, y'all are being like very savant chess players, talking about how bad it is. It's equal in pieces. Do you think the players know that they have an advantage? Because that matters almost as much as I, having an advantage. I think Sea Dog mm -hmm. thinks he's in a bad situation. That could just be personality, though. Like, he might always think he's in a bad situation. He's British. He's, yeah. Right. <laughs> and oh. He's not British. Frank's British. Oh. They're, they're both British. Oh, he's Welsh. I guess, yeah, it's British. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, oh, it's all part it's of the United so Kingdom. It's all confusing, like, you're English, but you're... Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, not English. He's British. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I, I think Frank sees moves like this and goes, oh, my God, I'm under attack. Like, I don't know what his confidence level is, but knight takes an f5, f4 is, is actually just lights out. These knights are super stuck. The space advantage is really cutting the circulation here. But Frank might think, oh, I'm under attack. But he's not. I mean, the queen can't beat up a fortified fortress of pieces. Uh, but if he goes like knight to h6, for example, he blunders. OK, and he takes. Ooh, Good move. Completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like Frank is w doesn't realize his position is better. I think he does, right? Because he, I mean, he's saying that's fine. If he if he finds f five f four, he could very well be on his way to, to winning this he's, game. He's doing it. But he's also letting oh. out sighs of relief. You know, he is a little worried. Th this is where we discover Frank's been like a secret twenty three hundred oh. the whole time. I, no, like I'm this telling you, I really believe that he kind of like allows his opponents to think, oh, he's not that serious. He's joking around a bunch. Even <laughs> this move. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Like, that that's it's not the best move according to the ev evaluation bar. We see it go down a bit. He still has a huge advantage. He's bringing his pieces Back. towards the action. Oh, my God. A backwards bishop move rerouting. And it's not bad, but, you know, the better thing would have been to step on the gas. But this is fine. You know, this is you took a wrong. You passed the exit on the highway. You're still going to get there like 10 minutes later. Y'all are talking about how Frank might secretly be great or whatever. I think he just comes alive when the lights are on because he <laughs> lost yesterday in a secret like show match against virtual. Yeah. He also lost him this morning. Yes, uh, they they were playing like to warm up the board and make sure make sure it functions and everything. The the way you do this is you kind of ask yourself this question: How do I activate my queen without moving it? And the answer is this: That's the door. And then and then out of the door come comes the dragon. And then it's <laughs> you got some phrases on you. Yeah, you know. And then all all of this good stuff. And white can't do a damn thing. Like white just can't move any pieces. Can't he also just if he doesn't see the pawn push play Bishop F4 because yeah. that rook has nowhere to go. Yeah, the bishop is uh, yeah straight up by the way it's just trapped. Yeah, because this bishop covers the H3 square, so he can win material on the spot. F5 is a fantastic. Move. You're just going full steam ahead for the attack. You might checkmate this king and trap the rook with a pawn, but Bishop F4 will net him some material too. This yeah. is insane. Connor might lose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th this is why I wanted Frank to pick up the Karl Khan because I was actually. 
I thought the position is easy enough to play that just, you know, on an open field without both players knowing exactly the best plans that something like this was possible. But see, now's the critical moment. Like, we, we got here. He did all the work. And what did he play? Did he play? What did he play? Okay. His position is so good, he can afford to do whatever he wants. He did a counter move. But he thought for two minutes and then moved upon. Yeah, I mean, he was, like, doing construction in the living room and just, like, went out the side <laughs> door and just kind of left it there. He's got to come back <laughs> and finish the construction, hopefully. And and Connor has a big moment here because yeah. his pawn's under attack, so he should do he should push it rather than taking. And I think he just did that. And the reason why that's so strong yeah. is now Black's pawn structure. I said it before: a pawn chain is only as strong as base pawn. The base pawn's on c6. Once you remove that, d5 is easier to attack. In fact, after pawn takes b5. Maybe queen takes b5, maybe knight takes d5 right away. The point is that the center might collapse for black. Yeah, I'm not surprised he saw it as pushing pawns is his specialty. Uh, did Frank also push? Uh oh yeah. So now, now it's, now unfortunately it's back to equal, but it's only back to equal if knight takes and then f5 still is played. The computer still evaluates the position as so good for black that this attack is very significant. But if Frank doesn't see that, it, it could get really bad, but Sea Dog might play here, and then it's right back to Black being the one calling the shots. If Knight takes, ain't it even if the Bishop takes, checks the King, and then Queen takes? Yes, there is this very nice discovered attack, but at that point, White would take here and here, and then you're just in a position where Black has lost the pawn chain, Black has lost all the attacking chances, and White has a pass pawn. So, a lot went wrong. But Sea Dog has less than three minutes. Yeah, he, I was talking to him earlier, and he was saying how he much prefers to take his time because he feels like even if he gets to one minute in the end game, that's enough for him. And that was a that was a pretty big mistake because now Frank will take with the bishop, and his queen will defend the center pawn, and the bishop will hit the rook, which might be forced to go here, and then for instance, bishop d4, mm -hmm. and maybe. F5, F4 again. <laughs> yeah, he might be forced into finding F5, F4. And this is a big moment for Connor. He's probably going to move his rook, but the best move is probably to actually allow Black to take by bringing the knight forward. Yeah. There are a lot of weak squares. Rook G3, we knew that was going to happen. He's also staring at the Black King, but now is the time for Frank. Push your He's pawn not going to do it. He has I, a, I feel like if you miss it for three turns, four turns in a row, you're never going to see it. And, yeah, Frank, Frank is hovering his bishop. He's also been focusing mostly on the queen side of the board, and I think one of Frank's weaknesses throughout PogChamps has been that he sometimes tunnels and can't come to a new plan. And what he has to realize is, yeah, I heard him say the word cheeky, that the cheeky <laughs> counter is at one. He can't touch his center pawns. So he's moving the bishop. Okay, he attacks the rook again. That's fine. Um, I mean, we could, we could have a repetition here, actually. Rook e3. But then there's, you know, there, there's a crazy moment that can happen here where the rook goes back and then there's a repetition. There's another crazy moment, which is rook e3, pawn to d4. Connor finds queen c4 check, picks this up, but loses to a discovered attack <laughs> on the queen. <laughs> like, oh. oh my goodness. This is possible, but d4, Connor might find queen c4, forcing the king to move queen takes pawn, and then this haymaker, queen takes queen. <laughs> Frank's I face. He's seeing it. I, 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 he cannot be seeing it, right? No, there is no chance. He sees the fork, which looks like it's winning. Then it's going to be a huge plot twist because Connor has a check and another plot twist. Well, is it a win if you do it in reverse, a.k.a. if you do the bishop check now? No, he, he traps the rook. Yeah, he found that move. Wow. And and this well, is going to be a really difficult moment for Connor. He, he's like he's playing at home. Yeah. You see Frank, he's celebrating. Yeah. You know, fist. Look at that face. <laughs> it's he, a, he just has a smug smile. This is a, a huge moment because I actually truly deep down think that even though Connor is like a cautious player and he's a humble man, uh, he, he did consider himself like he was going to sit down and win three games. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, this is a huge wake up call and it could be really unwelcome. He's he oh, sacrificed the knight, wait. but oh, wait. Yeah. No. That, and just queen takes. Queen takes knight, it's free. Yeah, queen he, takes knight. Uh, he's hoping, I assume, that he takes the bishop and then maybe the queen can get involved yeah. with like a discover check. Yeah, but the thing is, queen takes and you're attacking this knight through the rook. Yeah. So too many of white's pieces are loose. Knight takes d5, he's just trying to muddy the waters, but yeah. you can see Connor's time under two minutes and he's. He might just take it. You can hear Frank. Maybe he's hoping that Frank takes the rook and then he recaptures yeah. with his knight. I think I think Frank has the self-control to take the knight. It's like 
Again, you play enough hundreds of games, you go, I've, I've been here before. If I grab the rook, he's going to bring the knight back. Well, if he doesn't, it's a huge mistake. But I think Frank's going to grab the knight and go, I don't see what he's trying to do. Yes. Yeah, to pay, yeah, to like and he, he does? He doesn't have enough respect for Connor's game plan to believe that there's some trick that he doesn't see. Yeah, and now rook takes pawn, and, and you lose the second knight. Connor's smiling because he's going, what the hell is going on? I was just supposed to, you know, sit down and win, but now it's game on. And sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes it takes one punch to the chin and go, oh my God, we're in a, you know, you would know because you slapped each other. Oh a lot. yeah, and he has a fucking strong slap. I'll tell you <laughs> what, I do not want to fight him again. And we do not want to see him slap his opponent. That would not be, you know, what happens if a fight breaks out? Is there like a ref? Does somebody break him up? Uh, no, I think it, we let it play out. It just turns into Frank, chess boxing. Isn't Frank like underage and so slapping him would uh, probably be really bad? Yeah. Would, no, would the jurisdiction would be, be here? Would it jurisdiction? No, we don't fight under UK law. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. What if Frank struck first? Uh, <laughs> then British law applies. <laughs> um, sea dog took and uh, bishop or queen takes knight. Well, the queen takes is actually kind of interesting because yeah. if the queen takes here, then that check that we've been talking about with the white queen will hit the king here and also hit the bishop on f4. So you right. get that piece back. Right. So bishop takes would be uh, precise. You can also... Put, and he takes it with that yeah. way. And bishop b7 happening next. And oh here my. there's also rook d1. So then, he does have counterplay. And then there's rook e8 check. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. There is rook e8 check. And if you take, you walk into checkmate. And if you don't take by playing king f7, you probably win the game. This is so sick. He might lose this game up two bishops because he just autopilots to take. That would be heartbreaking. <laughs> Time is low on the clock for each of these guys, under two minutes. And, and you know, this, yeah, like Alexandra said, Bishop B7 is an is a all-star move. Danger levels, X-ray, what did he play? He, I think he did it. Rook oh. D8 on the board. Oh, he is not winning. He is not winning if he goes here, apparently. It's I don't queen know. Queen E7. Yeah, but then King G6. Oh, you He's, lose the rook! Yes, the rook! Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait! He, what? Oh, no! He just took! Is he going Rook E8 check anyway? Is that the... Oh, my goodness. But then Frank has to... And he, he's done Don't. it. Oh, my God. So the issue is if he takes... He cannot take yes, the rook. He has 100 seconds to play. It's a 50-50. Rook e8, queen e8 is game over. He might just realize that he has to move the king. Process of elimination. That's something we teach people when they're improving his chess players. He has no choice here. You take your mated. Did not see that one. Oh, my oh, God. No. He thinks he's losing. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh no. no. Move your king! Can you hear me? <laughs> no, definitely not. Move your king, Frank! I'm biased. I don't care. Do not take the rook. Oh, my goodness. He's doing it. I think process of elimination. He has to. He has to. Or he just, he was ready to lose. Oh, my God. He's got a minute. I'm going to lose my mind. Less than a minute on the clock. He's 58 seconds on the clock. He's... No! Oh! No! Wow, and he wait, makes the take. Wait, no, wait. The, the, the queen's yes! on the board. What? <laughs> no. What? Connor just leaves mate and one on the board. Oh, my goodness. Back it, it up. Back it up a step replay. here. replay. Queen oh. takes E8 is check and mate. The oh. king has no escape here. Oh, my God. Wow. That's checkmate. But oh, my God. Instead, he autopilots queen takes queen, and which seemed like a freeze, but look, two rooks <laughs> and a bishop Black against still queen winning. two pawns. is still winning this game. But he might not have enough time to fi find the win. Nobody has any time to find the win. Oh, Connor fair. didn't even press the clock. Connor forgot to press the clock. And look, 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 look at Frank. Oh, my God. Oh, why oh. did he even find him? Oh, my goodness. He did, it, he did oh. it like kind of coyly. He's like, yes. fingers. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. They are they are so nervous. So and uh, Connor's no. making space for his king. He yeah. doesn't want to allow for any back ranks to H sneak up on him. No, H3 is a, a brilliant move. And, and the queen is the favorite. Uh, it is impossible at low elo to play against the queen. The queen's going to feast on the pawns and... Uh, Connor only has one major piece that he has to move now. Queen takes pawn. He's just going to push those pawns. And, and I... Okay, we have a check. And king moves. Oh, my God. This game. Two huge wins just left on the board by Frank and Connor. And this, the problem with the rooks yeah. is they need to team up. Yeah. You need to get them both on the second rank, and then it's devastation. Yeah. On the first rank, you're actually not threatening anything. Yeah. You have one check, the king runs away, and that's okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's an equal position because there's... Fast paced, fast paced. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Now Connor's going to go b6, probably. Uh, and then Frank's got to get in here. Exactly what Robert said. You just got to gotta get to this king. You don't have to get to the king there, which is very likely to happen. But then after that, you have rook g1, which also might happen. I think we're going to get a king walk over here and a pawn promotion, <laughs> potentially. And this is just chaos. 
and Black has only 20 seconds right now. Yeah. Connor has 44 himself, and he did push the pawn. And 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 Frank Bla Frank plays rook to e2. Wow. Oh my God. Great move. And pawn f3 does not work because there's a pin along the second rank. Yeah. Yeah. And C Dog might play Queen C5. What did he play? Just move oh it. my God! Oh, he's lost. R Rook D2 is winning now, but Frank might also take. Yep. And he's taken. Good enough. Wow. It's mate. Rook takes G2 next. Will be checkmate. Yes, Connor's got to run with the king. Oh, he's trying to promote. Uh -oh. oh, Connor might see it. He's hovering. He's looking. Oh. He plays Queen F5 is mate one. Rook takes G2's mate. Rook G2's mate. Rook G2's mate. Rook G2's mate on the board. 18 seconds for Frank to find it. The second mate and one on the board. He sees second mate on the board. He sees he it. Plays. He's just nervous. Rook takes. It's mate. It's mate. He has to. He's oh pressed the clock. It's God. over. Frank wins game one. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my wow. goodness. Wow. You played very well. I I think was not thinking of the end there. Congrats, Ed. Oh my goodness. Wow. I, I wish I could oh, telecommunicate oh, to these players, and they'll find out soon, I'm sure, uh, that they both had mate. You know, that Connor had a mate and one on the board at a certain point. He doesn't know that right now. No. He's I, sitting there thinking, like, I, I was fucked from the get-go. It was the opening. He played super well. I had no opportunities. He had a huge one. It's very tough to say because he won the queen. He might still think he made a good comeback. Like, yeah, of course, mate and one is huge. But right. He's still gonna think I won this queen. It was it was a good chance there, and then wow, totally missed rook takes pawn, and uh, that's what happens. Wow, it's definitely gonna rattle him, but he has to be confident after beating Frank. Hey, you said it was gonna be three zip. Chance, and yes, <laughs> you said it was gonna be three zip. Look, versus I didn't, my I, guy. I, 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 How much you weigh? I didn't know your guy had that. One eighty three. You want to do it? No, I don't want it. I weigh <laughs> one fifty like nine. <laughs> Bro, I weighed one fifty nine in the but, eighth you know, grade. Oh man. Well, let's take a look at some of the highlights from that game. Uh, it was a good game one. Uh, and and Connor said to me, he said if he loses one game, he's nervous that yeah. it'll rattle him and he'll lose the rest of the game. So. He should be. <laughs> oh, come on, bro. <laughs> My guy can totally destroy your guy. <laughs> we'll see it after the break, though.
We are back for our final battle of the evening, Pog Champs 5 Championship Bracket. Nemo is joining us here, and Andrea has swapped out for Hess. What are your thoughts on that previous game? You watch it, you get a good eye on it? That was insane. We were just watching it over there in the cafeteria, and everybody was like going like, oh, ah, uh, like... It was oh. like we were watching a soccer game. It was like, whoa, whoa! <laughs> exactly, and if you were one move behind, if you just heard one part of it, you'd be like, oh, Frank's winning, and then you realize, Connor has checkmate in one, and then the next second, all of a sudden, it's two rooks and a bishop, and it's like, what is happening here? What, what was the? How did you guys feel about those exchange of tactics in the middle? Oh, I mean, I I was just sitting there not understanding what was truly happening, but when I see the eval bar flying up and down, that's a that's not a good thing. It shouldn't be happening in chess matches. Chess matches are usually more boring than that. No, that was a unbelievably exciting performance from the players, but also super clutch by Frank because he like it's much easier to play with a queen. Yeah. So C Dog was just gonna push his pawns, take everything, and then Frank found this rook to the second rank move, and he does. Yeah, it's a deserved win. Yeah, Frank has the underdog narrative on him, and even in Chess.com chat, only 25% of people thought Frank was gonna win. Wow. Yeah. It's because y'all traitors. This you, is I mean, your this is your student. You said he was gonna lose three zero. So I, did. I don't even want to. <laughs> this is because he's my dog. But this is your student. He's my yeah. Small you things. are very prideful about your student. Yeah. Uh, well, if he lost, then I would be like, you know, we only train like once or twice. Yeah. Like, hell yeah. Like all yeah, for sure. You okay? You have trained a couple of people for Pog Champs. What is the thought process when they when they lose? What do you tell them? How do you make them feel better or prep them for another game? Do you send them an encouraging word? Honestly, yeah, I just tell them to not worry about it, you know, because sometimes you just lose in chess and there's okay. not much you can do about it. Sometimes people just have a bad move. Sometimes people just have a bad day. Look, if you lose in chess, it's not the end of the world. And it's definitely not the end of the world here for Connor because there's three more games and anything can still happen. All right, I just messaged Connor. I said, it's okay, you got it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's about to go. It, buddy. So if he wins, yes. it's because I did a, a, a good coaching tactic taught to me by Nemo. Uh, but before we jump into our second match, let's first take a look at a video uh, from one of these players on how they feel about this matchup. Uh, I started playing chess from like when I was very young. Actually, as far as I can remember, I started playing chess. I used to play competitively when I was like 11, 12. I used to play for the Wales team. Played a bunch throughout my early childhood and then just kind of stopped. I only recently got back into it because of all these tournaments that I keep getting dragged into and hopefully I can win one this time. I'd say my chess play is very instinctual, mixed with using the time almost at a disadvantage sometimes to try and make sure that my instincts are right. A lot of the time that I end up wasting is just me confirming that I was right or I think I was right. Um, but I like to think that I play quite aggressively. I don't like to defend much. I like to attack as most chess players do. I think I spot really good ideas sometimes, but I just really struggle to kind of really commit to it and then believe myself that it's a good idea. Time, time's definitely my weakness. I definitely take too much time because I have been in this situation many times where I've been in a chess competition. The choking factor cannot be understated. If you choke in the chess match, everyone will remember this. Everybody will bring it up to you. That's why my name is Choke Dog VA because of my previous chokes in chess tournaments. Uh, I, I mean, I started playing chess from over the board, so it'll feel like a nice return to form. So I don't, I'm not worried about it, it'll be fine. So I'm very cautious, which leads me to spending a little more time than I should on moves. Uh, I just realized I was low on time, and it came back to bite me. Why does everyone want to draw in this competition? Why can't you guys just accept your loss? God damn it, Connor, why are you, why are you making this so fucking hard? <laughs> yeah, game one was uh, Saikuno, which I, it's, I mean, it was a massacre, it's not a game. His chess game was lacking severely. All right, so watching a clip of me and Saikuno. Oh yeah, you could you could offer a draw. Connor would take a draw probably. I would not take. Connor a draw. wins with a draw, so maybe he'll accept. I would not take a draw. Uh, played Jarvis, where I lost a game, which uh, Jarvis had played very well, and I also felt like I just didn't deliver. But we managed to win that game too. And then I played Frank, uh, and I'd like to think I beat him pretty decisively, 2-0. Uh, made it all the way to the quarterfinals against Sapnap, which is probably the hardest game. I've had, uh, where it went to tiebreakers. Nail-biting finish, but managed to somehow get the win. Uh, and then I played Alex. Uh, Alex was scary, but managed to beat him. The low light definitely was getting en passant by Jarvis. I haven't forgot that. Fuck you, Jarvis. But my highlight was getting to en passant uh, <laughs> against Alex. That was by far the highlight. Getting en passant is, is just like getting hit in the balls. 
in the middle of a chess match, literally. It, it just feels, it feels unfair. And then getting to do it on someone else, it, oh, it's so cathartic. Uh, maybe this is like hubris talking, but I don't need a coach. They need a coach to beat me, but I, I think I'm good without it. I think I just got the better game. Uh, I've always wanted to be in Pog Champs, and this one kind of snuck up on me. Um, I didn't expect to win. I didn't expect to do much. That's why I, I didn't practice. I didn't do anything. And somehow I'm here in the finals. And when everyone was telling me I'm the favorite, I was like, what? How? I, I just showed up. I think you'll probably see some of the best and worst play from me <laughs> in this tournament. I've talked a lot of shit. I, I mean, I have to win. This is embarrassing for me. If I don't win, this is going to look terrible. <laughs> It does look terrible. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he lost his first game. He's somewhere deep in his mind palace, but he's talked a lot of shit. He's known as the favorite coming into this, and he's down one game to Frank, and we are entering game two. I don't know. How do you guys feel? What do you guys think? He he talked some shit, but he also half the sentences were, I, I don't have a coach. Like, why are you expecting me to be the favorite? Why are you? Uh, it's a nice balance because you never know. You never yes. know if he's the villain or, or what. He's not great at being a heel because he's too nice of a guy, but he technically is the heel here, right? Like, Frank yeah. is the hero because he is this passionate, chatty yeah. chap who's, <laughs> who's up 1-0 and yeah. two games away from being our Pog Champs 5 champion. They're discussing what Frank should play versus Sea Dog's Sicilian defense. I know what Frank should play. Alephant? That is what we discussed, and that is what he goes for. Mm, but of course. Yeah, it's the easiest thing to play against the Sicilian it's the player. the only one I know, so I'm glad that it happened. Yep, and uh, it gives you a really easy game, and that was just my goal. Frank, get an easy position. Ooh, wait, me and Connor played this exact position last night. Okay. We, we played the Alapin, uh, and it ended up somehow getting mm -hmm. super bad for Connor uh, because he had misplaced his white bishop. Uh, and he had basically gotten it trapped and it was stuck the whole game because he went to like, uh, he basically just got his pieces stuck. Uh, he did not play very well with it. Okay. Um, so that's what my concern is here. Yeah. Because you want to get it out. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a good move for this level. Uh, Frank might. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Frank is just sort of on autopilot at the moment. Uh, sea Dog has played in the best way possible. And then after pawn takes, you can't just take back because you're gonna lose this, which is very likely to happen, by the way, because. Well, we're we're about to see. <laughs> I'm very scared. It might just Frank be a... doesn't skip a beat. He went right for reaching for his knight and, and instantly took. And Frank is losing in six moves because it's pog champs. <laughs> Rubbing his hands like a maniacal mastermind while down a pawn. Yeah. Uh, so explain what's the issue here? He's just losing the pawn in the sun. Because it's attacked twice by the knight going forward and the queen going forward. Yes. Should the queen take to offer a trade? Yeah, probably. And Connor does it. Ooh. This is a good spot. All right, you guys are all very good at chess. You're in this spot right now. Imagine yourselves. Are you like, oh, it's in the bag? For black? For you, if you are black right now. Yeah. It's locked up. Yeah, I'll dub Magnus here. Yeah? Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> okay, but, but, I, but I won't lose. But most people. Yeah. What about you, Andrea? For, for our games, for sure, but at, but at PogChamp's level, especially after that last game, literally anything can happen. Right. I'm also curious, who do you guys think a favorite is in the more middle game, end game positions, now that Queens just came off the board? Well, I thought it was Connor, but he clearly had a lack of defensive vision yep. on checkmates. So if he avoids that, generally, he's pretty good. Like, he holds on in losing positions much more than most people would. Um but I, I think he is someone who plays better with a lead. Like, he's, I don't, I mean, I guess that's everybody <laughs> to an extent. Everybody wants a lead. Um, uh, Frank is just completely tilting this game. <gasps> oh, oh this no. is... he blundered a fork. What am I doing? <laughs> a cheeky fork, one might say. Wow, this is... He's oh, fucked. No. Yeah, you see what I, what I meant in game one when I said he has to behave. <laughs> This is, uh... How did this go bad so fast? He, Run move eight? He, he played the move knight to c3. I uh, will just bring this back very quickly. He played this move in about, I don't know, one second. He definitely seemed overconfident. Yeah, I would agree. I think the last game, Frank was definitely holding down his nerves. And this game, you can see, he kind of had a change of mannerism, started playing a little faster. Definitely that checkmate did get to him a little bit. But he could drop this knight back, get an exchange back. It's not necessarily over. Yeah, and, and there's a nice way to lose here, by the way. Like, Sea Dog, I, I think, will block with the bishop. 
uh, and he did that. But there was a nice way to lose if you like put your king here and accidentally got checkmated in the future. But yeah, Frank can take, go here, like Andreas said, take the knight. And then the king is still in the center, and the king might go there and still get checkmated. So uh, it's a good start for Connor, but we'll see. We'll see if uh, he's playing right now at 99.3%. So <laughs> it's a good number. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Frank should have taken with check because then he would have been able to play knight f3 right away yeah. and just be very speedy about recapturing the knight. Does he get defeated? Does he get, does he get bummed out? I, I, it's very tough to say. Uh, probably. I feel like most people do, but he, he has played like two good moves this game. I, I don't know what happened. It's probably overconfidence uh, in a little bit of invincibility from that first game. It does happen after you win a, a game that maybe you weren't expecting to win, but... Yeah, it's interesting how the tables have turned, because I'd say in the first game, especially after that interview, Connor went in a little bit overconfident. I even underestimated Frank myself, but that's what winning does to you. It gives you fake hope. Yeah, Just it's, kidding. It's funny that the people who oh. seem to have had the highest <gasps> confidence were instantly punished for that. Yep. Connor game one, Chess Frank game two. is a humbling game. It is. In a brutal, not fun way. Chess isn't fun. No, it's not. I especially it's like this matchup because so we have someone. Wait, are they pointing out the threat to each other? I'm very curious. It does feel like they are open about the threats. Because when you attack something, you know, you want to pretend like it's not there so your opponent doesn't see it. But Frank is an open book. I'm not going to fall for that. Whatever <laughs> <laughs> you do, I ain't falling for. <laughs> You're down yeah, so yeah, much. You get me with that. No. You are not. Well, I it looks like he's going to yeah. develop his knight at least. So yeah. he is getting that knight on A1 back. Yeah. Oh, what's he doing? What's he doing? I told you. Like, he's got to just... Okay, Alexander just said, because he reached for his knight. And now he, he put his hand down. I have no idea what the hell he's going to do. He's not going to move his knight. Well, what else is he looking at? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, your pieces are developed. There's two that haven't moved the entire game. This is like, you know, this is like coaching a boxer who, who has a lot of other skills. And just only exactly. just gets into ridiculous uh, fist fights where his like whole face is busted. I mean, you're like, just, just don't do that, you know? Uh, what is he thinking about? I mean, really, what is he? There is nothing else. Maybe to he's think just about. playing mind games with Connor. It's failing. He's <laughs> he's playing mind lost. games with us at least. He's hopelessly lost. He has to fight back by developing his pieces and winning that night in the corner, but. Am I going to be able to flap my wings about? <laughs> well, luckily, yeah. His commentary is, if anything, not helping his he opponent. He rattled the stoic Connor, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. True, he got a giggle out of him. This and he made the best move. There we go. This is why I used to teach, uh, like, five- and six-year-olds before all this online stuff. And, and, you know, one of the craziest things that they would I was say... really hoping you would just... Yeah, you just oh. wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, kick, he kicks <laughs> so his knight out. One of their favorite things to say with each other was, I know what open. opening you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, y no shit, idiot. <laughs> like, we all know. That's what you say back to <laughs> the five year old. <laughs> yeah, like, no shit, idiot. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's like, I, and then the kid would come and cry, he knew I was playing the London. Yeah, it's not a secret. Like, we, we're all on the same page here. He really just. Just. Just amazing, isn't it? Like he's winning the match, but he's still in awe of his opponent. You know, I mean, it's really easy to play well when you're up a full rook. <laughs> it's not so much that, not that he, Connor didn't play well, but it's more that Frank just fumbled the bag on this game. Yeah, from the get-go. So I, I'll be curious to see how much Frank can bring it back, whether it's winning or maybe just not losing as bad. Yeah. Uh, the worst part about this... I cook my way out of this one. Is, wow, what? the king, the king uh -huh. is coming to play defense. That's insane, right? Yeah, but the point was that if the bishop had moved, the knight would sneak out with the defense of the rook. Uh, because he couldn't take this. He, he can gonna... actually play knight c2 here and <laughs> yeah, get he his can, knight out. He can he can still play this, by the way, because the king can't cover two squares. The king is so beta. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> but, b5-2 so and escape and trade. It's so yeah. a lot of good moves for Connor here. Yeah, the king, king. Frank didn't act on that knight fast enough. I think Connor He's flapping can his wings. I don't. Yeah, and there's Too also much flapping. There's also this move. Yep, exactly. And uh, you got to go there. And now the knight escapes by capturing, which would be really bad. And I, I think Frank, Frank, it's just the best of two after this. You know what I mean? I. We're gonna have to play a best of two. Which is how you can get to two point five and one. Well, like I predicted. <laughs> everyone was being a hater on you. I didn't understand the math, but I'm on your side. <laughs> there How we go. 2.5 to 1 is not possible. It would be 2.5 to 1.5. 2.5 to 1.5. Oh, 
Oh yeah, because they drew. You're okay. right. What? <laughs> that was well, the whole argument. No that's, what yes, yeah. that's what I meant. I believe people, okay? I'm a big conspiracy believer, and so, yes, yeah, I fell for that. Yeah. Gee, okay. Ooh, he's getting distracted, but he's trying to set up another cheeky fork. Yeah. That porn is looking dirty. <laughs> <laughs> British commentary yeah. is so much better. I think he also oh. enunciates his, his words like Austin Powers sometimes. Yeah, he, do, he does. Really, he, he's a mix of uh, Austin Powers. I, I said it once, Austin Powers and somebody else. He's so funny. Um, and so authentic, too. Frank in person is just like Frank in, on the screen. Okay, what I like about... Oh, let's see if he's Ooh. doing it. Oh, that... That was not where that, I was that going to go. physically but. stops G4, but completely hangs upon. <laughs> um, like, he cannot go here. Yeah. But uh, maybe Connor won't see that. I think Connor he, saw that. He, Connor saw he that. He just did. Connor yeah. instantly well, saw that. Well, at least he's getting the night back on A1, you know? There was, was a, a world a couple moves ago where he wasn't going to. But then Connor's going to go here and then here anyway. Oh, that is, um, that is a nice line. Yeah, this is... This hasn't been a good game. This is, you know, Connor is like a 1,060 because sometimes he plays like a 960 and sometimes he plays like an 1160. Yeah. Frank is 900 because sometimes he plays like a 1400 <laughs> and sometimes he plays like a 400. <laughs> and last game was a 1400 Frank minus hanging mate in one. Uh, and, uh, you know, this game is, is so his variance is higher. It's yes. unclear which one is better. It's unclear which one is better for the long-term chess career, but one gives your coach a heart attack far more often, so... And what advice do you give to your students who are just so erratic? Oh, I, I don't give Frank, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't give uh, Frank not, advice. Not, not, in, not in the middle game. I mean, you, you got to do He asks it. Frank for advice. Yeah, I really, <laughs> I, w I want to be as confident and cheeky as, as, as he is. It's hard. Like, a game like this is a complete opening disaster. So everything you do afterward is kind of meaningless because, you know, you're going to fix the opening disaster. So you'll never be in a position like this. Uh, it's it's tough to learn from the middle game of this game. All right, you know we've been talking all this smack, but Frank's move bishop d4 was kind of genius because it's completely yeah. avoiding that fork that yeah. Levy pointed out. Yeah, and now he just has to follow up with kind of a five and knight. Yeah, and does he know that? Because this is like everything he's prepared for. Yeah, I mean, Andrea called this, this could out. be a comeback. Andrea called this out like ten minutes ago. She was like. Did he just say I'm going to take your boy? I have no idea what he's saying. I think so. Yeah. Wouldn't be awfully good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what he's like, considering. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we, do we, do we just say free night to him now? He's talking like oh my God, I love this. He's talking like Dr. Evil This is great <laughs> Just say goodbye to him now Do we say goodbye okay. to your boy now? You know what? I'm predicting a Frank comeback Because yes, he's down material wow. But Connor's pieces His knight on g4 is even a little bit tied up It can't really retreat Frank's bishops are in the center Somehow king in the center He didn't get punished for it And he's going into a middle game end game So I don't know His pieces are looking like they're going to get more and more more active. I think, yeah, but that's... Uh, a, that yeah. was a nice move on Connor's part, trying to trade when he's up. The problem with Frank's position is he just doesn't really, nice. really have any plan here. He's got a cheeky pawn he could take. Really yeah, he should go uh, here. Take the cheeky pawn. Because he's I mean, I'm down just material. Gonna, oh, <gasps> Why? He needs to avoid the bishop trade, because... That would just free the knight. This is what we expected coming into this matchup. Which was what? Dominance by Sea Dog? Yeah. Winning in six know, moves? Exactly. Actually, I, I don't know if this is dominance oh, by Sea Dog. Oh, nice. I feel like Frank's holding his ground. He, he made some silly mistakes in the opening, but I don't know if I would say this is dominance. Is this comebackable? No. No chance. Not Andrea with, thinks I it think is. so. Not with, not with C, though. I have faith. All right, Andrea, be real. Have you lost a game with this level of lead? I have lost hundreds of games with this level of lead. It's actually what I do for a living. Okay, then it's comebackable. Levy, on the other hand, never stalemates, never, never blunders. Never so that's why he can't relate. He's, he's a perfect player. Levy that's why he doesn't never compete stalemate anymore. Never stalemate Rosman. I've never, I've never, lost a, not, never lost a game. Um... On a serious note, yeah, at the title player level, it also depends. What is there, 30 seconds left, or is there five minutes left? Is there 40 minutes left? Like, I think that's why I'm less confident, is because Frank is also down on time. Yeah, but he could have, like, Fr Connor could have. I I I'm only going to start thinking a comeback as possible when Connor gets to around two minutes, and all these pieces are on the board. 
Connor is, I will say, to his to his fault, bad at specifically converting end games okay. and like just getting the checkmate. Like he makes it hard on himself. He does it slowly, and we we saw that against against uh, I think Saikuno, where he was really trudging through the mud trying to get the checkmate. Well, right now what's going to happen is Frank is going to move his knight because it's targeted, and then that's going to free up a square in the center. I think he's going to move his knight to the center. Okay, he moves it back. That's fine. Let me just show this on the big board. Now that square is free for the knight. Yeah, this is looking not good. And then you snap that. If the king keeps going forward, you have a discovered attack on the king like this. And Yeah, knight e5 is a lethal blow if he, if he plays it. You know, we good, missed that maiden one. The good news is the knight defends the bishop, so he could move the king back, right? He he did not. He grabbed the pawn, which, I mean, can't hate. Completely reasonable move. And he's probably just going to move it right back to where it was. See what you've done here. <laughs> yeah, you took the pawn, Frank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't like what you've done with the place. Uh, well, at least Frank can play a move like rook b1, get a tempo, and maybe avoid knight e5. I think Connor's just going to go exactly yeah, where he came yeah, from. Yeah, this was a really nice move order for Connor. If he would have taken this pawn earlier, you know, White could have tried to take on b7, activate the rook, but he even defends this pawn first. Now uh, there's so many threats. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Frank might run out of always, ideas and just go here, time. which will force that move. Or maybe Connor okay. will take a pawn. Always time for one. He's playing. That's not about it. Yeah, bishop b5. Trying to get rid of the blockade. Try to get that pawn. Gets his bishop out of the fork. Yeah, so now this move, you can just move your king. Listen, the longer this game goes, the higher the <laughs> chances Frank wins, come, right? Because like I said, True. all the pieces are still on the board. And if, if Connor doesn't find the knockout, you, Frank, yeah, Frank's going to get his pieces back into the game. Then anything can happen. Yeah, Frank is slowly redeeming himself. It's now less than a one-minute advantage for Sea Dog, which it hasn't been in a very long time. And he trades, because that's... Very An natural. easy move to make, yeah. And actually, there is this crazy rook check that wins the knight. Yeah, rook. that knight on the side of the board's practically a dead horse anyways, but now it's actually lost. Does but he, if that does happen, he does have some comeback tactic ideas with rook takes b7 and then b8. Yeah, rook b8. <laughs> yeah, it looks juicy like a potential pin on the rook, but that dark squared bishop can always come back. For some reason, I thought you were going to say juicy like a potato. I was really a hoping for that. <laughs> Alex has been sitting at commentary a little too long. She's getting hungry. Um, Connor's it's so tough to know like what he's looking at. Whenever I mean, Frank it, mixes his hands like that, you know he's cooking up uh, something. Although might not the be Connor good, beard, re re beard rub it, really it. looks professional. Oh, when he's done it, he's reached down the wow. board. That is a huge blow to the comeback chances. Yeah, big blow to the ego. But again, rook takes b7 is coming in, and then maybe knight e4. There's still a lot of checks and rook b8 threats. Yeah, you got to go back. He really has to craft a perfect puzzle. But there is potential mate. He could slowly he try to smother him with all his pieces. Right. And but he, he should go king back, so he has the e4 square for his knight. Connor will take. That is a ridiculous shot. And that, yeah, Frank's just got to go here and mm -hmm. here and pray, basically. He's hovering his hand over the rook. It is a free pawn. You can't get much better than that. If and Connor takes the pawn, Frank wins a rook, right? Uh, not. Oh, yes. If he sees the full variation, because then he has to play uh, bishop b six. And then, but yeah, but then Connor has king d seven, and then the rook guards. Oh, true. But like, it's the best he's got. You know yep. what I mean? That's not wow. a bad move. You know. Connor giving him no hope for that line to yeah. happen. King's going here. It's going to be nice and snug. And, uh, yeah, if the king got this way, there was chances. There was ways yep. you could lose. You could also lose like this and accidentally hang your rook. And then... <clears throat> but I think he has too much time to block. He's at 92% for the game. So he has really not done anything wrong at all. Uh, the only chance that Frank now has, again, is, is this and going for f7. But it's still... It's hopeless. Uh, it really is. But he's, he's got to do something. You can't just resign. So. Well, it looks like he's going towards the d6 square. Yep. Frank doesn't seem like a resigner. Yeah, no, I was no. going to say the same thing. I like that he's a fighter. Even now, his spirits don't seem too down. They're both fighters. It's a good matchup. It's a best of four. All right, maybe you're going to lose this game, but it's 1-1. One, one. You're tied up. Yep, it's not a... You, you didn't lose in, in three. There's also, like, for instance, if black goes, I want to trade knights, and you're like, all right, I'm pinning you, and then take, and then bishop takes, all of a sudden you're getting mated. 
That would be kind of cool. You and know what I mean? Like, wouldn't be a first. That's yeah. I think Connor. Something good about him is that in these very winning spots, he's still taking 30, 40, like you know, fifty yeah. seconds. Yeah. On a single that's a move. Great. It's you, good and bad because he's about to be down on time. Right. But at least he's not, you know, he's very keen to to make a good move where there seem to be many good moves. But also he's now down on time, right? So <laughs> he, he, can, he can only do this like three more times sure. before he flags, which is crazy. Like he, he has 10 good moves. Just, you know, just, just make one. Just go. What, what did he do? Fantastic. Great. And now he's going to bring the rook to defend. And Frank... Uh, the way he reaches for the piece. It yeah. reminds me of when I'd play against younger kids in my chess tournaments. And they'd get really excited, like they're cooking up something huge. And then, just like that. And then it's so Stop tilting. Because you also <laughs> believe them sometimes. You're like, oh my god, that's it. And, and but there's just one move. It defends it. It's over. Yeah, knight e5. And Maybe bishop d4. Yeah, we talked about this. Bishop d4. But by the time you take and then try to get over there, the king's just going to go to a light square. This is not a queen. If it was, that would be really nice. But it's great. This, everything he's doing is good. He recovered, <laughs> but he recovered too late. He's laughing maniacally like he's crushing. It's honestly yeah. good mind games, though, because whether it's real or not, it is and, very tilting. And C Dog could go here, for example. Okay, Rook F8 is a great one. Now, Frank should just Solid go A4. Play. Just go A4. Just, you know. He does have an insane pawn that nobody is near. Yeah. Well. The Rook will just swap sides, yes. though. Hop to A3, and then. Goodbye, fast. passer. It is a fast piece. Oh, is he going to try to chop it all down? He can't. He's got to try to put... Okay, that's a great move. Now he's looking to set up this. He's good at putting... Trying to put Connor into some time pressure. He's continuing to attack, getting him lower on the clock. This is insane. This is exactly what we talked about. Frank has just enough pieces for it to not matter that Connor has just two minutes because if they traded a bunch of pieces, Connor would just play fast because he knows Frank only has pawns. But he's terrified. He's just terrified he's going to blunder something. And you were saying that Frank can either be a 400 or a 1400. He started as a 400, <laughs> but now he's playing like a 1400. Yep. Is it too late? We'll oh, find out. I'm getting nervous for Connor. Yeah. 150 on the clock. He's knocking pieces over. He's sweating. He's going to, we're going to get this. And, you know, Connor could lose that with the bishop and then that in one move if knight to e4 is played. But now Frank is deciding to get suspenseful here. He played every move instantly for about 10 moves, and now he's nervous for some reason. He's got nothing to lose. He's just got to make a move. Make a move, Frank. And it looks like he's hovering. He's going for the check? No, I think he's going to bring it back. Wow, that, uh, is, that is the best move. And wow. Do you got a mic? What? He's hearing you? No. <laughs> no, no. He wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have hung the fork in the <laughs> Stream sniping. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's fair. The thing is, he's also out of options. You know what I mean? He doesn't have a lot of pieces left, so he's just putting them on free squares, and Connor finds rook c8. Uh, but, you know, the bishop, bishop in here, bishop in here. He just takes. Yeah, it's not a good move, because now we're going to get trades. Yep. Should have kept the pressure. Bishop d6 would have been very cool. Yep. <laughs> Connor's got 90 seconds. Connor, though. you just got to make the move. It's just a trade. Well, just he, grab he, the piece. He could take either. He, he, he takes the bishop. Check. And, and, and Frank cheating. You know, hitting the clock with the opposite <laughs> hand that he's moving the piece, which a lot of chess enthusiasts would know is not allowed. I found out that I was cheating because I do it all the time. That's all good. This could end fast. Frank could move his knight and then rook c2 check and the, go into the back rank. Accidental checkmate. He's probably going to have to come up. Uh, he was not afraid of bringing his king up earlier, so. He's thinking. He should have thought on move five. That would have really... <laughs> Really prevented a lot of this from happening. Uh, now there's an M in the evaluation. Only we see that. Mate and seven. That's a big line. Go, Ludwig. Give us the whole variation. Uh, mate and seven starts with check on king with the rook. Yep. C2. Yep. Uh, uh, king moves uh, there. Then next is uh, the right rook moves up one. Yep. 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 Uh, then king <laughs> is forced. Wow. Yep. yep. Uh, and Ludwig predicted this mate in oh. 17. I actually predicted this at the start of the game. Oh, it was an illegal move, apparently. <laughs> Clock stopped. Oh, during an illegal move, the side that uh, creates the offense oh, no. gives two minutes so to the oppo opponent. So, it's, uh, king is in check, and I'm going to unpause your clock. You're good to go. 
Do, are they doing those rules here? No, oh. they're not. Oh, they're not doing those yeah, rules Yeah, I was going to say, we're not doing touch move. I'd be surprised if they have the other legal move rules. We're, we're not playing sweaty here. We're so playing what, chill. So what just happened then? Why did he, why did the ref come over and what was he, just call him stupid? <laughs> Can't believe he played that move. <laughs> <laughs> he's just <laughs> uh, He's missed the mate in seven. And also this check here, check takes the night. That's mate. He just plays a four. Nice. Yeah. Now it's mate. Uh, rook d2 sets a checkmate net with rook e2. Uh, that's, uh, that's a nice little puzzle there. Checkmate in two here for black is very hard. Rook d2. I don't think he's going to play it, but you never know. He might give a check, hang the rook. That would be fun for the fans. Yeah, he might just want to check until he gets the king and the, the knight on the same file. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely the most instinctive move. And he's he must hovering. know he's close. Hopefully that's why he's Bro, taking his time. Bro, you got 40 seconds. Move <laughs> your damn piece. Yeah, he just played king. Of, did he? Oh, my God. He hung a fork. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, and, oh, no. And, and Frank just doesn't even. I mean, my Within God. seconds. Oh my God. You know what? He might promote. I oh, believe. Oh, he saw it. Did, and I can't tell if he just saw it. He certainly saw it. That's. He's melting and, like the Wicked Witch of the West. And, and Frank, he, he knows he can't say anything. Like no. He wants to say something. Connor's 20 seconds. This is insane. Connor okay. goes to attack the, the moving uh, piece, which loses okay. the fork. Yeah, loses the fork. He, he goes to the square as if there was still a fork. Oh, Frank's got to keep checking or else this is one of, you know, one of these is going to be a mate at some point. I mean, you're going to get mated somehow in the center of the board. Keep yeah, checking. Frank's shaking his head. He definitely realizes he missed it. I'm trying to find a way, like, Connor could accidentally walk himself. Ooh, He's shaking. Oh, my gosh. His hand I'm is shaking. Connor does not have a lot of time. Nope. 24 seconds is very stressful. And a good move. Oh, my goodness. And he, yeah, okay. King is safe now. Frank might guard his pawn by playing rook b5. And I'm really worried here. Connor's going to check this king into running this way. If actually Frank runs straight, he's going to get checkmated. So big moment here for Frank. <laughs> uh, Connor's very nervous. I've never seen him this nervous before. It's kind of fun. Yeah, rook b5. Now, there's a check now. Big moment here. King e4 is mating a few moves. And uh, it, oh, oh, he put it back. No, king nope. e4 played. And now, knight, where did he? He retreats. That's free now. But that's there's going to be a mate. He takes the free pawn. And, and now yeah, yep. rook, rook a4 is checkmate in two moves. Does, and Connor has 30 seconds to find it. And, and he he's does. found it. That is huge. <sighs> and he, he nods his head. And I'm pretty sure he whispered an expletive at his opponent, <laughs> who was a minor, by the way. It um, is a, it's a British expletive. Yeah. And he looks at his opponent oh, going... Oh, no. <laughs> wow. Damn. Nice yep. cherry on top. <laughs> There's actually only one move you yep. can make. Yep. It's the only move. I can't go boom. I can't go boom. I can't go you can't go boom. <laughs> there are no booms. He has to interpose with his rook. <laughs> or he could XQC it and run the clock out. <laughs> Wait. So I can't move king, but I'm not in checkmate, right? But I am. Oh. Oh. Now you're in checkmate. <laughs> there we go. There it is. That took me too long. <laughs> wow. Game two goes to Connor, nice. one to one. Close match. Yeah, and even though Frank just screwed the pooch from the start, you know, bad, probably bad lines from his coach, but he he made it competitive. He brought it down a time, and, and, and Connor was nervous, dude. He was sweating. He was. But with 20 seconds on the clock, he got it together. He got the win, and the good news is Frank lost that game on move five. Right? Yeah. So the good news is that next time he has the white pieces, there will be a game four. He's just got to do a little bit better than that. Which Frank will show up next. Mm. Well, we'll Find see out. right after the break for game three of this best of four. Nobody can win in the next game, but they'll have a huge lead. Yep. We'll see right after the break. See you in a second. All right. Don't go anywhere. See you later.
Oh, is that you again back here to watch more chess.com? Very fun, very cool. Thank you for coming here. Welcome to Pog Champs 5 Finals, the championship bracket matchup between C Dog VA and Frank is here. It's at one to one in Nemo's back, and I want your thoughts on what happened. Honestly, I feel bad for Frank. He blundered his rook or blundered the exchange, I guess, kind of early. And it yeah. felt like he was trying to fight back from that the entirety of the game. But unfortunately, Connor was just so solid and was able to get that win at the end. But he looked nervous. And yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Would you blame? Because at, at the end of the day, these are players. They do right. their own stuff. After the opening, it's, it's all up to them. But the opening is the thing that the coach has the most control over. Would you ever blame the coach if there was a mistake in the first six moves? I personally have blamed my coach if they didn't prep me well enough. Hmm. But since, you know, Levy is sitting right next to me and he is the coach for Frank, I probably shouldn't oh, say are? anything. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's embarrassing. You know. Oh, I didn't know this. <laughs> Andrea, you missed fault. your cue. Sorry. That's, uh, I, <laughs> I, will, uh, I will hold the L. I saw both the players in the hallway. Uh, and uh, they look confident. They look ready to go. They look kind of shell-shocked. I feel like they're coming out of a blood draw. Yeah. <laughs> they do seem, like, super nervous and pale. They're both yeah. extremely nervous. Like, Frank's mom is even watching. Like, it's... Was it's, she it, nervous? Yes, very oh, nervous. Very, and it's very. probably even harder for Connor to go against a young kid and have his mom here cheering <laughs> him on and see her nervous backstage. And the mom he wants to take on vacation to a country. I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just gets worse. Yeah. No, both sides are very nervous, which I, I think is very endearing, because I like that they're taking this seriously well, the prize fund determines you know frank's getting paid no matter what so it's just going to be the quality of the vacation or maybe the class of the ticket on the yeah. airplane that he takes look the maybe on, we go so. to stoke on trent maybe we go to paris we'll find out but first let's listen to frank's words before the match started and how he felt about his opponent okay uh so is that like a like a person that like they're the people yeah january January just started playing chess this year. Oh well, I'm I'm quite I'm quite devious with it. I'm aggressive sometimes and defensive sometimes. That like most PA players are probably. But I, I'd say I'm a little more aggressive because I push pieces out a lot. I've only played like four games over the board. Probably should do more. I'm actually going to have to think. I can't speak out my thoughts. So that's going to be difficult. I kind of speak before I think. So I say a word and then I'll think about it. And then that helps me think. But just thinking, not great for me. Uh, weaknesses, I blunder my pieces and they're just gone. So I can't use them anymore. So that's definitely a weakness. My strengths, I'm, I say I'm decent at end games. But when I'm on form, that end game is mine. The whole board is mine. Group stages, pretty easy, pretty easy. Uh, obviously, obviously opponents played well. Don't want to discredit them. Good opponents, good opponents. Uh, but I won two and then just completely lost the last one against Connor. The quarterfinals, quite a hard matchup. Very difficult matchup. I had to fight my way through that one. Went all the way to the tie breaks, but I won with seconds to spare. Seconds. And then on the semifinals, played XQC. He was obviously on a plane. Don't know why he was on a plane, but he was. And I won that one. Dude. Boom. XQC is losing on time with the plain Wi Fi. With the porn. Yeah. Okay, I'll give a check there for now. Oh, yes. This is what, this is what got me to the finals. I'll take back. All right, we're looking good in this position. Oh, I went on time! Yeah. Amazing. Oh, yes! yes! Absolutely amazing. Oh, yes! Well we done, won! Frank. Well done. You won that on, on time. And was very happy to win that one. And now. I'm gonna win the finals, hopefully. I, I, yeah, hopefully. Just to keep myself calm and composed, you know. Gotta not get let the fear set in. I gotta gotta look at that chessboard. Gotta feel calm, and I, that's just how it is. As long as I'm calm, I'll perform. That's what it is. We are back, and he's right. As long as he's calm and composed, he will win. And I think that was his game one performance, his game two performance. Perhaps a little overconfident, you know, and, and maybe a little too quick. And so hopefully this game three, he makes that adjustment. Uh, and we're jumping into it. Any predictions on this game? Couch, how we feeling, Botez brothers? I have mixed emotions now after that last game. But I feel like Frank is going to learn his lesson, take the opening a little slower, I'm sure. You know, with this coach here, there's great prep for the next game. 
I think Sea Dog Connor still the favorite here, but if Frank is a little bit more nervous, a little bit less confident, maybe it's going to be him playing at 1400 level again. Anything can happen. Uh, he also had a lot of success with the black pieces. He right, he had a really bad game with the white pieces. We see a handshake there. Let's see what what similarities we're going to see in the opening. Uh, same king's pawn. Let's get cooking. Okay. <laughs> Frank says, last time Connor moved the knight out. This time I think Connor's, oh, he's moving the other knight out. Okay. Mixing it up. Which is already potentially a bad sign because he might take the pawn and get to the exact same position, right? Because as long as you take in the center with white, it's the same exact thing. So in the last game, all that was different is that Connor took and played this move later. Uh, but he's already thinking, right? Which is, which means they haven't gotten any sneaky, like, bathroom prep, you know, no. in, in between no the games. No phone in the bathroom. Yep. I no think are they the allowed toilet. to look in between games? Yeah, I'm sure, but yeah, definitely. it's not. Yeah, I feel like it's not as serious as like the you know Champions Chess Tour where they're, and and he takes and he's once again <laughs> headed for a slightly worse exchange Carl Kahn position. Yeah, I, it's never fun, at least when I've played, when you lose that pawn in the center and they just lose their C file pawn. I feel like it always sucks. It makes the game harder. What about it is? Do you find hard to play against? Uh, I, f I find it hard to break open the center later on. Um, and get my pieces in places I like. And uh, it's the exact same thing. Like, Frank, even though he did the wrong thing in game one, which is blocking in the bishop, he just goes back to it because it worked. And Frank, you know, we got the knight out, and now he's going to also bring his knights out. And It's just a game of chicken. Who's going to back out from the copycat variation first? Yeah, Connor played this move last time, and Connor, uh, Frank played here and here, so... It is usually the player who lost the game before that mixes it up, so <laughs> I would think it would yet. be Connor. <laughs> yeah, this is bar for bar. Yep. Now, one of them could forget. <laughs> like, one of them could just go, oh, I want to go, you know, uh, and, and not even realize that they're repeating the same thing. What if this was the first game ever oh. that had the same exact result? This is way worse. Oh, my gosh. You forgot to bring out his he bishop. I'm surprised forgot. that Frank was the one who broke first. I, I'm not necessarily surprised. Like, I, again, I, I think Frank is still a little bit shaky in the opening. That's why you try to teach the openings, right? Last game when he had white, what happened was... He got hit with a move he hadn't seen that much in practice, so he just tried to play what he thought he was supposed to play, but you have to adapt to what's on the board. The good news is, uh, you know, you can't really be lost yet. Like, it's still the opening. And he can still put his knight on f5 and then take out the bishop, and he'll have to see it because he wants to castle. Yeah, he has to go here. There you and go. And then, you know, he's going to play this. Oh, not that would be really bad. But, uh, well, he, you know, he, he's going to go here, and then... And Connor might play this move and help Black develop by trading pieces. What did he play? Knight 2e5. Yeah, it's a big moment already. Frank has to play defense. Does he Does he realize that? Or is he just going to autopilot bishop here? Yeah, I like this for Connor, trying to put some extra pressure on Frank straight out of the opening, knowing that this has been his weakness so far. Now, At could... least he's slowing down, because last game when he made all those blunders in a row, it was because he was moving too quickly. Looks like he's trying to unpin his knight. Yeah, bishop here would be fine, because... That bishop's not really going to have much of a future. Uh, so Euro actually okay doing this trade. We'll see if Connor grabs it. Taking there would be worse, because that was not really the objective. You go here to try to secure the bishop. Yep, and if anything, this trade actually might favor Frank, because that knight in the center is a very strong piece, whereas that light squared bishop is a bad bishop. Uh, this morning, Frank and Virtual were setting this board up and, tra and, and just playing, and Virtual left his knight here. It got taken, and then it came back. Whoops. It came back to take the bishop, and then he was up a piece against virtual. So Connor could go here and go, I don't have to do anything, and then accidentally blunder. Uh, but we'll see. I think, whoa, 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 whoa. What is that move? That is real creative. It looks scary, but it has no threats. At all. It's not... And I guess if he moves his bishop from F8, off. he thinks he can kick yeah. the knight away and attack G7. Uh, Wasn't he supposed to go to H5? Frank could take this and lose. Yes, queen H5 threatens mate. It's still not a good move because simply pawn blocks. Or knight takes knight. I mean, that's the thing. Frank could lose this game right now by taking here and giving up this bishop. That would be utterly ridiculous, but it is a free pawn, and it does look, you know, enticing. And he took the right way. He took the right way, and now he's threatening to win the game. He's threatening to take the knight, which Connor already forgot about once. 
So Queen G4 was just not a Connor like move. He nope. has been so safe, so cautious. I don't know where this came from. Yeah, I think one thing that's also happening in the players is stamina. Like these guys have been here since early morning. Last game of the day, it's been several hours. They haven't gotten dinner yet. We just ate a little dinner. Yeah, a little we snack. were munching. <laughs> they didn't even so get any good. food. Did you yeah. guys have the pesto pasta? Oh, yeah. oh the pesto was so it's nice insane. and creamy. They it was great. I was so it hungry. On there. Yeah, so well, good. these guys, no food, haven't been fed, so I think... We refuse Connor's, to feed them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes the Unless competition he wins. Yeah. Only winner gets dinner. That's, for the, that's why they're hungry. So it, Connor... First of all, it's freezing in there, by the way. Hold up. Quebin. Can Connor... Oh, no. What was the question? I was going to say, can't Connor take the knight with his bishop? He can. And then take the other knight, because it'll be undefended, but well, that knight can go backwards. Well, Frank has to find the backwards knight move. The good, the good thing about this move for Frank is that you don't need to be a genius to figure out queen takes is the best move. But then Connor still is okay, because it's hard for Frank to develop the dark squared bishop with the pressure here. Position is already resignable at GM level, believe it or not. What? Yeah. It's, Stop. No, no, it's completely resignable, because black is a pawn up. Uh, black also has two center pawns, like you said. So black is just going to castle safely, uh, trade a few pieces, pressure here. Like, any GM would, I don't know, first of all, not find themselves here. But yeah, this is borderline resignable don't territory. Don't you all get bored of chess if it's like that? <laughs> Well, like that's, if it's that's, that's why we're classical. here. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're commentating. Yeah. Not the World Cup. Like, I feel you. Let's not forget the semifinals of the Chess World Cup starts tomorrow. And Levy, could here. you beat Magnus if uh, you had the white pieces here? The, the white pieces? Oh, sorry, the black pieces. Yeah, I was like, the white pieces, <laughs> probably not. Uh, it depends on the format. I mean, I would obviously, like, I would get nervous, and then I would do something stupid. But I would have an advantage for a very long time. It's really hard, because white can't do anything. Magnus, Shh. not Magnus. Like, white has no center pawns. Uh, well, now the big This moment. could be a huge yeah, blunder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This could be. This could be. This is it. Uh, he could take like this. He, it's a it's a 33% chance <laughs> Frank throws away probably <laughs> pod champs right here. I think he, he throws away. He's a wild card. We don't know. I think he's going to see it. Do we have an aerial shot? Uh, he is... Oh, he just hovered over his, his knight. Uh, yeah, he, he hovered over it. his knight. Oh, oh my God. Certainly he sees oh, it. Oh, huge move. And there it is. Wow. wow. You said he... I think he's gonna throw it away. That is the hate on this man. I'm not hating. I like Frank. He's a great guy. I just thought that that was a hard move to see. I didn't see it. I, yeah, you did. You you said it. You're like, oh, he could, you literally were like, oh, that doesn't work because there's this move. Nice try. Uh, I didn't see it for a while. Uh, rookie one. Now the advantage is getting bigger and bigger because the computer just wants the castle, but it's still losable territory for Black. You could move the bishop and lose this pawn. You could go here, allowing the knight to get active. I think at this level, computer's dumb under five points of advantage. Like, yeah. it's dumb in the sense that it's not that valuable. I think some coder has to, uh, ad like, adjust Stockfish to what ELO it's watching. Curve the oh, grade. Yeah. Curve the grade, Stockfish. Like, if Stockfish knew it was observing 900s right now, the eval would not be minus two. Advantage He's white. Well, yeah. then our job would just be replaced, guys. Oh, uh, true. <laughs> it can't talk. And then we get AI voices oh, for wait. Stockfish. <laughs> yeah. Give it a couple weeks. What is Frank doing? What? Oh, that's not even a bad move. Wow, night before. It's a crazy... That's like a... I wouldn't do this because his king is not castled and he's already developed that knight, but it's actually really hard to defend knight takes pawn. Like, have to go here, probably. Or move the queen back, but then Frank can finally get his bishop off of eight. Yeah. I don't know why the computer doesn't like this move. It's just, it's not in the top three, but I don't understand why. Well, because well, after the rook move, what, then what? It's over. GG. The black rook move? No, no, excuse me. That, that's E2. Rook E2. Yeah. It's just, it's just, oh. He brings the queen back. Now Now Frank's got to realize he could go here. Uh, I did not realize, why, why was rookie two so bad? Whatever, I don't know. Okay. I just look at the eval bar, just just like everybody else. <laughs> it's minus 1.6. Frank has been really, really good with black, and that came with white. <laughs> we'll forget about it. Oh, my God, this could go tiebreaker. I thought Frank takes it in game four, but now I'm not so sure after seeing that game with white, so he's going to... The thing is, again, Frank, when he was playing white, thinks, I got to do it this way, because that's what Levy said. I, I didn't say he had to lose a rook in, you know, eight or nine moves. That's not what I said. <laughs> I but like that you're taking care of your session. liability. Yeah. yeah, I was uh, not in the, you know, not in the agreement. It won't be in the book, all yeah, right? It will not be in the book. When's the book coming out? October 24th. Heck yeah. Uh, soon I will be contacting influencers to send them one. You want one? I'll take one. Yeah? Y'all want one? Well, you, you're pretty good at chess, but... Listen, I accepted the merch box. I don't box. know, Levy. <laughs> we might pick up a few things. <laughs> I I don't know about that, but it's uh it's definitely for for the Franks of the world. Actually, Franks are already at like the 80th percentile, probably. 
Here's that move. Here I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Frank's kind of a wild dynamite. He might just go crazy, push this pawn, try to continue attacking, or play solid, develop the bishop, finish his castling and his development. What do you think he's going to go well, for, I mean, Levy? Uh, oh, I thought he already put d4 in. He did, he did, but um, there's d3. I think Frank is going to go here, take, take with the knight, get pinned, and maybe lose. Um, I, I, <laughs> a lot of faith bro, coming from this guy. Oh, that's your guy. I, I, listen. But th this is actually what I'm worried about because that pin does look scary. I'm a commentator, right? I gotta be biased, but I gotta be unbiased. He just attacked the knight. His very next pawn yep. push attacks the queen. It'll be a moment of maturity if he doesn't and instead plays something like rook c8. Yep, and this is exactly what I was gonna say is the difference between the Eva Albar, the stockfish computer, and our lovely pog champs or pog champers because completely winning for black if you play practical and you develop but if you're a 900 you get distracted you push a couple bonds that eval bar isn't oh very accurate oh my god and he did it he played rook c8 wow that's a that's a huge moment and nice connor might go here and then frank has an attack on the queen and an anchor into the fork that that win, that's lights out you win an, a rook you get a pass pawn two squares from queening and that's game over. And and Connor is staring at a two to one deficit if he plays this move. I don't know what else he can play because the pawn's hanging, right? It's a very human move. Yeah, to push he has it. to realize he has to sacrifice the pawn. Yeah, the best move for for White is to play rook b one to lose the pawn without oh, that's a fork. So ugly. Without a fork, yeah. Chess can be painful. I think Connor is going to lose a lot of time on this one, and that might be... That's okay, though. Rather him take his time than throw on this move. And he does take his time, but then he gets into serious time pressure. And He's in Zug Zwang, guys. Yeah. Nice. We didn't get an N Passant. I was hoping that would be the downfall well, we of one okay, of them. Okay, so N Passant, please. Thank C4 you. right here, on Passant. Right, that oh, must be... And that's oh. it. Yeah, and, and I, I don't know if Frank can find D3 Knight C2. This is a very tough thing to find. He might go, my Knight's hanging, the pawn, take. Easy. I think if he finds d3, he'll find knight c2, so it's just well, yeah. if he finds d3, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just a matter of... Just gotta look for your forcing moves. Yeah, d3 is uh, the second most forcing move in the position, because taking the pawn is the most forcing move, and then this attacks the max that you can attack. Wait. Oh. He's thinking? He's touching Ooh! it? Oh my god! That's your guy! That is your guy! And yeah, that blue, blue X clam does not give this move enough credit. Damn, look at him like, nodding himself approvingly. <laughs> that is nuts. I love when Frank is proud of his own chess. Like earlier, he was just hyping himself watching his own reel. This is... It's great. This is just... I, I mean, it's I mean, it's over from the exaggerated standpoint. It's definitely not over because Black, Black still has to get castled. If he gets castled, he can actually win this game pretty easily. But Connor's realizing it's sinking in. Like, what the hell is going on when I'm playing white? That's why I taught... We, this is why we learned the Karo Khan. Frank did not play the Karo Khan until game one. Really? He played it, like, for a week, for, like, four days' practice. This is a, a, a new technique. Yeah, this wow. is a, a new opening. And, and it's, it's good. Uh, yeah, so, it's, but, you know, you see the variants when he played with white. Right. New tools exploded the, the wood shop. And, so, uh, what about Connor here? What are his best chances Rook to survive D1. this? No, Rook D1 would be an exotic way to get back rank checkmated. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Rook D1 would, would, would make it worse. Y'all have no vision like me. You don't understand the game. I, I really don't, though. That's the me and Tyler won. We're reinventing the sport. Uh, he retired. <laughs> he actually he played E-Rob right after the show really? match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did a rematch directly after, and then he started grinding games. That sounds like me and Andrea. Andrea always goes, double or nothing, <laughs> triple or nothing. Double or triple or nothing until you're back to even. It's yeah, genius. Yeah, exactly. I've and then she a, never pays out the that's triple why or nothing. she never lets me gamble. I've got a close friend who's <laughs> probably watching the show. Uh, shout out to the best chess coach in New York City, Alex Ostrovsky. So he, he is the master of trash talk despite losing 90% of the time. Like, we could be playing anything. And if he, he's lose five in a row, he's still talking shit like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. He's talking shit like it's out five. You got to keep the same energy, mm. you know? You can't just talk when you're up. You got to keep the energy. You know? It's you, a bad look if you don't. Yep. Everybody likes to talk when they're up. But, uh... Who said that? Luka Doncic? Goat? Yeah, we're speaking of changing energies, Frank started the last game very talkative. This game has been very silent. I think they're starting to feel the pressure. Uh, that's... A, 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 oh, oh, oh. You see, that's a, that was a really bad move. That's what, Connor didn't let go. He didn't let go. It's not touch piece... What is it called? It's touch not touch move. move. It's not touch move. It's drop move. It's not good for me. Yeah, and... <laughs> nice. That, that it's would, technically clock move, but close, Ludwig. Yeah. That would oh, walk into it. a giga fork. Uh, this is still a fork. It's not a giga fork. That would have been a giga fork. It was a nice I'm save just... on Connor's part. What can I say? I knew 
You were going to do that move? <laughs> I didn't time. I was, uh, yeah, I messed up pretty badly. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm joking, by the way. I didn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is so brutal because Frank is so innocent. He's not doing this maliciously. No, he like really doesn't not. realize how absolutely heinous this trash. Can I tell is you right my now. vision? Can I tell you my vision uh-huh. right now? Uh huh. Take it, it away. Is Bishop H6 for white. Yeah. If captures. Yep. 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 Fork. The fact, That's a nice try. Yeah, the fact that you even see that is Ooh, impressive. Ludwig I only see hope chess. sees the cheeses. Yeah, no, I mean, that's... Now, make no mistake, this move does nothing. No, no, because it also allows you to recapture the knight. Oh! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's why I'm the best, baby! I'm sorry, I'm not trying to discredit no, 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 no. My <laughs> vision is insane! That, now, again, it's minus seven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he it just is, needs to feel something, Levy. It is literally only a good move if he takes, and I think he's going to take it. No. Oh, my God. <gasps> oh, my God. Wait, he's no! going to... Bro! Look at Wait, me! No! Witness me, Levy! <laughs> Let's no. go, Carter! Let's go! Wait. I. Um, I does what? Frank Something even... Up. What? Why did he oh, take? Oh what? my god, Connor just. Wow! You guys don't understand. Chess is an easy <laughs> fucking game. I've been reinventing it <laughs> since Pog Champs won. Oh, shoot, I got moved. oh that, my god. That was one of the oh greatest goodness. calls of all time, and I, I can't believe he took. I, I am. This is insane. It's literally and now game he's over. He's gonna lose the knight as well. Yeah, because queen, queen takes. captures oh pawn. God. Oh my god, what it's happened? G. G on the greatest read of all time. That. That was insane. That is so sick. Mm. I like that just Frank asked no questions. Connor just put his bishop there. Yeah. That, why it's did what he... happens when you trust your opponent. Why did he do... That's so... I don't even know what to say. What's funny is what Frank said right after. I knew it was too good to be true. Yeah, he's not even upset. He's yeah. just like... <laughs> I fell for a classic whodunit. <laughs> he just made a move. With no threat. That was like, if you take the bishop, yeah. you're going to lose the queen. Whenever and a higher-rated opponent is giving you a very obvious free piece, ask yourself why. He didn't respect him enough. And Fr- Frank respected him too much, I feel like. I mean, I mean, maybe, yeah, that's what you were saying. You didn't respect the threat, but I, I don't know. Frank is like... And this game is, I mean, just about curtains. Yeah. Yes, yeah, C-Dog will finish this off. Because he, he's got a... Like a, a knight he can take it at the bottom. It could always be worse, is what Frank says. That is sweet, and it makes me sad that this is happening. <laughs> oh. Mate in Duke. Yeah, it, it's made very soon. Well, he's got a small escape, but... Wow. That was... Incredible. That was sick. Connor almost feels bad. Like, he apologized as he did it. I mean, it was grimy as fuck. It was like... I respect it. So you gotta do desperados. Is that what they're called? Yep. Desperado attack or attempt, right? It's just like a Hail Mary, basically. It, it's oh, doing damn. something you know is wrong oh, damn, for the slight <laughs> chance of winning when you're in a worse position. Which is a great strategy oh, from for a completely losing game. That's, that's, not called, <laughs> that's not called... That's not the Desperado. Yeah. Wait... Uh, that's probably like you're gonna lose a piece. Like for example, uh, the knight in the corner. Like he's gonna lose it, right? But if if there's a way to sacrifice it for a pawn, just like in spite on the way out. Oh, it's just like taking it. It's like a martyrdom. I don't know. I've seen it. I've seen it applied in different situations as well. I think I think it's just yeah. I mean, it's like a desperate move. Uh, but uh, that was. Chess linguistics. Let me get rid of that damn horse. I've been running right. Okay. Crazy. Um, yeah. Yep, I see you. Frank is not even, he's not even budging. Just does not realize what he lost. What I'm worried about, mm-hmm. oh God, because I, I, I want this to go to a tiebreaker. I like Frank. I just wanted the formality, you know. I just didn't want to risk it. I, I am worried about his dies. opening on the fourth game. Because this no. went exactly like you called it, Levy. Um, he is not really, he being Connor, good with the white pieces. His opening's pretty yeah. flawed. Oh, oh that's... Okay. Now, that's a way to get that yourself cool. mated. Almost. Um, uh, just Everything just is falling apart. Can move to right. yeah. yeah, not even keeping the rook on the board's a bit tough, because there was a back rank prayer. Um... 
here. That's, that's a place. There's only one legal that's move. Legal. Are looking for the uh, the battery. Unfortunately, a bishop cannot defeat a queen and a rook. Queen g8, right? Yep. Yep. And now Frank's Good gonna find. move his king. <laughs> what and do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Come on. There's a way. There's always a way. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh, pawns on the right. So optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> also, just <laughs> saying your plan <laughs> loudly. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps these <laughs> pawns on the right side will work. <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll just take backwards. That would be that would be kind of nice. He'd still be losing probably. Oh. Hmm. He doesn't give up, at least. No. His tenacity is one of his most admirable traits. King f6, queen g7 is mate. Checkmate. Check yep. 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 Oh, it's a checkmate. Oh, wow. 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 Oh, that was just bad. I knew I mean, the bishop move. Was, I wasn't thinking. It was a huge debate. Uh, I'm really shocked you went for it. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have. We are I mean, all I shocked. Completely <laughs> outplayed me in the start. I was, I, I did not see that at all. I was not looking. That was, I mean, that was a good game up until that point. <laughs> that was, and then you missed the rook, and then, yeah. oh my god, dude, give me a heart attack. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. <laughs> you, you won. Yeah, dude, I mean, you're playing great, though. Don't, like, don't. Nice camaraderie between the two. And Connor is not uh, selling it short. He was completely losing the entire game. His opening is horse shit with white. <laughs> uh, I think Frank, Frank's opening is just really good with black. I think that's what it is. Perhaps. Perhaps a mixture of both. Uh, but one Hail Mary Bishop move that only... GM, savants yeah. of the game yeah, would yeah, find, yeah. you know, yeah. the, the mm -hmm. Fishers, the, the Carlsons of the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was, he was able to make it happen. That exciting. Was, that was exciting. Yeah. I uh, can't believe you shocking. literally just predicted Bishop to H6. Yeah, that where is... were you during Cutie's game? Why weren't you working your magic? I know. Because I'm in this chair for a reason. You know what it is? <laughs> All right, this, is this is why I'm not playing. Everyone's, it was why don't you play in Pog Champs? It's like, come on, I can't. It'd be, it'd be, a, it'd be a shit show. It'd, no. be, it'd be over in seconds. <laughs> Frank, back against the wall. Got a win with the white pieces. Wasn't looking too sharp in game two. Hopefully he does something a little different. Yeah, maybe we'll get in his ear for a second. Give I, him some advice. I, after after bishop two h six, I don't know. How, I don't know. Getting his <laughs> ear will will help, but he's got to turn it around. We'll see. Any believers in chat for Frank? We'll see you right after the break for our final perhaps game of Pog Champs. We'll see.
let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back for the final time to Pog Champs Five. We have our. Uh, well, actually, no. There could be one. We're gonna yeah, yeah. This. What? No, what no, no. Is, sorry, this is excuse crazy, me. I'm, no, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. We do oh. not take a break in between tiebreaker. Apologies. If it's a tiebreaker, we go straight to it. So I didn't lie. You didn't lie. It's not. I saw somebody in chat. I was looking at chat because I was feeling myself. I made it the best call I'll ever make till I die. Yeah. And someone goes, "Game's obviously scripted. No way at Ludwig would call the bishop move." I'm just good. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to. Or I have you're a proposition. Bad, if you know, you're feeling very confident, Ludwig. Yeah. I think we all take side bets. A hundred subs on the line. On who wins this one? Yep. Can I pick the side? No, Andrea. This is why I don't let you this gamble. This is a great bet. Wait, wait, this is a great bet. Mean? Let her take this bet. I would like to m make this bet, and I will take Connor Dog voice no. actor. Wait, let me consult with my um, <laughs> counsel. I'll let you consult for a You process. don't take the weaker player when he's down one point for even I odds. I believe in him. He's, also, he's, down, he's down three points. If you're taking him, you should ask for 500 subs. They've played five games. Okay, never mind. Jesus! <laughs> what a cutthroat <laughs> businesswoman. Yeah, yeah, DraftKings has the uh, live odds at <laughs> plus 4,000 for Frank. You crush Blitz, I think. Connor's just Connor's, uh, you know, he's uh, he's 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 sweetening him up a little bit. He is. He's kind of he's kind of being nice, you know. But I think he's I think he's feeling more and more confident. I think having the lead now. Oh yeah, for sure. Is big because not only does Connor win if he wins this game, he wins if he draws this game. Yep. Is he complaining that he's a win away from twenty thousand dollars? Apparently, yeah. He's also a free flight. Yeah. Make him pay for it. Yeah. I might. <laughs> he went business class, that son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. but who wouldn't, you know? He Frank? did come from Japan. <laughs> he didn't ask. Uh, exactly. He could have oh, asked. Wow. He could have. But God bless Frank. Thank you so much. <laughs> Frank's mom listening. Taking yeah, some she's, she's, she's oh, going to have about some about requests yes. after this. <laughs> yes. Oh, here we go. Final game, maybe, potentially. Now, potentially as, final game. Yeah, as the coach, I am I am petrified. Talk us through the opening, because the opening was the biggest fail point last time, <laughs> yeah. is the Alapin Sicilian. Now, one of two things could happen, right? Frank, well, that's my thing. That's what I do. That's my thing. Frank could play the Alapin again and try to improve. Right, he could get to the same spot, so he's doing that. <laughs> That's what Connor tried to do, but failed at. Well, well, all of this happened. Like right. Frank lost the pawn and then lost the rook. Uh, at some point, Frank's got to go. Maybe I shouldn't lose the pawn, and if he somehow loses the pawn again, which would be just—I don't even have a word for it. Uh, then he has to not lose the rook. So he's probably going to play d4, which is what did he play? <laughs> <laughs> he's improvising right? Dude. He's protecting the C2 square levy How can you not see I know I'm the great predictor he's Given a thousand predicting years predicting a sneaky mate on C7 I would I'm never have thought of that move <laughs> With a <laughs> I don't know I what that move is I, I don't know why he did that That was not in the preparations But if he either. plays knight C Oh actually he has to defend his E4 pawn first And, and, and oh. he's lost it He lost a pawn Again. Because Knight can take on E4. Yes. And Connor didn't do that. 
But I, I think I, Connor will get there. I, I am. Uh, I'm very stuck right now between coach and commentator, and I am speechless as a coach. But I have to keep talking because that's what I'm paid to do. Um, now, okay, there's still, for example, d5, knight e5, queen to d4 is a fork, <laughs> and white is winning because you fork the knights. Uh, I don't. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I would assume Connor would go to b4. That's same fork. Wait a second, but oh. what about queen a5 check after? Then you have to find b4, oh, which... Then you take, I, oh, oh, you're right. I, I almost both has gambited to take the knight on no, a3. No, no, then, you know... <laughs> there's a bish. There's a lot of things that have to happen for this to go right. But there's there's and something, you know? Hope is good. Frank, if anything, is our most optimistic competitor. Well, to Frank's credit, after losing the rook last game in the same sort of opening he uh he fought val valiantly and uh and brought it back a bit in terms of time crunch he's not nearly as down now as he was it's not yeah. as bad yeah and now now this is a freestyle game um this is just you know every man for himself there's a pawn on f3 for some reason he's down a pawn and he's got a knight on the edge of the board he might end up having two knights on the edge of the board because now he took away one of the squares his knight usually develops He's inventing his own opening. Yeah, he, the he's, Frank. He's got to go here. And you know here. what they say about the knight on the rim? Yep. I do. Ain't good. Ain't good. Knight on the rim is dog water. That's <laughs> what they say. Knight on the rim is dim. We got to put the rhyme in. Yeah. Yeah. Connor is at 10.01 on the clock. The live odds are plus 7,000. For Frank, <laughs> we could still make some bets potentially. Place your bets, everybody. Uh, Andrea had a big bet she wanted to place. I don't know. Yeah, what Andrea, yeah. you want to do that bet still? Uh, you know, he he's a dynamite. You mm -hmm. never know what to expect, but I I didn't do my math right. Well, Connor has made as many egregious blunders as Frank this series, so I wouldn't put it past him to lose this tiny lead. Now e6 is great, just getting the bishop out. Also, he can take damage this pawns. Get in here with the queen. I think he will do that. Yeah, he has to punish those open dark squares around the king. Oh. And Frank just continues making holes around the king. Yeah. Very dangerous stuff going on here. I yeah. mean, I kind of like that he can now put his knight on f3 at least, so he's almost fixing one of his worst moves. But Connor's going to do that exact bishop move you talked about. He's either going to... Yeah, and he takes and... Uh, well, does he see queen take? The queen to a5, right? That's the big question. That's why it's good. I don't know why Frank is like. This is not the moment to uh, to to act. To show, like you don't really. I think not, maybe this is the moment where he realizes his position is bad. Uh, if this is the moment, that's I, a problem. I think he was laughing at himself, not his opponent. Oh, Queen instantly yeah. sees it. Wow, that's great move. And uh, there there is still some very limited hope here if he moves his king or something, but. Why is moving the king best? I just think if you trade the queens, it's it's going to get hopeless pretty fast. I was thinking bishop back one. Yeah, bishop bishop back is okay. But then, you know, you, you disconnect this. I mm. also think if queen d2, Connor might just take the a3 pawn, and then he can continue mm. developing. Yeah, and then he's going to come in here. and. Yeah, those knights yeah, baby have bishop d3. I played against Connor, and the one thing I kept making him do is stack pawns, and he got so mad at that <laughs> that I think the moment he saw there was an opportunity to do, to do that to Frank... He bit it. I don't think the move knight to a3 has literally ever been played on the third move of this game. I think Frank might have just developed a, a novelty, as the chess professionals it's say. It's going to go in the opening book now. What it's can I be, say? It's going to be the Frank. Frank, Tyler, and I, we reinvent this game from the ground up. It'll be more popular than ever. What about Connor? Eh, he's playing, like, <laughs> classical style. It's lame. Okay. We won't add him to our, to our repertoire. Did he move the king? Oh, he moved the queen, right? Then. Makes sense. Connor takes pawn, surely. He might just leave it there as, like, a permanent splinter in the white position. It does feel like two pawns on the A-file are terrible, and there's no reason to take them. They are absolutely terrible. Yep, much rather take the queen and take the pawn in the center. The D4 pawn's way stronger than the A3 one. Unless yes. he takes with the king. Yes, if he takes with the king, that would be, that would be to his benefit. Connor... Got a free pawn right there. He's thinking about it. If he doesn't take the pawn, I think he's leveled up in a way that I, I have never. He's achieving GM. Wow. Trades the oh, queen. Taking the pawn was the best move, right? Taking the queen. I mean, Frank now has to take with the king. Frank might just think, like, I, I can't take with the king because then I can't castle. But 
superseding things matter, right? Like, he, you can't lose another center pawn. Right. And uh, well, to his credit, he was very comfortable moving his king out in earlier games. Yeah, so. I have a feeling he's going to walk his king up to d3. Your prediction is the king on d3? Yep. I think he's going to go king takes, knight check, king d3. Yeah, that seems But pretty... that's not bad for black, because then you have d5. Well, it's, it's, it's definitely not bad. It, it wasn't bad for black after the third move that white made. <laughs> yeah. What's it's bad for black, black is along. three minutes of advantage. But if this yeah. was king of the hill, it'd be a different story for Frank. But this is not something you need to spend time on. I mean, is Frank really going to lose this pawn and get the same fork on the board? He seems like he's taking with the king. There he goes. There it is. He's not, he's not shy. He'll use that king. Get the king to work. This is the first game we've seen Frank have such a time disadvantage, too. He's down three whole minutes already. Within yep. ten moves, too. Yeah. yeah. It's um, hard to come back from. Connor. Oh, looks like Connor's giving a check, which is, yeah, that's hard to. It's Andrea I predicted Wizard. it. It's Andrea Wizard, D3. Yeah. I'm learning from the best, Ludwig. I do what I can, you know. D three uh, seems crazy though, because you just he would just play like pawn f five, right, or yeah, pawn or, or d five. Yep, yeah. solidify that knight in the center. And and now you really regret. I ah, I'm not a wizard. That's not the best this move because because of this. Um, and now this pawn actually really matters because it covers the b four square, so the knight can't get. I in. would like to see some sneaky b six. Oh my goodness! There we go. Now we're playing. Yeah. This is a nice tricky move. Although it doesn't really threaten anything scary because he won't lose the bishop, but it's a nice move for him to develop. Yep. It's a nice threat. Knight f3 is fine. Now bishop oh. a6 is just a trade. I mean, it's just a trade of pieces, but it's still... I don't know why I got excited. I just... Okay, this is why I got excited. That light squared bishop had literally nowhere to go, and it was just kind of a waste of a piece, but now he's bringing it in. Well, he's trading it for another piece that hasn't moved, but he is developing. And he does think he's played it. Uh, the good news for Frank is there is no way to blunder uh, the uh, the bishop. You could go here, and the rook is defending. Uh, it's actually kind of easy to make an illegal move. Because you forget the knight is there. But there will be no penalties for that. Yeah. Because yeah. we are pub champs. No penalties at pub. We don't believe in that. We should have a creative penalty. Yeah, like next time we should pillow yeah, you slap eat someone. The stinks. You eat the one hot chip. Yeah. Just, just keep a hot chip on the table next to the At players. all times. <laughs> to, just to move. let them know. Yeah. What was that challenge? Was it the hot chip challenge? Yeah. You have to say it was a beautiful bishop move, but kind of an anticlimactic line because you just trade two dead bishops. But Connor is up, so he wants to trade. He's up what right now? A pawn? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Just one, right? But just he's got one, those double pawns. Like two. Exactly. Those like two. Those double pawns technically count as less... But again, a pawn at 1,000 elo is no biggie. Anything can happen here. Take with the rook, yeah? <laughs> take with the rook and then do that two-move king. Yeah, he could, he could take with the rook or take with the king because the rook wouldn't want to be on f1. and probably wants a different square. Yeah, regardless, he'll have to bring the king to the second rank just to free his pieces, so it's going to happen mm. anyways. And that knight sucks. Yeah, Connor should go here and move the knight out. If, if those are his next two moves, maybe with the exception of also castling, He's in good position to win this endgame. But it, it really is only a pawn. And he does castle, and now Frank has to go here. Like, this is where the battle is going to happen. Or not. Uh, they, 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 they could... That's a, I'm not trying to click anything there. Um, yeah, I feel like when teaching beginners middle games, rooks to open file... Oh. Ooh. One off. Close. Yeah, that there's nothing... It's a closed file. There are two pawns. This is not where we want to put nope. the rooks. Well, here's what I'm thinking, and this might be what Frank is thinking. Oh, d5? You go to... No, you don't nope. do d5. You go knight to d2. You trade out, take with your bishop, uh, or I guess now take with your rook, so that the uh, you, you can't lose your pawn to the to the knight on c6. Because if you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there we go. There, some of those lines are right. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally following. That was um, a good one. The, old, the other problem with moving the, 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 the like, he, Frank, Frank's going to go here. No, he's going to move his knight. He wants to get rid of that knight. That knight's annoying him, so he's going to offer the trade. He might also go here. Uh, you don't know oh, Frank like I do. Oh, 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 there it is. Oh, my God. You know Frank so much better than me. <laughs> uh, this fork looks good for black, but then that pawn takes knight, and then you get the second knight here, and that could be game on. Uh, but Connor... I didn't, even know, I didn't even know knights could go backwards. They patched that? <laughs> D6, look at this. But now, now you rotate out this way or there. Oh, God. He's just... Now those knights are really living. Wow. This very well could be... 
the last game of this tournament. Uh, everything is under fire. Connor went to the right file. Frank's also down three minutes. Frank's down three minutes. He's probably hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got to eat like four pieces of pasta in the last break. He, he's eaten none. Hey, Connor's probably hungry too. And I think... But he's eating. Whoa. That's... Whoa. The, the bishop just dies. And yeah. I mean, and he can, he can even take the knight first. Yeah, then it he'll doesn't yeah. even matter what he takes. He's taken something. Yeah, and he, he has taken. All right, knight takes knight. Knight takes knight. So it's like what? A knight and a bishop? Or excuse me, two knights for a bishop and a rook? Where Where is the bishop? He just lost it, right? No. Oh, you mean at the end? At yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, so he's going to... The end result is going to be that black is up a rook for a knight. Yeah. So I was like, man, I don't see a bishop on the board. It's been a long day. Yeah, now, by the way, Connor doesn't have to take anything. The fork exists whether you take or not. Yeah, he could just play rook c2 and get real annoying. Yeah, rook c2 is a scumbag move. And then and knight then you're g2 was made. Me. Oh my god. <laughs> no! Oh, oh so my close. god. Y'all have eyeballs that I will never have. Uh, he's. He left. That's so disrespectful. Yeah, this is a nice move, too. The fork Can't remains. Complain. You don't have to take that as... Yep. Connor's feeling himself. Yeah, he is. So, Ludwig, you never told us who was winning the games between you and Connor last night. Was it Connor? We went uh, one and a half to a half, and I, uh, and I, t I took the last one. So, you know, everyone, everyone says, why didn't you keep competing bog champs? Because the people that I handpicked for Pog Champs, <laughs> I all picked with that, uh, people that were worse than me. <laughs> uh, which I think made for a good show this year. Uh, a lot of improvement. I'm, I'm really worried Connor might go to the second rank. Frank will move his knight, and then knight takes g2 is literally checkmate. That'd be so swag. That would be. It and would be a beautiful ending. Why would he move his knight, though? You can't move... M oh, my goodness. I keep right-clicking. Right uh, you can't move much else. That's the, uh, that's the problem. Sure. He could go here, too. I assume he'll go... Hmm. We'll see, I guess. Oh, there's the Connor thinking noise. Up up a game, three minutes, and <laughs> basically a rook of advantage. Mm. But I like he it. He breaks character. He always takes it seriously until the end. Yep. I mean, the dude brought a fucking Solaro Italian suit against a 17-year-old. <laughs> I respect it. Okay. Is, that a, is that a nice suit? Yeah, it's a, a suit every Italian boy must own. Oh, I see. Is he? A, he he's not Italian, though. No, but he went to a vacation, so <laughs> close. I went I went to Italy recently. Am I Italian? On your way. I'll right. give you that. All right. Arrivederci. A bit more pesto pa pasta on your there. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. I got like six pieces down there. I'll Eat them on the uh, <laughs> well, the sh show might be over after this, but hopefully not. Hopefully, we get a tie break. So, oh wow, see, see, dog shaking, yeah. so nervous. I want to see rook c2, it just would be such a nice move down to the second. Oh yeah. my gosh, wow. let's wow. do it. If Frank moves the knight, knight takes pawn is checkmate. What a sick checkmate that would be for the finals of pog champs and knight mate. Frank's got three and a half minutes to figure out what to do here. It's not easy. Connor's hair looks like how they carve Greek marble statues. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep, or, or Italian ones. Mm. You know, in the uh, Vatican, they got the... You know, Italy's younger than America as a country. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, Italy didn't exist. That's why every, every region and now, big city has its own minutes. dialect and its own oh, culture and... Yeah, they can all tell the differences. We can't. We're just like, it's Italy. Does he resign? Yeah? Feeling good? I feel pretty good. You feel good, big man? You feel like a strong guy? Oh, no, it's good. That's what I want to hear. Is it really what you want to hear? Dude, Frank is so sick. He's needling Connor while getting crushed. This is good. Does Frank know it's his move? Certainly. Want a game, huh? You want a game? <laughs> Do you want a game, says Frank, potentially moments away from blundering checkmate. you got to appreciate this confidence. I hope he, he doesn't move that night. He needs to play something like Rook F3. Well, so I'm move the night. You get him one. Because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, gosh, two minutes on the clock. He sees the oh, clock. Definitely he only talks for another two minutes. 
I would take the two minutes to give uh, Connor a stern talking to yeah, and then resign. At least make him <laughs> suffer while he mates you. How, how well, dare you? There you go. All right, now Connor's got to remember the, what the plan was before the needling began. He's got to take the only other rook he is now eligible to capture. I don't really know what he's thinking about, but I suppose that's what he does. He thinks when thinking is not required. Yep. It's time for him to start cleaning up. Take the rook, take the pawn. Ask him the, the knight's story. pinned, bring the other rook. And he does have to take the rook now because the fork is not there anymore. Yeah, that's... So I'm curious why he's thinking so long, but... Frank's needling could have paid off. <laughs> Connor's maybe Watch deciding... Watch this be the changing point in the game. I, I, that would be really impressive. <laughs> This is more impressive if Sea Dog does not win than if Frank wins. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very bad position. Yeah, what's for the White? opposite of a of a Hail Mary here? Of the opposite of his be bishop. Oh, praise praise Jesus. Yeah. I, yeah, or whatever he believes in, you know. Sure. Not that, yeah. This is a tough moment. Silence in the playing hall. Both players slowly realizing their fate. It's a rare moment. This, this is a... We have never seen Frank not speak for this long. This no, is, but he cannot he's gonna stay break still. Soon, he's Levy. definitely high he's energy. He's cooking something up. He's going to say some crazy... He's going to look at Sea Dog and be like, you smell good. I oh, hope so. Oh, Connor didn't... <gasps> what? He didn't take the rook. Frank, Frank looks confused, too. So where do you move? B1, A1. B1. I guess that's it, right? Yeah, you B1. got it. You got it. Uh, if, if Frank goes so. here, he really hates rooks. Oh. I mean... Yeah. I mean, you might think that he should defend his pawn. That is true. That is true. It, th yeah. That would be logical from his point of view. And, and Connor, there's two things Connor could still do here. Get mated, right? Get mated. Um, or win this pawn. Low key. He wins that pawn, Frank. All of a sudden. Kind of cooking. And he's played rook B1. Wow. Which is not the best move, because now, as Alexandra was pointing out, this pawn is not protected, so just simply going here is nice. But there, there's ways you... I mean, there's ways to lose, you know? Connor might yeah, go for pawns. a check. Yeah, he could go check, which is actually not good. King gets out, everybody gets out. And then, and, you know, that that's not an arrow that's legal, but, you know, we get the rook on the C-file, maybe. I think if he checks... But it almost looks like he's preparing for a check. Yeah, yeah. He's, not, he's not taking the pawn. I think he's going to check, and I think Frank's going to take. Yep. Yeah, going in an endgame only up a pawn versus a rook and a knight looks very drawish, but I don't know which player is stronger in the endgame. Well, Connor with double the time for sure. Also, yeah, I mean, he, he's the favorite in, in, in all the phases of the game, I think, but just slightly. But that's the worst type of opponent, right? Like, imagine you play somebody who's slightly better than you at every phase. That's yeah, why game true. one was so impressive, because Frank fought for so long, and then even then, Cedar could have won the game on, in one move. And uh, we wouldn't even be commentating this game right now. So that goes to show you how close it's been. But Sea Dog's just been a little bit more accurate. Uh, but here he is tanking again. And frustrating. like he shouldn't be frustrated at all. I mean, he is completely winning. It, it is not I even. Mean, I think he's frustrated because he realized he can't take a, a win in exchange yeah, anymore. Yeah, he missed yeah. that rook. And now he's hovering and he's going. Frank is break breaking the stoic man. Knight. I mean, it's really frustrating when you realize you made a mistake. It can definitely shake you. Knight c4 is, is, is a move. He's making, like, the most passive moves possible. Uh, it's very confusing. No, yeah, he's going back, but knight c4 is very confrontational because the knights see each other, and if Frank moves his knight, rook takes rook. Well, that's fine, right? Knight it's takes fine. knight, king takes... And yeah, he's going to trade everything trading. in that case. Yeah, and then, and then there's this, and then Frank's king gets out. And like I said, if Connor starts going for these pawns... And not that one. All right, the trades are coming. Yep. Whoa, his clock just jumped. Wait, they don't have 30 Sorry. second increments. Damn. Okay, no, no, no. It, was a, it glitched. Okay. It was a glitch. He has to move faster, though. Yeah, and <laughs> this oh, is a. Oh, that's not great because now his king is yeah, trapped so, behind that uh, line of fire. So oh, he just set himself up. Worst nightmare scenario for rook Frank. Rook D1, Rook C1, back rook. Yeah. Uh, and that's oh, great. Okay. That's great. And, and rook a2 would be a huge mo and, <gasps> and that's... Rook c1. That's the best move. Rook c1 is... is oh. Oh. Okay, Connor's definitely no. stronger in the end game. Very oh, principled player. My goodness. Wow. That was a very nice oh. rook move. Frank just got an apartment for his rook that has, like, no, <laughs> no win windows. It's just all... He's living in New York. Rent's expensive, okay? 
Yeah, and it's not. It's even expensive with no windows. It's <laughs> legally not even a bedroom. Connor could just renting. slowly bring up his king. He doesn't have to do anything. Literally, uh, if Connor yeah, plays H six, he's nice. the Pog Champs champion. Like the, if he just doesn't get made it, um, and he won't. I think. There That's you go. Same idea. And and now rookie. Rook, this guarantees a rook trade, by the way. Uh, rotating the rook, his hand is shaking. And yeah, and. Uh, Oh, his this rook is can over. go all the way to the other side. Yep. <laughs> Capture the piece. Yeah, this is, and, and that's <laughs> likely it. The, They're giggling at each other. They're giggling, but... Well, Frank's giggling because it's 12K regardless. It wasn't a winner-takes-all situation, and, and, oh, no. and that's just it. Sorry, that's it. it. Oh, oh, my cool. goodness. A yeah, great find from Connor to not take the pawn as well. And <laughs> even a stalemate just wins him pop champs. I still Frank, hope he the gets king the stalemate. of playing on until... The last moment. I want to get the prediction correct, but it has to be a stalemate. It does have to be a stalemate, which, again, would still make Connor the champion. Yes. Yes. Uh, I don't know of any potential wins for Frank here. No. Nope. Yeah, me, me neither. The pawns cannot break through the other pawns. <laughs> you can take them all. <laughs> <laughs> you can take them all. <laughs> Wait, okay, good. Frank oh, is okay, maybe trying for stalemate. <laughs> Frank, if he's going to lose, he's going to lose with the most points possible. Uh, okay, that's... I can make two points. <laughs> See, Connor is finally smiling a little. Because he knows. Yeah. His fate is all but done. I <laughs> mean... <laughs> Oh, that would have been nice. Uh, he can try bringing his king into h8 and hoping for the best. There you go. Uh, well, you have that little back row yourself. Yeah, I like it. Comfy. <laughs> 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 Got to not blunder. Oh, draw. Yeah, that's... Wait, no, draw my win, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just a win. I just go out with dignity if you draw, so... <laughs> 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 yeah, Frank calls it like we all see it. Um, Is he gonna accept the draw? To draw? <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of want to win this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not resigning. Uh, I don't want you to. I don't want you to. I just wanna. I wanna make sure I can get this without choking my entire. He's so competitive. <laughs> Game of dignity. <laughs> right no, you can't. You can't make a draw here. No. I'll keep it a stack. It would be embarrassing yeah. if Connor drew after doing this. Okay. Oh, it's made. What are you doing here? What are you doing? Oh, here? it's <laughs> made on the board. Wait, wait, wait. You said made yourself. Did I? Uh, I think so, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. On the board. I like the yeah, official yeah, in the back. Is that Michael? Yeah, that's me. That was a great game. Yeah, yeah man. That was, yeah, you you wow. I'm sweating in so many of those games, dude. Yeah, Congrats to Sea Dog. Oh, my God. And there it is, our Pog Damn. Champs 5 champion. Sea <laughs> Dog <laughs> VA <laughs> takes down <laughs> Frank. Three games to yeah. one. All right, well, I uh, and that was, that was, I think, all off the momentum of game three. Yeah, definitely game three. Game two was an equalizer. Game three was right back to where we started in game one. And Bishop to H6, the call of the gods. I call it like a season. Yeah. That was almost like zero adaptation because they were both so incredibly weak at their individual like openings. Uh, when they had white. When they had white. Yeah. They're just bad at white. I don't know. Yeah, that Which was... Which is surprising. It's usually the opposite. Yeah. But they were both rough starting out, and uh, that was a that was a massive, massive turnaround, because if he won game three, Frank, we would have been sitting here talking about... I don't even know who would have white in a tie break. It would be the higher accuracy. Yeah, but... higher cap score. <laughs> Probably Connor. But also, I mean, Connor had an incredible performance throughout Pog Champs. He beat... Frank 2-0 in the previous bracket. So I think he was the most deserving. Yeah, I, I, I'm still, you know, Frank Nation mourns today because Frank had insane improvements. But yeah, both our players are walking on set right now. Come have a seat. Hey, guys. Guys. Congratulations. Congrats. Connor, I would like to present you with the uh, trophy, oh, trophy for Pog Champs 5. And there it is. It is our first ever. He didn't wear a physical suit for trophy. Nothing. Will this go through 
carry on luggage? Uh, it will, but you will have to claim it as a sex item, I think. Yeah, um, I think they're going to crack it open. This <laughs> looks like you would store something. Yeah, there, it, really, right? it really does. It's, oh, it's, just it's a trash, chest trophy. I do not deal drugs. <laughs> I'll go to the uh, There's a video of them making it. It's actually insane. It, they like, okay. hand wood carved in. The video. It was like one piece. It's a really yeah. beautiful piece. I can't believe I won. What the fuck? <laughs> I can't either because Frank deserved the win game three. Out of his mind. Frank, oh you played God. so well, dude. <laughs> Thanks. How do you feel? Um, feel good. <laughs> good? Uh, I think your indomitable spirit captured the hearts of many. Your refusal to ever quit, even in the worst of circumstances, and your positivity. Uh, it was a pleasure to watch you play. Uh, are you happy you made it this far? Yeah, I'm chilling. Yeah? yeah. You still get 12000 Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm that's still a to... holiday. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe Tonight, we just go to Stoke on Trent star, and save some money. Holiday, Stoke on Trent. That's a good holiday place. I love Stoke. In England? Yeah. He went to Stoke on Trent. It was a mistake. 12 yeah. grand. It was <laughs> on Stoke on Trent. 12 grand in Stoke on Trent goes like a five, long five way. Pounds. It goes a long way. It's like a horse carriage from London. <laughs> 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 yeah. It was very expensive. <laughs> uh, well, I guess let's talk about the most pivotal game because you both. I think we can say it. We're pretty bad with white. Yeah, yeah. I think we were both terrible at white. I think that's fair. Oh, yes. And why do you think that is? I just, I don't know. I just didn't want to be better on white. It just kind of feels weird. Yeah. Know? I just wanted to make it equal. Oh, that's sure. <laughs> yeah, that's your logic? I don't know. You I want to make it equal. White. What do you want from me? I don't know. <laughs> what about you, Frank? Oh, I just... I just didn't, I just I don't know. I just played bad. Was it a bit of nerves? Because your 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 play when you were playing with black was phenomenal. I mean, it was like it was really tight. Outside of the one bait move, which I guess we have to talk about, that your yolo. Hail Mary. That was a hail mary. Now, do you know? While you were doing it live, I called it out. Well, you know, in, in over there, we could hear you guys screaming. No. Oh. So when I played the move, I, I heard Gotham go. Ah! Really? And that yeah, didn't I was like, give, Don't it, give away, it away. Frank. Wait. <laughs> And that didn't rattle you? You weren't like, oh, this I is terrible it. for me. Well, I just thought, um, oh, they're screaming. <laughs> I, I was like, what are you doing? Don't fucking scream. Oh, you gotta tell wow. I am going to scream. How is it not soundproof? Oh, my God. I didn't know you were soundproof. No, I just think the, the, he used to he summon the same energy you say whenever a rook is sacrificed. I think that would have gone through but any But you, you weren't here because proof. he was going, you know, how about this play, bishop here? And then we were like, that's actually but a really creative idea. you part, right? I, but, I mean, I was a Hail Mary because I was, I was done, sir. I was, I was rib yeah. in that match. You were getting done. destroyed that match. <laughs> Awful. It was, I, yeah, I flashed Frank, did you sense that you were winning game three? Yep. And then I saw that bishop, and then it was... <laughs> but why did you take it? <laughs> that was uh, the thing. You it, Like, he didn't have a threat, so you just thought he was just giving you a bishop because he's trash. Don't let trash. coach really harass you right now, Frank. Nice. I'm just, it wasn't listen. a mind game. I was hoping he thought that I was, like, resigning. And I was like, <laughs> just take it. Definitely no baits here. Why yeah. didn't you act it a little bit? Like, yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, a little he was bit like, of drama. Was like, mm -hmm. You <laughs> asked him. <laughs> you did. Yeah. You, did. <laughs> you even asked him and you still yeah, you took did, it. You did ask, is this, for, oh, is this a bait or is it for free? I was like, oh. Yeah, no, oh, no, no, I took it knowing something bad would happen. <laughs> 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 I think he wanted to find out. I don't he think needed you're to ever know. Gonna fall for that ever again. Though. I think that'll be like this. Whenever a bishop moves there, I think you'll have horrible flashbacks. Pog champ six. <laughs> Pog champ six. Frank, I think oh. you are one of the most improved players over the course of Pog champs. This is a different oh. Frank from when I played. This uh, the, yeah. first, the first week I played Frank, it was totally different. Oh, we this saw is, Connor. Not Frank. We saw you going out for a move like this. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? I was like, because when I had such low time, I was freaking out. Twenty seconds when, yeah, with your win. I, 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 I had that. I felt like I had that game too. But I didn't. I didn't. I lost it. That's not what it means when you have a game. Uh, well, it was an absolute pleasure watching you both play. I have an important question. What is the future of relationship of you and chess? Frank, I'll start with you. Um, get better. That's my. But you're keeping at it. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. No plans to slow down until you're GM. Uh, well, I'll try GM. <laughs> Apparently, I might get old and depressed before that happens. <laughs> we told you this. You were talking about Levy. It's true. Levy, what are you telling your students? I, that wasn't me. That was <laughs> yeah. that was God. Frank. Okay. God spoke to Frank. And <laughs> okay, and he said, don't get a GM Frank, title. don't do it. That's your God. Yeah. It sounds like Patrick Starr. Oh, well, his... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Connor, what about you? What's your relationship with chess? You gonna keep playing? You didn't play too much going into this, but you played probably more Dude, chess than you I, ever have over the past month. I mean, it's just so stressful, and it, it like ruined my month. Like I can't do anything. <laughs> I, I when you win poke champs, it ruins your life. Let me tell you. This. <laughs> oh, boo -hoo, I got twenty thousand oh, dollars and flown out to LA. I'll just go gamble and I'll get quadruple that. Right? Okay, let's be what? real. All right? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. I'll invite you okay, to poker. But seriously, uh, I, I, I'm down to do chess again. I don't want to. I don't want to study. I'll probably be hard stuck eleven hundred. Yeah. Uh, I think if Frank had another week, I'm I'm cooked. Like for, next time me and Frank play, I'm done. Like he is, he's crushes. I me. believe that. Um, yeah. I'm, this I'm, is the only time I could ever beat you again. Like it's, I don't think I'll ever be able to beat you again. Yeah, and I'm obviously not gonna go gamble my money. That's so smart. I, that's smart. That's oh, smart. Is it? I don't unless the bag is actually don't worry about it. That's further down the line. <laughs> I just don't gamble. That's my. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Frank, uh, we watched you play. We had a, a great time doing it. You get $12,000. Hopefully, that's a nice holiday for you, your mom, your family. Uh, Connor, $20,000, which I don't know what you do. Buy another Italian suit, I guess. <laughs> You probably go to another video idea that won't make money, so it's, you know, it bounces out eventually. It all bounces, <laughs> it bounces out. But you get the nice trophy in the background. I'm sure your stream will be very proud, and I'm sure we'll see it in a YouTube video in a couple of weeks. Uh, but for everyone at home, thank you so much for watching Pog Champs 5. Congratulations to Connor again in our runner-up, Frank. Congratulations to Erob, the winner of our Salty Sweet match against Tyler 1. And congratulations to Virtual, the winner of our Constellation Bracket. Uh, that's it for Pog Champs 5. There will be a lot more chess happening this year, but that's to talk about another day. Thank you all for watching, everybody. All right, goodbye. We're all going to go uh, hang out in, into the sunset. We always We're hang out when you're not pesto. watching. Levy, join the waving, please. I just, I just did. I was the one. Do it for longer. Do it for longer. Like, we love it. We're yeah. all continuing. We Bye. love you. We all love you.